<laughs> we're missing we're missing Luke and Will <laughs> two presenters. But other than that, it's all looking good. <laughs> I, I think we should go and pitch them. What? <laughs> you want to you want to just get, wait five minutes? Do they need to hear me here for the notes? Oh, there seems to be a gap in our fetch. <laughs> Okay. No, no, they do not need to be here for the note. Well, they're both well aware of the note. We are now being recorded for posterity, so um, here we go. Welcome to uh, welcome to Cambridge. Those of you who are here, uh, in keeping with our fourth mascot series, uh, Lucky Leprechaun, who you might imagine is uh, the mascot of the world champion Boston Celtics. This is the note. Well, um, those of you who might be new to a few of you are, are may, might be new to ITF. Um, this goes through the intellectual property. Uh, implications of you participating in ITF. It also has some um, code of conduct guidance. There are a bunch of links here. If you have not read this before, I encourage you to type ITF note well into your favorite search engine and uh, read into this a little bit. Um, this is maybe left over from our last from the Vancouver <laughs> meeting, but um, be nice to each other. I think the way I've summarized this is uh, don't like interact as if you were on Twitter, like interact as if you're in the same room. Uh, we're in the same room. Many of us are in the same room. So like, uh, I think most of us understand what that what the difference is. Um, should we talk about uh, clarifying questions right now? Or? We can talk about it later. Okay. Okay, let's run through meeting logistics. Um, if you are going to be, uh, if you're gonna be um, Quite verbal in this meeting, and you're in person, and you know who you are. Please sit in on this side of the table, along with the chairs. The camera does not pan to the wings, um, so that's a little bit less. It's a somewhat poorer experience for those of us who are uh, uh, remote uh, when those people are off camera, when speakers are off camera. Um, the notes. There should. Let me. Put, you put a link to the notes in the in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We need to use the chat. Okay. Well. Okay, in, in the in the WebEx chat, we're going to put a link to the notes where you can sign the blue sheets. That's going to happen in, mo in a, a moment. Um, however, for actual like content chat, we're going to use Zulip, which there is also linked to from the data tracker, and we can, we'll try to link to that in the in the uh, WebEx chat in a moment. Um, now, in terms of queuing, what we're going to do is uh, we're, we're going to frankly optimize a little bit for the people who have, who have flown here. So um, uh, it, we're, 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 we're just going to raise hands, like raise our physical hands to, to, uh, to queue when we need to queue. And the chairs are going to manage that. The chairs are also going to use, if you're remote and you, wanna, you have a contribution to make, you want to enter the queue, just use the WebEx function to raise your hand, and the chairs will do their best to integrate that as best we can. Try to keep things a little more natural. That said, like, we don't have to queue because things are, you know, and that that's good too. But when when it's time to queue, that's how it's going to work. This point of order, somebody else has to. I my org does not let me use WebEx chat, so I cannot paste okay. the chat. But I pasted it in Zulu. Somebody else who's org lets them. All right, I I, I, will, I will get those up when I'm done talking. Um, okay, does anyone have any questions about the logistics of this meeting? Yeah, John, if you're going to say a lot, you should sit on this side so you can be on camera. Oh. Oh, you're assuming that I'm going to say a lot. Excuse me for reason. You have a moment like that. It's a bit of something. <laughs> I brought it's not my first time. Table, table, and I, you know. <laughs> All right, no questions about that. I'm moving on. Here's the agenda for bashing. I'll be good for an hour or two. So, so this morning we're going to talk about, um, we're obviously going to run through this ministry review as you are right now. Uh, Mike English is going to update us on how Interop went yesterday. Then uh, our Primary objective for this entire meeting is to get fetch rolling. Uh, we're going to start with a discussion of use cases, um, which Alan will lead, and that will. Uh, and we're going to time box that. I don't want to. I don't think. I don't think it's shared. We want that to uh, spiral out about minor, you know, the minor detail. Um, but it's meant to sort of shape and inform the proposals and evaluation proposals. We want to take a break where people can can yap about use cases more if they like. And then we're going to come back and we have three fetch proposals on the table and each of them will be given about 30 minutes. Uh, I encourage you to not use your whole 30 minutes, um, but the intent there is to have some clarifying questions only while during those talks. And then once all the proposals have been completed, then we'll have a general discussion about the trade-offs of those three proposals until lunchtime. And we're going to have lunch at 1230. Um, 
And then coming back, uh, if anything came out of lunch, that is uh, useful. <laughs> we'll have um, we will have we'll have a quick readout of that, and then we'll continue fetch discussion around three fifteen. We're going to take a look at where we're at. Um, hopefully, ideally, we we are ready to. Someone's ready to go write a PR. Like we have a, 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 enough convergence to do that. If not, um, if we feel we're super close to converging, we might go on after three fifteen. But just, but if we're still stuck, I think we're going to go out and tell some people to talk about it tonight and see if we can come back tomorrow and, and do better. And then for the balance of the day, uh, Will's going to give us a, a readout from the catalog design team. And then Victor has a proposal about object IDs that he'd like to introduce. And I think the objective there is to kind of socialize the idea. And if people are positive about it, then we might come back tomorrow and with a little more detail. But I would like to bash today's agenda. I will also say that tonight is our MOQ dinner uh, location TBD, but I'd probably be the Cambridge Brewery down the street um, for various reasons. Since Will, did you mention lunch? I missed, did you mentioned lunch is brought in? Yeah, oh, yes. so lunch is going to be catered. It should be here on this table. It should arrive 12.15 for us to eat at 12.30. Thank you, Will. Uh, Will, do you want to run through logistics? What, what time is dinner? Uh, we, we, we have not. Got it. Got it. Got it. Our, our, our dinner planner left the country. <laughs> so let's just drink it. Fine it. wines tonight. Is, <laughs> apparently, yeah. can we make it six or something so that? I mean, it, if we have too long a gap, then people have to wait around or go back. For those uh, of us who are staying far away, I could do five thirty. Yeah, or five thirty. We just pick a time. All right, let's do five thirty. Let's just leave directly from here. Okay. This, this is, someone need to be somewhere between here and five o'clock. Between five o'clock and dinner. I need to schedule six hours of meeting somewhere today. Okay. Well, let's let's five thirty. It's a very short walk. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, logistics for the room. Everyone should have Wi-Fi. And if you don't, scan the puck right in front of you. Okay. But everyone's online. Toilets are on this floor. You just keep walking around. They're the absolute as far away as you can get on this floor from us. That's where the toilets are. And to get off the floor, you need me or another Akamai employee to badge you in and out. That's the so only thing. If you find yourself leaving the building and need to uh, get back in, um, you have to yeah. contact Will. Yeah. So I think what's worked for people is just to ping the MOQ Slack, yeah. and then someone will poke Will. Yeah. Uh, so That's yet it. another chat to open. Um, <clears throat> Alrighty. Before we get, at some point this morning, we should do a quick round of introductions. So everybody just yeah. give names. Why don't we do that now? Uh, you just, just, just anybody wants say to say who you are, more. so we don't have to say hey. Can you. I introduce myself because I got to go pick up Mo? Yes, yes. please. Do. I'm Mo Law with Akamai. Okay, clockwise from there. Victor. Uh, Victor Vatilia, Google. Then I am very fastly also known as the better Akamai. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get in before you left. Uh, Martin Duke, Google, and MOQT co chair. It's just MOQ. MOQ co chair. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alan Frendel Meta. I'm also an MOQ co chair. Colin Jennings, Cisco. Not a CDN vendor. Yeah, Absolhas, Cisco. Mike English. Ideas. Ilham Baker. <laughs> uh, Yenda, Meta. Uh, Daniel Fay, Meta. Giovanni Marslaw, Vivo. Cool. And uh, on, we have Christian. Christian Wittema, um, by myself, but I'm also working with uh, Karen and Suhas uh, on the quick project. Gwendo. I'm Gwendo uh, <clears throat> Simon from Cinemedia. Magnus. You're muted, Magnus. Maybe you're not actually there. Okay, Mathis. <laughs> Not the same about technical you know, if you have Munich. Sebastian. Sebastian, researcher at the Technical University in Darmstadt. Welcome, Xavier. Xavier, the welcome to the people. Max. Is there a Max out there? Where do you see Max? Oh, not in the meeting. I don't know what that's about. Okay. <laughs> and uh, one last try there, uh, Magnus. Jonathan, introduce yourself. Probably joining audio. Okay, never mind. All right, that's introductions. That was great. Um, okay, continuing <laughs> again to bash. Uh, 
Oh, and, and so tomorrow, I'm not going to, we're, we're going to end up rebashing this anyway, but we'll, we're going to try to wrap up fetch. We want to talk about a some ambiguity in the, in the priorities product from Seattle, uh, where people, not going to insist that the people are kind of surprised that it says, and uh, some manipulation experience indicates maybe it's not the best, so Victor's going to talk about that. And then uh, there's some other issues out there that we're going to try to try to tackle. Um, and then we're going to wrap up, uh, talk about some next steps, and maybe figure out what week our next interim will be. Um, no, we're ending a little early tomorrow since people have evening flights. Okay, and then there's a parking lot of issues. Um, I'm not going to get into these, but if by some miracle we have extra time, we can talk about these. Also, if you have something you want to put in the parking lot, send the chairs a note. Yeah. We'll add it to the parking lot, and if we have time, we'll talk about your favorite issue. Okay, we need a scribe. I was going to ask a question about does the recording system here take automatic transcription? Uh, but we don't know. I mean, it does, and it does do summarization too, but I don't know what they have enabled for okay. their policy. I so mean, it's sort of a will question. The, yeah. We really don't necessarily need a play by play. So if you're, if you're, if you're uh, apprehensive about being a minute taker, didn't bring any chocolate. What the hell's wrong with you? Um, but anyway, uh, don't worry about necessarily getting everything play by play. We can also have a backup. The most important thing is recording the um, the action items of like we made this, like we discussed this, we made this decision. Maybe some summary of like these were the trade offs we evaluated or something. There does not need to be live transcription service. And I will bring you chocolate for just tomorrow. Okay, I've, I've managed to put in a link in the WebEx chat to sign the blue sheets. Um, is anyone, uh, can anyone not access the WebEx chat besides Alan? Well, all the meta people that, should have that, the same problem. That, that needs help getting, <laughs> getting to the notes. And we're still looking for a scribe. So for those of you who are driving, if you plan to talk a lot, you should sit on this side of the table because the camera does not pan to the wings. <laughs> How would that be possible? <laughs> You're laughing. There's a chair. Yeah. The Victor. Okay. Well, we know you want to just come here and. Um. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're still looking for a scribe. We're going to describe at least four scribes for the morning, afternoon, two days. You have uh, chocolate, I'll scribe. Okay, Daniel's waving a hand. All right. Yes. I'm going to get the first choice of chocolate. I'm sorry, did, did we find the scribe? I Daniel's was... going to scribe for the morning. Thank you, Daniel. Does anybody want to back? Can somebody back, Daniel, just in case? All right. Um, those of you who have been, like, um, trickling in, uh, in the WebEx chat, there is a link to both the minutes where you need to go add yourself to the blue sheets, whether you're remote or not. And there's also a link to the Zulip where technical discussions will take place. All right, so if you haven't added yourself to the to the blue sheets yet, please do so. All right, uh, I'm going to hand off now to my um, my co-chair here, who is going to talk about our goals for fetch. Do we have to interrupt? On... Oh yeah, we can. Just... This is like so. This is a slide just to talk about goals for the interim. As, as Martin mentioned, like this problem of fetch, we surfaced it in February, and we have been talking about it as if it's in the protocol, but it's not, and it's sort of the hurdle that will resolve a number of outstanding issues and make a number of other things we hope simpler. So really the, the, the goal is to get out of this meeting being done. So make sure we understand what the problem is we're trying to solve, look through to like listen to some solutions, like discuss them. Let's at least get like sketch PRs like out and reviewed during the meeting, hopefully tomorrow. So that we have like a path when we leave here so that we think we'll be able to land that into the draft before the draft deadline, the next ITF, which is October 21st, which is three weeks from this past Monday. It's two and a half weeks from now. So we're willing to 
you know, continually rebash the agenda as we go forward to make sure that we have to we give this one time. If other things have to fall off, we really need to get this one nailed because it's been tripping us up and holding up progress for a while. Not sure if anybody wants to have debate on that or not, but um, that's that's sort of how we view the goals of this time together. Okay. And I wanted to bring this up because I know, you know, we've been together for a couple of years now and there are like strong opinions here. Uh, and this was something that I, I interviewed a candidate uh, about a month ago and asked a question about resolving technical conflict. And he gave me this great answer, which I've been repeating a lot to people, which is that like, I was so dug in trying to convince this other person that I was right. I was sort of missing that like this other guy was a really smart guy and, uh, I should have been asking myself, what is this person seeing that I am not seeing? And so I'm encouraging everybody to like take that with them into this, these two days, which is like, we're all smart people. We've all built big systems that work. So if you think one thing and the other person thinks something that is diametrically opposed, instead of trying to like continue clubbing somebody over the head with like, no, 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 I must be right. Try to put their hat on and be like, what, what is it? What is your perspective? And ask yourself that question. And hopefully we'll like get a little bit further, a little bit faster. Um, but anyway, this one's been sitting with me for a while. I wanted to share it with the group. Oh, this is, this is okay. This yeah, is so to now the, let's, no, let's, not, let's go to the interrupt now. Yeah, you wanna, so there was a slide in here for interrupt, wasn't there? Did you, are you driving off? Oh, did you? I put a slide in, but it's okay. it, was it was a blank slide. I did. <laughs> it's a blank slide, so it's not that interesting. Okay, go ahead, Mike. All right. Uh, so the interop results from yesterday. Oh, oh, there. There. Okay. So uh, yesterday, folks were working towards interop, and no one achieved interop. So, <laughs> <laughs> so draft 06, uh, we have yet to report any interop results. Um, but I did wonder if some of the folks who were working towards that could speak to the challenges that they ran into and whether those are things they think they could overcome uh, or if there are any blockers there. Uh, it, it, I mean, as somebody who's been struggling with it, like I'm just, draft, draft of six is a big change. There's just every single wire image changed. The, the, the table like thing is a pretty big, it's a pretty big deal. A lot of tedious tests that have to be revised. And i just, Lots of finicky problems. So I, I think we're fine. Um, relatedly, Alan is publishing a new version of the chat app that's going to leverage spread name space and some other things. So that's that's another thing that um, we had, nobody's I think even started on yet, implementation wise. But you know we're trying to continue to leverage new mechanisms. So that's that's good. Yeah, I mean I think I'm close to implementing everything in draft. Or I say to say I, Moxygen. So that includes work from Daniel and Yenda. Um, so I think Moxygen is close to draft 06. So like probably in another half a day and like be ready to like, and, and the new version of chat, which uses subscribe namespace and, and whatnot. So like we're, we're close, but it was a big compared to previous draft deltas, like the five, six delta was good. I mean, it was big. And so like, I think that is like a like small pat on the back to this group for like, making a lot of progress on issues that have been blocked us in the last couple of months. Um, but at the same time, it, it is work. So like for people who are hoping to interop, say in Dublin, just make sure you may allocate some time maybe before you get there on the ground. Cause it's, if you're, if you're not all the way to 06 now, who knows what's going to be in 07. Um, yeah. From the quicker side, we got most of the message and code decode in drop working within our own server and client and got the namespace implemented um, at the point where I'm trying to use the namespace in the announce messages. I think once, if it was done, probably nice to see. And I, that's one of the things we always have that we need a drop. In, so one of the, one of the outcome of the interop should be, we need, to, we need to find a way to get a rock click on the server side and the rock click on the client side. That's a, some, some form of that to fully complete the interop. How do you define as a group? Yeah, I, I lay on the to do list to try to get our stuff working for raw quick. I just, it just always sure. falls by the wayside. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, and I, I'm also, I mean, I have Rock, a Rock Quick implementation for my client, but it is not part of, it's not the commit, part of the committed open source. So like, we can do at least one off interrupt test with it. And we're working towards being able to land that chain. We're just trying to do it the right way. It just requires, a, it's a lot of surgery. Um, and it's, it's close, but it's just not, not there. And like, given I had to like, imp work more on the getting to the current version of the draft than that, <laughs> that took away time from making sure the Rock Quick implementation was there. Okay, a few admin notes. Christian, can you please line. mute next? I think there's some uh, there's some requests that there's some noise coming from you. Thank you. Do you, think um, you might be there by next ITF. I mean, at the very least, I'm ready to do like one of the tests with the client. Um, I think you know, that's supposed to now have some helpers, uh, with other people working on it. I think. Um, what's the limitation of this one by transport audio? You have a web transport implementation? No. If you say um, asking. No, I'm asking if most implementations have a transport only of this one. I mean, the public version of Moxygen is web transport only, but there's a private version that has quick. Do you guys have a quick one? Real quick. We have only quick. Oh, we have only raw quick. quick. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, many of you have not signed the, the blue sheets. Uh, there's a link in, I think once again, the WebEx chat to the notes where you can simply add your name to the list, name and affiliation. If you've not done so already, please do so. Uh, does anyone having trouble accessing the link? You are. I can't find it. You can have the data tracker. I see uh, links. It's also on the Zulip. I did, but I'm not right sure. I got it to Slack as well. Can you put it in Slack? Wonderful. It's in the MOQ Slack as well. So all many chat technologies. <laughs> put it in mock chat. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I can SMS it to you. Uh, okay, so just just to stay on on interrupt, I mean, I think if you know in the last, so thank you, uh, Mike and Mathis for kind of volunteering to kind of like drive interrupt. So it would be like, I think there's a few things we could use that would that would help move faster. One is maybe just like creating a wiki, which is like people who are always running servers can like list their like servers, like their public endpoints what's running there and like kind of like just like a home page of like here's the interop like here's what you need to know here's the implementations here's where they are and, and like you don't have to update it yourself but drive other people to keep it up to yeah, a wiki on the github yeah a wiki on, on github i think that would help um i think it would help if somebody wrote down a draft there's three or four different implementations of like a mock clock um that all use slightly different formats and all use slightly different track names and stuff and so like it's just a little bit annoying. So if somebody could write that down and just publish it, it doesn't even have to go, um, it doesn't have to even get published, you know, or adopted by the, by the group, but just like with mock chat, like, okay, here's just, you can implement this and you'll get interrupt with other people. Um, and then I'll, I'll get back to people, but I think 90% we have the perfect person to do that. For the clock? For the clock, for okay. the draft. Okay. Okay. The clock. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's good. Then I think also, Colin, you mentioned right before we started the meeting is that at the next ITF, it'd be nice to have actual media flowing. And I think one of the barriers there is having the equivalent of mock clock or mock chat for text, but like for audio video, like somebody writes down because MOQT interop is not, you need the next level, like the, I'm not going to say full war, but like you need that level of like, what are you sending in what objects and what groups, what are the track names? How do you do it? How do you decode it? Someone has to write that down. And I think if we had that for a simple audio video, it doesn't need to be the full like WebEx client or full live streaming. Um, <coughs> I think you can put my name on it. Okay, so Suhas, you're volunteering. I don't know, a, a, a bird whispered in my ear that maybe Mo might be somebody who would be interested well, yeah, yeah. in collaborating on such a draft. Well, let's, let's, let's put Mo as the main person. <laughs> <laughs> let's put Mo in charge of lots of things. Okay. Just punishment for coming in late? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Put Wait till Luke gets here. here. <laughs> 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 serving lunch too? <laughs> no, you're cleaning up from lunch. Uh, okay. Uh, is there any other notes on interop that we think that might? I mean, I think the one other thing is like, I mean, the, those drafts are nice, but also having use cases, or even for people who are not quite to that level, but like testing, like you're mentioning, maybe conformance testing, or like, yep. can you? Subscribe, get an object, unsubscribe, or whatever. These just a few short scenarios that people who are up and coming with their implementations can check a few boxes and say, like, I have this part interopting with this between these two implementations. And if you look at, you know, I mean, HTTP and Quick have gotten completely automated interop runner, like completely, and that, that was years of work. We're not expecting to be there, but like, 
kind of where Quick was in the early days, where it's just like they defined a few. Can you do a version negotiation? Can you do um, whatever a handshake? Uh, so like if we had just some of those like simple simple cases defined Absolutely. what it meant, then that might also like help facilitate. Yep. Yeah. One of the things that I was talking to Matthew about yesterday is uh, potentially having some kind of like test fixtures for track contents, mm -hmm. so that we can uh, exercise more of the surface area of things like subscribe with various parameters. Mm. Uh, because right now we've just been kind of like checking the box, like, can you subscribe? And some objects come back, um, but we haven't been validating that like the right objects come back based on the filter type, uh, that type of thing. So drilling down further into the details of the spec and making sure that we're actually covering uh, everything that we have written um, requires uh, pinning down some of the potential moving parts a little bit more because there are a lot of things, um, even even with test fixtures, that there are going to be a lot of things that are you know racy or you know hard hard to say you know when you'll get this message. Um, but I think that's one thing that we can do is say okay, here's some simple tracks, and then if you if you have a subscribe that asks for you know these objects like going forward or a fetch when we you know get to that, uh, that would probably be helpful. Yeah, I mean I think. Waiting until after this meeting to do that is good because I have a suspicion the subscribe is going to change. Right. Uh, or like, uh, but uh, once we have that, like, fixed. Just... Oh, this is another idea for interrupt to help as we go forward. What about standing up a conformance relay? Put it put it on a public server somewhere, and you can connect to it, and it's like almost like an echo server that we have for web transport. You can. You can connect to it, and it will at least go through the handshake with you. And maybe it just runs unit tests, a bunch of them that we predefined, so it can't be too abused. But something like that would help people building their own instances. Some of those being built on the easier. You could have almost a like a reflective one where you you publish and subscribe to it, and you check that you get your stuff back. Yeah. Well, that's the echo that I'm mentioning. Oh, interesting. It's just an old machine. <laughs> That's an interesting idea. Uh, okay. Any other Anything like interrupt thoughts? Um, so there's a spreadsheet. Um, I will. I've shared it in uh, Zulip. I'll also post that to list. Um, it's kind of a work in progress still uh, in terms of all the test cases and everything. Um, but okay. as as folks get to uh, completion on their draft 06 implementations and draft 07. We, can, we don't need to just interrupt during hackathon scheduled time. We can do that kind of in between as well. So uh, I'll make that available. There's a, we sometimes would have virtual interrupt days in quick. And <laughs> given this compressed time between now and Dublin, I'm not sure that makes sense in this interval, but maybe in the next interval, like between that, like do we, would people find that useful to have like a scheduled virtual day to like get together and try interrupt or like have a target? Is that useful? Why don't we take one of our just sort of you know our normal standing interim meetings that where we discuss the documents and just make it a, be an interop meeting, just be about interop. Do people like this idea? Like like just you know have you have you, you have yeah, you run so, it? So, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, Thank so you very much. <laughs> no, 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 but, you know so, like sort out our yeah sort out all the stuff we were just talking about. This, this makes sense to me, um, partly because of. Uh, the issue that we had in this draft where there was so much work that got done in the spec that it made it hard to do the implementation work in time for uh, reporting results here. So maybe we can counterbalance that by allocating more time to doing the interop. Uh, and that will kind of keep things in sync. That makes sense to me. Okay. Do we get some of that for the minutes? Should we remember what we said? Christian? Yeah, I, I am a bit uh, concerned that if we take one of the uh, meeting slots and making an interrupt slot, it will be in practice too short for an interrupt. That's, uh, if you take an interrupt, you have to be able to recompile code and things like that. And if you have only a couple of hours, it's not going to be very productive. We can do it, but just schedule it on a Wednesday or something, either before or af after that meeting. It's just like this, this is a designated day. We can, we don't, since we're probably not talking about this till November, December time, we can probably muse on it. Also, not everybody's going to be at the IEP. Okay, so the time zones don't matter. Mm -hmm. 
there's no dive bombing this no problems in the beginning yet but we're starting to work on Where should I start really? Yeah, it's a big question. Sure. Um, it'd be useful for us to get some pointers. Is anybody have any pointers about where to start? Planning by way of open. I think mm -hmm. some of these things are open source, and so that may be a place to start. And maybe there are author names there too. And like the Slack is, you can always yeah. ask for help. There's people. Some there. implementation. Yes. Implementation. Um, yes. More to come. All right. Anything else about the interop? I think we're good. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm going to try to like frame this discussion a little bit. Um, so uh, yeah. Hey, real quick before we start. Uh, sorry, this probably should have been on the agenda bash, but 90 minutes seems like a long time to have the three proposals just expository, and when they're so similar, it'd be better, I think, it, is it better to try to, you know, get it down to less time and have more discussion? I know we have 90 minutes to discuss later, but I think there's so many points in that, in, in comparing, that 90 minutes is not going to be enough to resolve all the issues. And do we really need 90 minutes to, dis to describe all three proposals deeply? I strongly encourage the presenters to, to not use their full 30. We'll see how it goes. So far, one of the presenters isn't here yet. So, okay, there's 30 back. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike, did you ping Luke? Sometimes he oversleeps his alarm. Um, okay, um, fetch, go. All right, so uh, I borrowed this slide from Suhas, who borrowed it from the Denver interim. And then I also grabbed some use cases which were not on that slide, but were mentioned in Will's proposal and tried to like put them all on one slide. Just gonna like talk through them. These are things that people say they want to do with the protocol that we're building. So one would be like, you're in a chat application, you're offline, you come back online and you wanna know what did I miss while I was gone? Uh, we've talked about VOD, it's not explicitly in our charter, but there are people who want their say, they serve both live and VOD and they want one stack to be able to do both things. So this is like the, the entire content is already just pre, it's already available. It's not live in any way. So it's already available all at once. Um, advertising insertion. So like a catalog telling you like, okay, like you, this time you need to go get this ad. Uh, so DVR, so like you want to like you recorded something and you want to go back and watch it, maybe the live event is over or you're like way back at the beginning of something. Um, that's, fa that's, that's past where like any other things that are like caching live state are gone. Can you move me because I can't see my... I'm trying to okay. make it better. Um, that seems to fail. Okay, so catching up on the side. So maybe you want to like, like watch an old part of the thing at like possibly faster than playback speed. Uh, so like sub like a DVR clip or like some sort of sub clip you want to go back and watch like a highlight or some some goal scored uh, non real time live playback. So this is one that's mentioned in Will's deck. So you're watching you're some live event. But you have a large playback buffer. So you you, you design as like you don't want to skip anything. You want quality to be like as it was encoded rather than um, to be, to involve unreliability. And then uh, scrubbing is like being able to move forward or backward and figure out where you want to go in the video. So I'm going to pause and like, does anyone want to add any commentary on any of these use cases? Like, okay, I see Will and yeah. Will, why my, my question is clarifying. Uh, go for it. <laughs> um, one thing that's not clear for me from a lot of these cases, is this is this actually meant to be reliable or not? Because like as a consumer, I've certainly you know, watch VOD that where like it'll reduce the bit rate and degrade the quality if the bandwidth sucks. And there are other things where you legitimately want every bit and you'll just buffer if you need to, right? My understanding of how that works for VOD is not that if you were requesting one thing and it went lossy, but that you were doing adaptive bit rate, right? So like object one was at some quality and object two was at a different quality. Okay. Not that you got object one and not object two. So I think the answer is 
the way traditional systems think about it is yes, they are reliable, but maybe somebody knows more about it. Yeah. Answer. So ABR is not about reliability. You, it's about switching quality levels. But when you subscribe to a 720p lower quality, you expect to get every bit that was encoded in that. Okay. Nothing is dropped from that. You don't get partial segments. And when you switch to a different bit rate, again, you get the complete entire copy and you're willing to buffer to wait for that. You're not willing to sustain any loss in the actual content because your codec is not robust over again. I have the urge to say the obvious, that just make sure we define reliability here. What reliability means on the Internet is it's not delivered <clears> if it can't be. If It's either all delivered or not delivered. It doesn't mean, reliable doesn't mean it's delivered. It's exactly what Will said. It means that if you get it, you got all of it. It doesn't mean you'll get it. Right. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm, sure. I mean, I think you know what I'm getting at. No, uh, I don't, but... <laughs> So I had two, two more clarifications. So on the non-real-time live playback, it's to be clear, you want to, you want to start behind live by not much, say some 10 seconds or, or in that order of magnitude, right? But that's sort of like your playback. Is it like, correct to capture that as like, that's your playback buffer is how sure, far behind you want but to then the important part is it's not mentioned here is you want to fetch into the future. You want to fetch beyond the point that's available at that time. Because you, you don't want to continuous, you, you don't, don't know your end point. Continuously be making these tiny little requests just behind live. That's a very inefficient way of playing a live stream behind live. You want to make one request and stay at that fixed offset behind live without having to issue any more instructions. So the end point is a wild card effect. It's open and either the stream is the stream ends, the track ends, or you cancel your request. I was just gonna the only difference is the reliability oh, with which almost here. we'll get into we'll that. Need to be a Okay, did you get that? So Luke is almost here, so yeah. we'll need... Oh, I'll go get him. My second comment on the scrubbing, yes, you want to move backwards and forwards, but the, the use case is to only retrieve a subset of the frames or the objects, because typically you, you just want an iframe ah, with a so that you construct it. So you want some ability to choose certain objects and not get the entirety of a group as you're moving backwards and forwards. Is the, Sebastian? I'm going to go again. Luke, yeah, yeah, I want to have some clar clarification on the quick catch up use case. Does it mean that you have like two types of streams going on here? Like one is a live stream and one is catching up, or is this one stream with a few, with a um, catching the future uh, streams, as uh, I think it was Mike mentioned? I think I can talk about it. It's, it's two streams. One is uh, going, looking back, and trying to get back on another live stream. You're coming in because you're part of the meeting. You're listening into the meeting, but you missed a few minutes. You come up, and a client scan. Is it like a picture in a picture kind of user experience where you're like the user got live and and catch up at the same time? Or oh, it's, user experience is not part of this, right? Okay, I'm just, I'm just okay. okay. Yeah. You're saying. Mm. I, I think maybe that was Sebastian's question also. Like, what yeah, 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 pretty much. So we have to <laughs> oh, consider that, the impact that fetching that. a lot of data has for the live stream, right? I, I'm sorry, like Suhas was clarifying, so I couldn't hear your question. Oh yeah, no worries. So we have to consider the impact that fetching a lot of data has on the live stream, like latency, uh, so like increase of latency and stuff. Yeah, the, the idea is that you don't want to slow down your subscription, which is the life. Let's call yeah. it down. Even if this the two minutes you don't get or get a bit late, also it's fine. But you yeah. don't want to okay. go yeah. Gotcha. Thanks. Uh, Where are the other folks that wanted to? Christian? Yes. I mean, if we have a common scenario in which we do catch up, that means that we are going to do fetch from what you have or half an hour ago to now. And at the same time, subscribe from now to later so that means that there's a common point between the fetch and the next subscribe and it'd be nice if there was some kind of uh, protocol a easy way in the protocol to do that scenario okay it, when we're talking about reliability it might all it, it might get us into rattle because the service that's uh, supplying this data might be throwing data away. You cannot rely on the server to keep everything and have everything indexed. 
unless it is one that has made that part of its contract that I'm going to keep it. So you might want that something in the catalog to say. The protocol has a way to say like, this thing no longer, like you're never gonna get this thing. This thing was here, right. it's not ever gonna come. And so I, I think that is where people have been thinking about the problem you're describing. Like, I, think, I think it's in people's minds. Yeah. Um, that like sometimes, I, think, I mean, if Luke were here, he'd talk about, you know, Twitch in particular, right? They just don't keep everything. They have so many, they have live streams yeah. going all the time. And some, after some time, like, it's just gone. Like, and it will never come back. Yeah. It, it, it was just, what, what, the term reliability seems to be uh, something that can get us into trouble. Yeah. Okay. Other use case comments here? Okay. One, one other point is maybe on off. There may be different off uh, abilities for being able to watch live versus playback. So, Authorization yes. may be different, that's what you're saying, yeah, between yeah. being able to watch live and yes. So, okay. the authorization mechanism should be flexible enough to not require a cash subscribe you know, token or something like that to be used on a fetch. Okay. I'm not sure that someone's raised that before, so thank you for raising it. Um, other comments here? You know, for like Luke, you just stepped in. So like I, I can add a use case. Oh, if you have one, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's no microphone. Um uh cash re cash refilling filling for a, a relay. So if a relay wants to evict a cash early, it might fetch back from the origin to refill it again. Cash refill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a great use case. Okay. Another so, use uh, case. Is that, is that distinct from responding to a request and putting yeah. the content? Could be. How would that be different? I don't know, free warming. It's, you decided the pop content's not popular enough to store in RAM for too long. What it hits the LRU that? to be expired, and then. Right. But what's the trigger for pulling it? It could be a subscribe. Like, you know the range exists, so you'll fetch, you know, instead of subscribe. I, I think maybe the point is that these are all end user use cases, but you're talking about a relay use case. It's a relay to relay use case with yeah. the fetch, yeah. So, this, this, I'm gonna check, I've been thinking that it'd be possible to do it without having more free support for it, but I just want to bring it up in case it does. Uh, synchronized playback. Oh, it's it's a very different. Concept. I'm not sure that that intersects the same. That is a use case, but I'm not sure it's one yeah. that yeah, matches this that. set of things. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But let's maybe like talk about that. Oh, I think you want to talk more about what you mean by synchronized playback for people who may not know. Sure. Um, the general idea is for multiple devices to be able to play out things. At roughly the same time. I say roughly, I say roughly because time. Um, but I, I, enough that you get a TV broadcast like 10 minutes. That is something that is provided by technology that exists today, surprisingly. But uh, it is something that we should aspire to have uh, possible. All right, since I only have 30 minutes this time box, I'm going to go. I've, so the next slide, I attempted to make a gap analysis of my reading of the issues that people have filed. And these use cases, so if it stinks, feel free to like throw it at me. This is like an individual analysis. So instead of using the word reliability, I, I use the word fidelity. So like these, which, which I meant to say that if any matching objects exist, either in relay caches or at the original publisher, they must be delivered. And the receiver requires a notice if anything doesn't exist anymore. So, and that the current subscribe does not mandate such a behavior. So I'm going to pause and people can like, Tell me that I'm wrong in this. It is like, I, that was the gap that I thought I saw, but someone else can say it. it's not that. Yeah, I'll say the must is pretty strong there. Um, but the gap is, yeah, I want more reliability. Can you say more about? Subscribe is expected that it's lossy in, in an attempt to keep to real time. Yes. Fetch is, is an expectation that that bar is far lower or far But you still think higher. there's, you don't, think fetch requires it to be completely, I don't know, I'm using the word fidelity instead of reliable. Okay, okay yes, please. I, I, I think the difference is uh, that you need to know definitively whether the things you're asking for, they're either going to be delivered to you or, or they cannot be delivered to you. Okay. Um, that's what I tried to say here, but maybe I didn't say it very well. Yeah, I think that's, that's the, uh, the must. The, the, is, the cannot could be variable. Like at some point in the future, the object might not exist anymore. So, 
would it make? I'm just trying to propose something with, that everyone would like for his draft. If, if we change the text and said it must be delivered, must be delivered or get a permanent error. Is that sort of like I'm trying to put this into HTTP get thinking model? I mean, say, yeah, okay. Is that useful or not? I, is I'm it, not. Isn't that what object status is? Look, you're talking about solutions. We're just talking about requirements. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I would okay. say it should. That's all. That's my, my comment. Well, okay. So you should get what? I'm worried about slow consumers. Like, if somebody issues a fetch and they just keep the connection open, a must is a really strong word. Oh, I see. Um, so one can always abandon serving a fetch. That's what, but it's a but must. This you can, right? You said you cannot abandon yeah, a okay. fetch. Yeah. Uh, okay. I that's see. all I'm getting. I, I'm being pedantic. Thank you for that. I, I definitely did not mean to imply that, like, absolutely every bit that everybody ever asks for, even if they're a DDoS client, yeah. like has to be served. That was not the intention of what I was trying to say. Um, but you cannot gracefully complete a fetch without delivering all the bits. The time out just I'm not, this is the purpose of the relay, uh, you, you have no face mask. Yes. I think maybe changing that to simply saying they will be delivered because obviously that's the purpose of the relay. So don't have to okay, I don't want to yeah. rat hole on. Like, like I think we all have a common. Does anybody not have a common understanding that we we're not intending to handle? Like, no, not every DDoS client needs to get all their bits. <laughs> like, we're totally fine with that. Slow clients. Okay. Okay. Going okay. To, I think there's a problem in this. Is that the common use case is going to be you have a subscription already, and you're you're also fetching, and the most common use case for that is going to be I don't want to disrupt my live delivery with the fetch. So you most likely will prioritize the fetch lower. And if you do that, all the guarantees are off the table. All the musts are off the table. If in the common use case, you want the live edge first and the fetch is a lower priority, you're not going to ever be guaranteed anything. Okay. Um, do other people want to comment on that? I mean, like, so for example, if subscribe today has things like delivery timeout, which means like if the object is older than your delivery timeout, you don't get it, right? That's one of the features of subscribe. Um, but my understanding, go back to the use case slide, I think that like those use cases aren't going to work if they have those same kind of timeouts, right? It was just like, oh, well, like this, it, it. So um, no, I think delivery timeout applies to fetch as well. If you're going to upstream and asking, does an object, I want to retrieve an object and you don't get an answer for five minutes, you, it's okay to timeout. So well, timeout I'm not is saying another... it take you longer to receive it. But what I mean is the object is older than a certain period of time. You'll still be that's the difference between okay, we're, we're talk, I'm talking a timeout on getting a response. Yeah, the those three. timeouts will always exist. Okay. I, I think going back to most point, uh, I think in general there's a requirement that when fetch and subscribe kind of, in, maybe it's more important to release rather than, uh, it, also it might also go down in solution space, right? We need to have a requirement that when fetch and subscribe compete, uh, we need to say something about what needs to be done. Okay, I, I did. And, there's a third slide I have, which is like there be dragons, and that is mentioned. Okay, <laughs> so, um, because that kind of ties back to the original first bullet point. Okay, but yeah, so so, so roll back to the gap analysis. Okay, or, you well, or do you want to? Start? Well, okay. First of all, an admin note: those of you who uh, missed the beginning of the meeting, uh, just raise your hand in WebEx if you're remote, and uh, <laughs> chairs just can manually add you to the queue. Jonathan, I see you. It'll just be a minute. Um, the other comment as an individual I'd say is like, so Mo, like, I mean, I, I asked this question at the start of the thing and he would say, no, 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 we want, we want fidelity. We don't want, like latency is okay. So I think unless like we're completely doing a 180 what we said before, yes, the fetch be low priority just means the fetch stuff is gonna arrive much later, right? But it's still gonna arrive, which is the difference. Um, is anyone in the queue besides Jonathan? I, Jonathan, go ahead. Um, yeah, I just sort of wanted to systematize what people were saying. Is it sounds like what we we're saying is that, you know, if you do a fetch, then eventually, in some very abstract sense of eventually, you know, either you'll get it or you'll be told definitively you won't get it or the connection fails. Those are the three possibilities. And I think that's what we're saying. There's not a, yeah. Cool. yeah. Yep. Okay. You want to roll forward one slide? Yeah. Anybody else have more comments on sort of the, the top? Thing about local infidelity, we we have like, a, does the room have a good common understanding that like of, of what we want the solution to have in this area? I feel like we're getting there. That's your time box. I've got <laughs> I've got ten minutes in my time box, and I have one and a half more slides. 
Um, how's it going? For, oh, wait, wait, I wasn't going for oh, go <laughs> No dragons yet. Sure, okay, so some, but uh, this is my other analysis of the gaps. So, like some of those use cases from the previous slide, but I don't think all of them would require some sort of back pressure from a consumer. Meaning, like, let's take the VOD example. If I just subscribe, if I use the existing mechanism, I subscribe to this thing, uh, that could over that could overwhelm the connection because it, current Mach T object delivery does not have a back pressure mechanism that applies to an entire subscription. Right, that's quick level mechanisms that can apply to a stream or the number of streams or the total bytes in flight, but like we don't have quite the right backpacker pressure mechanism so that you could request that video and have it not just like completely blow everything away. And so I think those cases, when you're talking about fidelity and the fact that they're past use cases, also require some back pressure mechanism that does not exist. So again, so please attach okay, so my gap analysis. But, yeah, no, I'm trying to understand what, you're, what, what you think is missing on the back pressure. Like, like, let's just say hypothetically on those use cases before, I solved them by doing HLS dash in parallel with, with mock or whatever, right? I, I mean, like, or, or something like, like I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to get what, expand what you mean by back pressure and what's missing here okay. is what I'm poking at. If yeah. I subscribe, let's just say I have a publisher and a subscriber. And my yeah. subscriber says, so here's, a, here's a great example. I have, I have a mock clock server, which the first object is from January 1st, 1970. Right. And you can pass the start object of zero. I have done this by accident before. <laughs> My date server will attempt to serve me every second since 1970. Perfect. <laughs> and like, it doesn't go well. Because it can go really, it just wants to keep pushing those objects and I don't actually, if I actually wanted all that content, I don't necessarily want it as fast as that peer can send it to me. I want it as fast as I can consume it. Or like at some other rate, slower than as fast as it can send it to me. And I don't have the mechanisms in quick to slow it down at that level. Okay, Mike. Yeah, so I, I think that uh, back pressure is one way of solving that, but like generic pacing could be another. It doesn't necessarily need to be a feedback mechanism per se. It could be, I would like to receive at, at this rate. Okay, so, uh, so Jonna and then Luke, and then I see Will and Colin. Um, Eight minutes to our end of the session. The high level is that I, I don't, you don't need to build back pressure at every level. And my question here would be this, so we, we debated this in, in, for instance, in HTTP 2 and 3, what was it like, you know, come down or something like that? There's like some, <laughs> some signal that a client could, a uh, server could send to the client for doing something like this. But um, ultimately, those kinds of things which are nebulous and not precisely defined in the action, which is what it will end up being, um, don't end up getting used. Like, don't really end up getting used. My point here is that ultimately you have mechanisms in the transport to ensure that the network is not overwhelmed, that the client is not overwhelmed, and these are, we have flow control mechanisms for the receiver not to be overwhelmed, and we have congestion control mechanisms for the network to not be overwhelmed. What other overwhelming are we talking about? Okay, so what I, my, my assertion is that, that quick, uh, quick gives you three flow control, Yep. Things you can change that, that the receiver can control. Total number of streams, yep. total mm -hmm. number of bytes per stream, total number of bytes across yep. all streams. Yep. Subscriptions, because of the way they use can use streams, mm -hmm. the app the way the application might want to apply back pressure, and given that the connection could be used for multiple subscriptions, are not they don't give you the right mechanisms. You can't use them effectively without to slow one subscription down, but having another one not be slowed down because they both subscriptions utilize that pool of streams and bytes differently. So, but, okay, you think about it, we'll go through the queue. But I forget what you were, I think it was like, Yeah, I'll, I'll rephrase this a little bit because back pressure makes me think of flow control and this no flow control. Um, really, the problem we're trying to solve here is like VOD, you download at network speed, but you consume at encode speed. So if a video is encoded, you know, once every second, and you're downloading a VOD, you don't want to download like you know, an hour instantaneously because you just can't consume it that quickly. You have to render frame by frame. So this is kind of what summarized what I think we need from Fetch is a way of, of gradually playing back the data, uh, live data when it was produced, not at the speed you can is, download Is it. rate control better than back pressure? Oh, interesting. No, it's I not. Think. Okay. That's good, It could be. Okay. Wendell. Yes, this is, I mean, it, 
it was part of the uh, discussion we had in by email um, related with uh, Will's proposal. Uh, there is a delivery rate proposal, which is possible to uh, ask the relay to um, have some kind of uh, delivery capping. Uh, we have the on-off mechanism, which is quite popular for VOD, uh, which makes that we deliver at full, full speed during some time and then nothing. Uh, we can also have some possible uh, media rate uh, capping, meaning that the relay would uh, keep in mind, uh, I mean, store the uh, inter-delay of the, uh, the frames and be able to deliver it at the media rate or some uh, factors of the media rate. I think it's really part of the uh, uh, discussion we should have today. Uh, this back pressure is a very uh, interesting topic. Well, yeah, just this is a use case slide. So the back pressure is a solution to the problem of I've got stuff that's all available and the server's going to send it to me as fast as possible, which is bad for a number of reasons. Then there are solutions to this, which is what we're discussing. As Luke mentioned, I can ask for the rate, I can apply back pressure, some type of signal, or there's other mechanisms we can invent for that. But the core problem is I've got a lot of stuff that can come very quickly and I need some, some way to change that. Well, I want to agree with Luke and to point out John, why it's not maybe, you know, relevant for HTTP, but it's very relevant for us. Our objects almost always have a natural delivery rate. We, we almost always are dealing with media that has a natural rate. So for an arbitrary HTTP object or an arbitrary MACT object, yes, there may not be a perfect rate. But for the majority of MACT media, there is going to be a natural rate. And that's why I think it is important to be able to have the consumer specify the rate that they want to receive it to line up with that rate or a, a multiple of. I want, I want to do 2x playback, I ask for a 2x multiple of that rate. So I think because we're fundamentally rate-based media, we should have something in the API for rate-based delivery. Victor? Yeah, this is, the queue, please. This, is, uh, this is, I think this is purely back pressure problem as in it's not just end consumer, but like for instance, like I assume you're fetching a media from like cloud server through a relay and the link between the relay and the cloud server is 100 megabits, which is not the link between you and your client. So you need back pressure because otherwise the media server will dump the contents of the entire chunk you're fetching into memory. So this is the usual quick back pressure problem. Uh, and the, the main reason we it doesn't work for subscribe is it subscribes the uh, uh, split things across multiple streams and there are multiple subscribes, so we does not really have mechanisms to do something like that. Colin? Um, so, I mean, everything that has multiple things that fan in and fan out ends up in these back pressure problems. Routers, switches, everything ends up with this type. It's a very common problem in networking, right? So there's flow control that almost never works. There is rate specifications. They work in extremely narrow cases. We might be in one of those narrow cases. and there's asking what you want and getting what you want when you want it. Um, yeah. And don't ask for stuff you don't want. And that solution is the solution that just totally dominates the internet. It's used completely across the board. Um, and I think that's more or less what Luke's proposing, right? And all of these seems like solutions we could choose. We could have one or more of those in our solution, in any of the solutions we've been talking about. But we're going to land in some, some of those. But I, I think... I think back pressure generates an assumption that, that you're talking about a flow control type solution, and those have universally been sort of the worst of all the possible of these. I think that's the allergic reaction to it. Okay. <laughs> I, I appreciate that yeah. my gap analysis did not, I, I like the way you put it, or I think several other people have put it that like, you, you don't want too much. <laughs> the, like the thing, so, you know, yeah. the, that, that's maybe a better. So, so, I, have a, so I, I, so I understand like the complexity of multiple, multiple, you know, managing the three types of quick flow control with these like complicated subscribes and all that. If fetch results in a solution where the fetch response is in a single stream, do we still have these problems or does stream flow control completely solve them? I'm not gonna answer that question, someone else can. I, Victor? Uh, uh, I think <laughs> yes, it's like the premise of one of the proposals. Okay, cool. Uh, you probably could, but I think that in terms of, uh, I mean, I understand the problem now, it is. The, the thing I would say is that you will find a lot of, you want to have, you want to have terminology in the mock data for talking about how, 
how to do this. Yeah, uh, but you also want to talk about exactly what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Um, specifically, I think what Colin said is exactly right. Being able to ask for things at the right time is how things happen right now. But maybe that's the direction you want to go. That's going more into solutioning, but articulating the problem is still useful. Yeah. So, don't use full control. <laughs> That's right. Okay. I just want to, let, let me, we're, I'm out of my time box and I have one more slide, but let me ask, if particularly people who have solutions coming, do we, is there a different gap that's not identified here that you think needs closing use cases or maybe just address that in your presentation? Um, so, okay, roll into the last slide and then I'll get out of your way and you guys can do it. So things that people should think about what we're doing. So we've already done two major revisions to the subscribe arguments. So like, it seems like a third one's coming, so uh, I don't know. Like, let's make sure that we just keep in the back of our mind. Like, w why did that? Why why we struggled? And some of it, I think, goes into the second bullet. It's like there are edge cases here where, like, I don't know. Remember, like, relative next, and like we came up with like we thought that was great, and then it was like, oh, whoops! Like, there's all these crazy things you can ask for that don't make any sense, or like cases where uh, fashion subscriber are happening at the same time. They're, like Mo was saying, they're, they're part of the same use case. They're competing with each other. There's cases that are happening between subscriber and relay, and then when that gets from relay to publisher, I mean, you think about, like, how are these things going to be used together? And there may be other dragons. So uh, I don't know. But if there's anything else people want to say, uh, that's You're fine. You're standing between us and break. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Go get <laughs> some not coffee, people. Courage, yeah. Anybody, anybody want to leave the, have any other closing comments on framing? I think we need to come back to this after we discuss and see does it make sense or not, right? Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we are going to take a short break until 1045, and we'll start <coughs> off with Luke uh, talking about his proposal. You know that we're on break. It is the flow control works. It does what it's supposed <laughs> to. Do. But let me be clear about this. Yeah, it, what? It, it, it it's does, truly it does, clear. It, no, it, does, it doesn't work for this use case. No, it, it, it may not be useful for some things, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It works. It works as intended. The intentions might be different here. That's what I want to say. All right. Why, why, why couldn't you just release a certain amount of so, control credit? I, okay, are we having a meeting or are we having a break? No, we're <laughs> having a break. No, this is the break. 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 It's a side conversation. conversation. Over here, over here. <laughs> side conversation. <laughs> so, what would have to happen is a player, a bot player is downloading. Oh, oh, okay. A bot player is downloading way too much data. Like, it has like. No, no, I have this in the use case. Well, the use case, if you're going to use flow control, that means in JavaScript, you need to stop reading from streams, yeah. which means nothing else can come on the quick connection because you're using, like, max data. Like, you can't prioritize anything else. You, you, Once you hit flow sorry, control, the connection is uh, deadlocked. No, so well, I think Luke and I are both in the doctor, doctor, it hurts. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> don't, do not use flow control. Don't ask from the, that app, the application should not use flow control to control how much data it receives, is what I'm saying. I need your... Yeah, I mean, the whole point of flow control is to actually offer a tool for what, application. What, what did I bring? It's not exposed for something by any quick library. What, what, what would the API look like? Yeah, it's, what, it's, what would the user API look like? Just to be clear. Would you, you open your window one byte every hang on, 20 milliseconds? Hang on. Source code. Or a kilobyte every, not your source code. Hang on. 30 milliseconds? Did you use format? Because I I haven't thought about it. I actually changed my diff to remove format. What I did say, when I said flow control works, I'm just saying that flow control works in theory. If you didn't have flow control right yeah. now, many things would be bad. But flow control everything. works to stop overrunning me. I can process my data fast enough. That's not the problem. The, the player can process That's the, the data that, fast enough. That is not he the doesn't problem. want the data to come in. That is not the problem yeah. in the context yeah. that you're seeing. This is mostly an API problem. I think that's where it is. Yes. Yeah. In theory, yeah. you're right. If you could tell a quick stream, yeah. like, hey, so this, like, this is what I'm trying to argue. You, you, want, to, you want to say what you need uh, and the right mechanisms. Uh, See, the mechanisms can be complicated. Ah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. I think I know yeah, what it is. But you need to build an API that is very clear. Oh, yeah. You should. I think the current API. But even here, but even here, that's what I mean. You're right that the mechanism could work with a different API. There was another API. Uh, and that, that, what what are you guys talking about here? The JavaScript so yeah, quick flow control would not. There's not an API. The thing is, that's why I'm asking. Like, we can add it as a dependency. So, so quick flow control could not work in the current state because part of the idea is if you have one subscription active that you want to limit, there's no way to say max streams are only these that match these subscriptions. So we use both patch and one. You have to have flow control within the mock layer. So a subscription applies. So all of our tests were running off. Any number of streams can create multiple streams. 
sort of see make a parallel yeah. for the and other. you have like a weird so the problem thing is the dependency the exists in the internal and the yeah. and, and the hammers you have are per stream flow control so per stream could work if you had a subscriber scope to a single stream then yeah you in theory so that's my that's so trying to combine but the whole point of mock is you don't have a single stream per subscriber is that you have to have multiple streams but you can limit multiple you can continue not limit all the streams well when a stream is created you need to like learn about what subscription is going to be for so you can come back and say just like well, that's common. We already pressure. say that yeah, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of flow so you can okay, talk, I'm and I'll give you more based on, on what I've learned from you. So, in theory, yeah, if you introduce a so master, you could. Again, okay, quick libraries don't being, support this, though. Uh, like, yeah. there's no way to say stream dot like flow control. Like, we could, but it's like we have to. Like the answer yeah, here to not be that a library does not support it, therefore yeah. we'll build a so protocol mechanism on top of it, is a bad practice. practice. Yeah. Max streams, you just need a solution for because you don't know, the other side doesn't know if it's allowed to create a stream for subscription. Okay, so here's a stream. It would create a stream. Ma There's no way. Stream. I don't think Max streams is. Max streams is. is, is, is even that's even, even if you had a great API, how would the actual implementation work of the flow control itself? No, it's would, the would the layer under that API? Be like giving credits that, one byte at a time, or would it be it's, it's no, it's opening a window for in, 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 My point here is you have a mechanism uh, that does the sender stop sending on the stream in quick. Yeah. But the, the intention, the application intention is uh, I want to limit to to how many ever frames, frames per second. Per I, I want to say, I want to give me 30 yeah. frames yeah. per second. Or I want to give me 50 audio frames per second. That's the intention. Yeah. So I want to open. I'm gonna ask so, the quick layer to yeah. open, only open for one frame. Yeah. That's that's max oh, max stream data every single time you for one frame. You want to consume it at a rate per second. You want to consume it at well, rate per second. You don't, I can translate you don't need that. I can translate that. I can translate that to <laughs> bytes over a long of time. This is so again done direct, in quick okay. stacks right now. Thanks. Right, but I mean, look at look, look at the mechanism that actually goes there. That means that I have to send a quick frame every fr every media frame. No, no, every to, to, to every no. You, you, you should keep it simple. If you want flow control for the application, you should put that at the application layer. Something like uh, post the fetch or something like that. Yeah, I see the quick windows as, as I don't want to be overrun. I can't process the data fast. I, I I, I, here's, here's my, here's my, uh, here's the thing I want to say. I'm not presupposing a solution. I'm not saying that you know flow control is adequate. I know that Victor has an argument to make that. But what I'm saying Sorry. is, let's understand what flow control, control yeah. what it can do, uh, just and we can right absolutely here, choose uh, not to do it. Yeah, just comment. So, like, Christian, you don't think flow control is going to work? To find, like, if you go to the file, just comment out. No, I don't think flow control is going to work. I think that if you have an application desire. To receive less data, it should be expressed at the application level. Trying to push on the flow control seems yeah, like a bad control. idea. Isn't scheduling priorities part of the solution here? I mean, so if they, you're both subscribing to number of streams at a higher priority than your fetch requests yeah. priority, you would only use extra available re resources for your fetch request, assuming that your scheduling actually works according to your priorities. Yes, Magnus, w what I'm saying is that if the application has a desire to receive some data or not receive it, that should be at the application layer. Trying to do that by pushing on flow control or stuff like that is very hard to tune, it's going to backfire. Yeah, but what's the reason yeah. in any value in quick flow control when you're actually uh, uh, accepting things? They're doing it because the application is reading stuff out of the buffers and you have a limited amount of memory that you can use. Flow control is ultimately... There, there, there was a reason, Jenna. You, you, you may want to do use flow control to limit the amount of data you have in transit because in transit data means that if something breaks, you have to repeat way more, etc. I mean, but generally using a transport mechanism to achieve an application layer result is yeah. not a good idea. I'm not following. If, if there I, mean, is... I don't understand what the point of flow control is if it's not for application use. Who else uses it? Transport doesn't care. I think Christian is saying these, these stuff, are transport oh. buffers. I think Christian is saying these but, are just the the transport, transport buffers. But you're right. The, the, the application the provided the transport the buffers. Who else is using yeah. the transport you, buffer? You, I, I, you... I... Now, for example, mm -hmm. if you use flow control, I mean, you can only push back on a stream. So if pushing back on a stream is, is okay for you, 
that's fine. The side effects is that there is also flow control on the number of streams. There's also flow control on the global amount of data. You have to have zero credit every stream. I mean, if you look, if you look at this. My, my, my point is that if you can push back on the numbers, that's, that's a mechanism that we have, uh, right, to push back on, on each stream. And if you have an abstraction that's sitting whatever, in block P or whatever it is, that says, if, there's, if I need to put pressure on this particular subscription, I have to push down on stream X, Y, and Z. A stream C. group would be really nice. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's, a, that's something like, you can build on top of it. Wait, but like, but, 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 but fetchers apply to with a single stream. And you have stream level flow. Well, this, we're, we're saying it would flow control work with subscribe. Okay, yes, fair, yeah, I, I that, to make fetch. Hence my question, which I got but, some pushback but I, on. But, but again, if, stream groups are a thing. I mean, you can, you, you can absolutely build those in, in the application. That's, streams are a unit. Well, right? it's, it's about, the, again, the problem is in the quick layer, so you need APIs to control it. And it's not just you, a quick. It's yes. not just a quick layer. I mean, Christian's yes, point. Do. Christian's point is best uh, example by this. Forget about quick. If you try to do this today over UDP or TCP, yeah. would you ever consider the application to change its U limit all the time that on is, every frame? No, no, not U limit all the time on the. To, to frame, change a socket buffer. TCP flow control literally is for the application readout. I mean, if the application is not reading out, TCP is going to push back on the. Right, second. but but when an application create sets its buffer it's it's at a it's at an os level you know buffer it's size it's yes. not it, it's not a dynamic thing that it does it on on its on its delivery rate basis it's it's something that it says at os you know at boot time mm -hmm. I, I want this limit i want to create these buffers so that you yeah. can you can handle receiving data it doesn't mean that, that that i want my media being delivered at that rate it just means that's the maximum buffers that i want this you know this application but, to consume so it's a different semantic and we wouldn't intend to abuse that semantic today in udp or tcp right I mean, but the, we were on to abuse it abuse, i mean again we okay so the reason flow control exists so imagine a tcp receiver right with no flow control what happens you don't run who well, gets over the receiver gets over there's, there's, part of two, the there's two parts that can be overrun there it can be the kernel you know reassembly buffer and there can be the application. So to your point, the application chooses the re, uh, rate it reads no, the kernel. when you say the kernel, again, I want to be clear about this, right? That's For a socket buffer. It's a socket buffer, yeah, the receive buffer. Which is specific to that particular socket, yes. which is owned by that application. Yes. But the application... If the application dies, the socket goes away. It depends, but yeah, the but layers, yes, 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 yes. But don't yeah. go into like, you know, yeah. possibilities yeah. of... Yes. But that's I'm a not, static not buffer. Most like, things, you can't, can, you can't really set that. Like, that's, that's, you can't... Un you can't speak, you can't yeah. current, well, not but, in like... But it's like a safety thing. It's like a safety you know. guard. It's not... But T-Speed was built in 1978. Right. Like, yeah. Like, like we did quick massively to avoid this problem. My point my point here, ultimately, is that your buffer... Another couple of spots. So, the buffers exist for the application consumption for no other reason. Yeah, the application wants to change it. It has an API problem. We should talk about it. Martin, this might be useful. Just once again. I think that I don't want to make APIs the reason that we build a protocol uh, uh, to be different. I'm just arguing that if the existing libraries oh, don't no, have an API that just, satisfies oh, uh, mock T need, mm -hmm. it seems Oops. to yeah. me unreasonable that we build a protocol mechanism yes, just uh, because we don't have the API yeah. Yeah. The, the way you do it now is the application would have to choose not to read from streams if it has too much VOD data. It would have to choose not to read to quick streams, even though data is I understand, available. but if you want an API, I, I would say that yeah. the expression of that should be different from the implementation of it. Let's talk about what you want to express. So is it an API that you want to express? Can you translate it into Oh, yeah, but we need max streams. I think it's the one that's really hard. I, I want to yes. think I want to do the so, so, the, 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 the thing, thing is that you have a value. Yes. You know, I want, want to compress. Uh, uh, and you'll see the proposal. You'll see the proposal. It's I've not got one. centered on zero. So it's our centered on in the mid-range of your integers. So we are in this file from the internal. I write an issue in the proposal. I'm happy to make fun of it. This one is the one that works. We can use key. I mean, H has its own bar. I don't want to put it on the list. It just looks good. Well, it's interesting. This is all of our tests and everything. It's like your eyes are easy to miss them. Hey, man. 90% of our... Egress goes out of our quick. Yeah. Basically, all, all of our integrated yeah. things are just what we could have. Um, when we run the test, we could have it just run the open source code as well. That's all we do. Yeah. My OSP. Yeah. 
It just has a side chat screen. Oh, this is one always breaks something. Well, you can use the open source. Yeah. So just, we have CMIC and the build stuff is in here. Just invoke it. It's, it's triggered. It's, yeah, like, it's not even like we have to pull it from the app. We just need to do it from the actual file itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you guys have a, like a Jenkins thing or what's the equivalent of Jenkins? We're beginning in 30 yeah. seconds, yeah. those of you out there in the world, 30 seconds. Yeah. So it's the SCD, the yeah. pipeline coming yeah. yeah. So the web access well, we can, script is Yeah, we can somewhere? create a like, text script that? that just launches this. Um, yeah, we have I'm not familiar. This is the first part I could tell with where, yeah, so where we have CMake in a full code. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know. Yeah, done to I use CMake. Do you want to drive? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think this has AI. I'm like, I mean, maybe like I know. Just dump it in chat. Just dump it in chat. Just dump it in chat. Which is how I found the one yesterday. <laughs> we had to go install it. I was like, wait, it broke. That's fine. This one is good for interop because um, we can't plug our dev servers into other yeah, I mean, I didn't see. Yeah, makes sense. So, uh, it, I mean, it might be like, like it's, it's Alchemize Web Apps. It might be yes. like a host. We can see it. Right. So it's not much effort. I'm not a host. Set up an entire forward process. Is that the socks for a reason? Festive socks. If you've not experienced it, it doesn't even do it. First of all, you're on. Okay, yeah, let me just share the slides. I'll just post them on, on Slack. I need to point spread. It was the biggest pain from like some weird bug in the strip compiler. While Luke's getting ready, we'll do our reminder of what a clarifying question is. An example of a clarifying question is Do you mean. Uh, Quick stream or a different kind of stream? The clarifying question is not, why does your proposal suck and what are you going to do about it? <laughs> um, Luke, you may want to come over this way. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to put it on the mock channel. As well. No, but I'm saying you're not on camera over there. So yeah, yeah. Sitting sitting at the, I'm going to copy that link before. to all the other channels. Or we could put them in the front and switch the camera too. Switch the camera. It's fine. Through, I need to be done. Thank you. So the hot seat. Um, yeah, post the, the, the. Oh, you want us to share board? Yeah, just share. It's easier that way. Oh, okay. I'm not even on the WebEx call. What? Okay. Uh, you put it in the mock channel? Yeah. Uh, and I'm copying it all over. <laughs> it's very simple, so. <laughs> yeah, our, our Zulip bridge will get fixed someday. Uh, I just don't know when that day is. Are you sharing it or? I'm no, sure. you're on. Okay. Your turn. Okay. I got it. Uh, if only there was some protocol that would allow us to have a camera take every desk position, <laughs> merge them all into one stream, and select from. Somebody should build that. <laughs> okay. Here you go, Luke. Okay. So this is an interesting first one because uh, uh, basically um, it's just idea. You know, what if you just did what HTTP does. Like, why do we need fancy mechanisms? Let's just do what we've done before. So I call this fetch like HTTP. Next slide. Uh, we talked about use cases. Next slide. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so pretty much, it, this is just almost a clone of H3, where you have the consumer opens a bidirectional stream, contains a track name space, track name, uh, an identifier for a stream, AKA a peep, or a subgroup, or whatever. Just some way of identifying a single stream, a single subgroup. Um, you need some way to start at an offset, like a start group ID or a byte offset or something, kind of like a range request, but some way that, you know, if you get some of a peep, like some of a quick stream, you can resume afterwards. Uh, and then a priority, so you can um, prioritize subscribes and fetches among uh, each other. So, okay, clarify. So the subgroup, is that actually like a fetch ID? Uh, no, no, it's just a way of identifying, uh, it would be a group in, what, a uh, subgroup ID? I haven't read the, 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 the latest peep stuff, a peep, peep ID. Peep. It'd be a okay. peep ID in that, that, what it was originally called. Okay, uh, all right. It is, it is an identifier, I, 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 I think it's a single quick stream. Okay, I, I think you might be messing some concepts up, but let's move on. Probably. Okay. It's a minor detail. You need the identifier of where you're going to start, right? Because yeah. your group ID and a subgroup ID. The important thing is you're identifying object a single object. stream. Okay, and, and just, sorry, just, this is a clarifying question here. You're deliberately not identifying the object ID, like like you're using the byte offset to figure out that you're 
past the first object and yeah. halfway through the second one object. of the use okay. cases here is if um, for example there you're subscribing you receive some of the stream and then it's reset or canceled for whatever reason because you know the connection went away or because uh, you're just too late you're too slow um, one of the use cases is fetched you want to just resume from a stream that you've already <coughs> partially received um, I, you know, st start object ID with how you do uh, be, uh, how you do it. Um, byte offset is a little bit more granular, but start object ID is the way we should do it in the current draft. Um, I have a second question. Yes. Does it mean if the boot is not fully done or it's not yet produced, you talk about what ha what the fix should do? Uh, as far as I see it, it's the same as a normal subscribe stream. So, okay. like, basically, a stream that contains objects. This is effectively just saying please send objects back in the stream. So the same way a subscribe would work. Does, is there anything for like the end of what the fetch is in here or is this just open? So I am a fan of quick fin. Uh, I know some people don't like that. And so you could have an explicit end of fetch message, but this is just like HTTP three. Like you make a, you open a stream, no, you Daniel send a request. The request and not the response end. Oh, request end. I mean, it'd be a single so, message. I uh, guess. So I, 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 maybe what people so so when you're when you're getting a track when you're fetching a track you're sending a fetch for each subgroup in yes. that track individually you're not sending a single fetch got it okay, okay. Yes. that's that's why yes. so all objects in that subgroup no just a subgroup you're fetching the whole subgroup yeah. but you can have a yeah. you can do some of the objects if if you're split which is what the fourth yeah. deal is. That's, okay. Yeah, that's what so this follows stream seconds. mapping. The idea is, is if the oh, content okay. was produced with like five objects on the same stream, you must also fetch those five objects on the same stream. Like you not, we don't reshuffle with the quick so stream this mapping. Is, this is closer to the HTTP model in the sense. This is like H three. Yes. This yeah. is... No, no. What I mean is specifically that that each yes. uh, you're fetching each object you send. Yes. Well, not. Oh no no sorry not each object sorry sorry I said yes said... too quickly. Okay. You are fetching a. Subgroup which can contain multiple objects. But, but you're not fetching each object, you're fetching a subgroup. Yes. Okay. okay. How, with group ID, I understand. No, okay. Now I'm, I'm confused how group you're going to do subgroup ID discovery. Well, that's, but that's, that's, a, that's, I'm not sure that's, that may be a, that's not that may be not a clarifying question. question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. We could, we could make this just group ID. Okay. But that would be a single stream for an entire group. And the intent here is if you split that group into multiple streams, don't you want to fetch them independently too? Okay. okay. Right. Right. Clarifying question. So, so there's no proposal to fetch an individual object. No. Even though there were use cases that mentioned cache refill of a single object or, or a single thing. This would evict, the cache would be evicted not based on object ID, but based on um, the tail of a subgroup, right? Like, so if you evict object five and still have seven in the cache from the same stream, that's just weird. It's like evicting the middle of a quick stream. It's a, a really strange cache to have. So this is, treat it like a quick stream, is that you receive from the start to the end, the cache would also be ordered in the same way. You're not gonna evict stuff at the start, but keep stuff at the end. So in this case, so clarifying question. So in this case, you would expect the uh, the publisher or the server or relay for that matter yeah. to know, to remember state about uh, the group and what other objects were served in the group and so on. Or go upstream. So, they have to. So they have to, right? Well, the server already server knows group. what subgroup every object is. In. Well, it has to. Already knows what, does it know what all objects are in a subgroup? All the time? Not necessarily. Yeah, it might have been a partial. Thing. If, all of, if I've cached all of the stuff. But it knows it got an incomplete subgroup, possibly, right? Like, it might know its cache is incomplete. It's like an HTTP request. Again, talking in HTTP terms. Yeah, think of it's, a, it's a, it's a... not like an HTTP request because I have to generate multiple objects <coughs> and send them a uh, response to one request. Think of objects like response byte ranges. Like, you might have received the first half of an HTTP response, and you could cache that. Well, right? you're, saying, you're saying that the cache key here is a subgroup ID, basically. Pretty, well, yeah. technically subgroup, um, yeah. yes. Yeah, so you uh, you know that you receive some of the, the HTTP response. You can cache that and you can serve it, but you know you're okay. missing some, so you can go upstream to fetch the rest. Okay. Can I just say, how many slides do you have? 
There's one more. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great answer. In fact, you can go to the next slide really quick. Okay. Uh, and then because because it's this, you reply on the same stream. It's just a train of objects, the same way a you know a normal subgroup is, or an error message saying this doesn't exist any or or whatever. Um, equivalent to an HTTP response. So uh, the way I model this is think of more like byte ranges: an HTTP request with a byte range, an HTTP response with a byte range. So I've got a question about the priorities and how they work. So uh, what when a relay receives fetches from multiple clients, probably at the same time for similar stuff, and then it's sending them upstream, what does it do with the upstream priority when it's ag you know when it's taking fetches and perhaps aggregating them and, and serving some of them out of the cache and going upstream for some of them? Uh, this to me is the subscriber priority. Uh, right. Same way you subscribe as a priority in it. Um, yep. For an upstream, you would want to use the publisher priority for that track or whatever. So this is just for just for the last mile, this priority. Okay, got it. Makes sense. Um, that way you could have multiple fetches in parallel and multiple <laughs> subscribes in parallel, and they are grouped by the subscriber. But upstream, it's all bets are off. So you support multiple fetches. Um, they have to be different uh, group IDs. You can't fetch the same group. Right. You could just like you can make an HTTP request for the same object okay. twice. Okay, so there's no no prohibition on on any of the overlapping fetches or anything like that. There's no requirement for the relay to do anything special about. No, that. this is just please replay a quick stream. Is the way I see this message. Just please replay it. The same one I would have received from a subscribe. So is that? Sorry. Well, not Clarifying exactly because yeah. subscribe could be multiple streams, whereas in a fetch it would collapse. To this one. is a single <laughs> one, but you can only request what would have been on a single stream. Oh, so, I see. so so if you're requesting a bunch of groups, you're going to send many, many fetches. You're gonna. It's like yeah, exactly. If you have fifty that's groups, it's going to be fifty yeah. fetches oh, at okay, least. Okay, okay, I get it now. I mean, that's yeah. I think in that sense, it it's maps like HLS. To, it actually maps to an HTTP three object in that sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Or subgroups of the HTTP. Yeah, but then, uh, if if the mode was data maps, then you need to just clarify that somehow. It should be on. I, I, I thought I, it does. Yeah. I don't want to get into datagrams, but it seems weird that you want reliable transfer of datagrams. But, <laughs> no, it's the, but yes, it's something that was originally done. Yes, yes. Yeah, we can, this would, I mean, this would probably be send it back on the stream as well. Yeah. Will? Yeah. You had a, did you have a comment or question? It was answered. It was a clarifying that if I want to re request 500 yeah. groups, I have to make 500 fetches. Yeah. So the proposal. How subgroups are in those 500 groups? Oh, so, even, so okay, at the subgroup and, level times. Yeah. So the unfortunate proposal is effectively, if you want to do VOD, you do it like HLS and Dash, where you selectively fetch up until you're, you know, you have 30 seconds in, 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 in the playback buffer. And then when that depletes, you'll fetch a little bit more. When that depletes, you'll fetch a little bit more. That's the proposal is just do a VOD just like HLS and Dash. Are there any other kind of fine? Come on, go ahead. Is there, is there only a single fetch to open the stream and every other control message is prohibited? Or are you allowing any any other control messages on that either either stream? No, this is this is a data only stream. It's bidirectional, <laughs> which we did say is for control messages only. But this is an exception. This is a data stream, so we, just you, for fetch. You would need to have a new kind of stream, tech, like a fetch stream. Yeah, it would be a, a separate from the control stream. Yeah. And this was in common with with Suhas's proposal. So I think we also need to figure out uh, fixing the control stream, understanding the difference between opening a new bidirectional stream that's a for a fetch versus I'm trying to repair the control stream. You need to put the type well, of the the Yeah, yeah just an ID in the, the header. All right. Will, are you ready? Can you stop sharing? Will, are you ready to join? Yeah, I'm okay. ready. So While people are doing that, I see we have some new um, new joinees. Uh, please go sign the blue sheet. Um, there, the link to the, to the, to the uh, notes is in multiple places. It's, it's in the WebEx chat, it's in Slack, and it is in um, Zulip. So please uh, click on one of those links. Go add your name and affiliation to the blue sheets. It's very helpful to us. And um, let me know if, and there it is again. Uh, thank you, Colin. Please let me know if you're having trouble getting to that and we will make it easier for you. Uh, if you want me to share your slide, Will, you can't send it to me in WebEx chat. Well, I've got, I'm just sharing directly. Oh, you're going to share. And okay. I put a link oh, into the, the WebEx chat for okay. those who want to read ahead. Um, Okay, so here's a second fetch proposal. Well, Will, can I just interrupt for one second and ask you? So one thing I wanted to ask before we started was, 
I think one of the things that we're going to try to do is try to distill what is the same between the proposals and what is different, because what is different is where we're going to spend most of our time discussing to see if we can converge. So as we go through the proposals, please make mental notes and help the chairs. And Colin's already got a spreadsheet going. So <laughs> All right, thank you. Go well. So yeah, another proposal for Fetch. Um, having having worked in HLS and Dash for the last fifteen years, I I don't want to recreate them for Mock. So my proposal <laughs> is a little different, but and and it does collapse down to something very close to what um, Luke has already presented. So I'm not going to go through the use cases. I think they were covered covered by Alan this morning. I have uh, have some ground assumptions. So there's three. One, there's a subscribe API which only handles the retrieval of current and future groups in a track. Secondly, the group IDs within Mock are required to increase by one. I know this is a decoupled and a big argument, right? But the more I go through these, these models, we have very inefficient workflows when we're trying to fetch content with sparse group IDs. Uh, because we constantly, every time there's a gap, we have to go upstream uh, to retrieve content that may never, ever have existed. So I think that's that's a constraint. Doesn't mean the API proposing doesn't work with this necessarily, but I think this assumption should be in place to make it efficient. And then thirdly, that relays have some ability to adjust the rate at which they can serve content on a quick connection. Do you have a from, clarifying question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had a quick question on the group IDs incrementing. I had an outstanding question before about having uh, multiple groups in flight as we're transitioning to a new group. Maybe later you can explain how that's going to work. Do we have to wait for the group to finish completely? That means the fin close of a stream? Or do we just so let that stream linger? In this, the response all comes back on a single stream. So you're not waiting for one stream to, to close before you open another one. So with this, this, this is a control message. The API I'm proposing would go down the control link. The the publisher will then open up a new unidirectional stream and send all your, your data back on that single unidirectional stream. Okay, so yeah, okay, so this group incrementing by one doesn't apply to other implementations of groups. No, it's for if you ask for a range, if I ask for 50 to 60, um, I know that there should be 50, 51, 52, 53, etc. Not that there's in fact no no groups between 50 and 60 that they're sparse. Can I clarify, Will? Does your proposal depend on this assumption, or will it just does not in? depend on it? Okay, so that's it good. So we depend. It's All just right. very in a, things become inefficient, and even with Luke's proposal too, it's not different, right? Okay, yeah, I think I understand, Victor. Victor. Uh, there is something you want to point out to reply to previous comments. It is not generally possible to bulk deal a reply of a fetch with a subscribe only because of the properties of because of okay. the properties mismatch. So like assume that if you're doing a fetch, the relay at the back end has to do a fetch. Okay. At least once. Yep. Okay. Are we ready to roll? Yeah. So right. here we are. So here's the API on one slide. There are more items, but I also think there's a bunch of use cases that we want to satisfy. The stuff in green are the only required attributes, the, the red things are not. So I'll just go through them very quickly. ID, every fetch has an ID. This is so we can cancel it uh, once it's started. You can have parallel fetches underway. We have a track name. I don't care if it's namespace, name, tuple, or just name. We have a start group. We have a start object. We have an end group. We have an end object, right? End group, if not specified, if it's absent, it just says you should continue delivering it until the track is signaled complete or you cancel this fetch. End object, it's basically signal the last object in the group and we have an object status value for that. There's a priority value, same as Luke's, it's participating in the same priority scheme that is relative to subscriptions. So if you have two subscriptions and you have a fetch, you can adjust the relative priority between them. There's a group order, ascending or descending. There's an object filter, I'll explain why that is useful. And there's a delivery rate in your favorite units. Uh, the default, though, is for it to serve as fast as possible and less instructed otherwise. Question? Uh, yes, quick question. Um, so subgroup is irrelevant here, or you yes. wrote this up before subgroups? I, I, did. I wrote this before subgroups. 
we could we could think of having an additional parameter in to say I want a subgroup, if the, like a peep ID or subgroup ID of a group. But my I wrote this API where you, you and you'll see the use cases you fetch either the complete group, which I think is the majority use case, as, as Luke mentioned, or you're gonna you can request individual objects within a group. So there's two other parts of the API. There's the fetch. There's a fetch update, which I think is interesting. If I have a long running fetch, I have a fetch onto a, a stream, and it's running for 30 minutes, I might want to change some things about it. Instead of canceling the old one, making a new one, I can update it. This is similar to up subscribe update. And I can also cancel a fetch that's been issued previously. All I need to do is give it the ID, and it's canceled. Um, so and just a note on reliability. And I think this is, we've, we've sort of stated this in our discussion today, that if a server is served group N and the next group it receives is N plus 2, then with a fetch it must make an upstream request to try to retrieve N plus 1 before forwarding N2 to the subscriber. And the response for N plus 1 can be that it's a missing object, but it must have some definitive statement. We and introduced just, just a the third case. Yep. Just a clarification on this. You mean uh, it, it must do that before forwarding in plus two on this fetch thing. Like on the stream, impact, right? It's got a stream which is just... But it's got the other subscreams that are subscribed, right? Yes. It, 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 does, it doesn't touch those. It doesn't change that. It yeah, doesn't okay. hurt yeah. the subscribes. Yeah, perfect. Just, I got it. We, we're going to head of line block our stream of course, because we want the reliability. This is the core difference with subscribe. And we introduced a notion today that maybe we want to time out on that, which I'm not mentioning here. So, yeah, you can go upstream, but if upstream's taking you too long, we should have a timeout to say, I tried to get this, but I timed out. But what does that mean? What is the, what would you propose happens in this timeout expires? You send N plus two or you say- I send another state? object status, which is timed out. Oh, I see. Which means it might exist in the future. You should ask for it again. But okay. it's not missing, right? We haven't confirmed yeah. it's missing. We just, we can't keep waiting. And that's a reality of these, these systems. And in order to start, say I want to start three segments behind live, a non-real-time client would first send a track status request <laughs> in the track. That gives it the group ID at the live edge. Then it can subtract whatever it wants from that and make an explicit request to start retrieving that, that uh, track at that offset. And this is an extra RTT, and I think it's acceptable for non-real-time clients because it gives you a deterministic start. So we get away from this relative, I want to start minus three, minus five, we just start at an absolute number. Um, and it's very clear for the relay what number you're asking for. It, it's, it's a number. And this proposal assumes responses are sent on a new unidirectional quick stream. So it's slightly different to, to Luke's. I'm open to different architectures on that. Was fet your fetch went on its own stream? My fetch went on the control stream. Went on control stream. Okay, but the response comes back on a unidirectional a single single commercial. now I had an API in where you could choose the number and yesterday I was talked out of having multiple that it wasn't actually going to improve performance so I took it out but the one I sent around last week you could choose how many parallel streams you wanted to come back so let's run through some use cases very quickly retrieving a subclip you say my ID is one here's the name I want to start at group 345 I want to end at 521 the client gets that from a catalog or through some out-of-band mechanism this is retrieving a, a sub clip with a relative priority of 10. Same thing, I just add on my priority is 10. And this, this might deprioritize it with respect to either other fetches or to existing subscribes. Example three, I only want to get the iframes while seeking forward. I want to use this for visual scrubbing, right? This is a common use case. I want to scrub through my movie and, and get a clue of where I am. It's the same thing. I want to go start group zero to 200, but now I set an object filter and I just say I only want object ID zero. So my application knows that the iframes in this particular case are encoded in object zero. So all I get sent are every group, it, it filters out this object and it sends it to me. And this is the same thing with scrubbing backwards, which is another common use case when you want to go backwards in your movie. Zero to 200, it kept, now my group order is descending and uh, I set the same object filter. Example five, retrieving a missing group. So here I want to repair my cache. And this, this is the one that collapses down to, to Luke. So I just say, well, sorry, Luke's refetching a peep. But if you just want a single group, you just start and end on the same group and you just get that group. 
In this one, I'm retrieving a single missing object. So I just start on that, start and end on that group, and I set a filter for the object that I want to get out. Example seven, I want a range of objects within a group. Same thing. So this is all group 21, but for some reason, I want to repair objects 34 to 46. It's a contiguous range of objects. I can ask for them. And in this case, it's my, my group's a mess, and now I'm doing some fancy repair so I can request these non-contiguous ranges as well as individual ones. But the syntax is pretty simple. For seven, isn't it the same? Because you had a start object and end object also, so you can also do that. Without it's a filter, it. so it, the filter's You inclusive. can do it with the filter, but you have two ways to do the same yes. thing. Yes, oh, sorry, uh, I have another, do I have another slide? I There's two ways here. to do this, right? Yeah. You can do, if you're doing a single one, the same start group. and end, but it's actually the filter is a very convenient yeah. syntax, so I just left it in. How because do you, how do you deal with subgroups in this? I don't deal with subgroups in this. Now we could add syntax. We could add an additional attribute for your your subgroup so selection if you for, want. For people who are so subgroups are not really a subscriber thing. Um, you don't like you don't request sub. So set inside fetch and subscribe link. You do not fetch subgroups, or I shouldn't use that verb. Request. You do not request <laughs> subgroups. Um, there, like the only reason it's the field even is on the wire is because relays need to know that things map to the same stream when they send it out again. It is purely a sender side thing. And this collapses the stream as well as proposal. So it takes yes. n streams and merges them. Mine will just take, it doesn't matter how many streams it came in on or how many subgroups are there. You get this group, this object, they come back on the same stream. Yeah, I'm just thinking about how I would. From my point of view, one of the things that I've seen is different between looks for both in your proposal is that my cache key at the cache would be different. Yes. In this one, it would be object ID. In your it would be subgroup. Well, mine would be group and, and object ID. <laughs> yeah. Because object IDs repeat within groups. Oh, of course. No, Unless yes. we get yes. to Victor's so, yes, proposal yes. later, I yes. think. Yes, group is a part of it. Yeah. For sure. yes. So it's the tuple of it's, namespace, it's name, the group, all, and ID. All, all yeah. All it's a group object tuple versus a group subgroup tuple. Yeah, yes. Whereas this one requires me to have subgroup because I need to remember this. Thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you need that for subscribe anyway. Are, are you done, Will? No. Okay. Example yeah, nine I want to get a live stream starting at this explicit group and retrieving it until the track is complete. This is. I want to watch live sports, right? I want to do it with a 12 second buffer. So it's very simple. I just set my start group and I keep, I keep getting the group. So what it'll do, it'll burst a tiny amount till I catch up with live. And after that, I'm going to receive these at their encoded rate. Wendell. I'm, I have a slide on your stuff, Gwendol. Okay. Yeah. So just maybe wait on that. Colin. Oh, Jen. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay. Identification in this example nine, would this basically be a single stream to infinity? Yes. Okay. Well, not to infinity. Well, to in, till the end, <laughs> of, till the end yeah. of the track. Yes, it okay. would be. And here, this is now addressing that problem of what if, yeah. what if I start and there's a thousand groups that it could just burst to me at a terabit? So <laughs> I set my delivery rate. And I say, send this to me, but throttle it to this. And we had discussion yesterday where people say, well, what if it's like... V, um, it's not constant bitrate encoded. That doesn't matter, right? If my stream is roughly four megabits encoded, maybe it goes up and down. I'm going to set a delivery rate just above that. And you can also change this as well on the fly. So this is a way to address the earlier issue of how can I get this large amount of material but pace how it's delivered to me. So example 11, I want to get a VOD asset, a complete VOD asset, but I want to limit the delivery rate. So I just start at group zero, it goes to the end, and I set a delivery rate that doesn't uh, flood my memory. Example 12, I want to get a subclip, but then I change my mind. So I, I open up the fetch, and while it's coming back down, I can cancel it by just echoing back the ID. Example 13, and this was discussed, I'm playing a long VOD asset. It might be a four-hour, eight-hour cricket game, right? I just request 30 groups. Then a little bit later, I request the next 30, then the next 30, then the next 30. Uh, so I don't have to pace. This is the alternate to pacing. I just simply request my buffer will burst by 30 groups. I'll drain it. I'll burst it some more. Would those be different ID? Oh, it's an update. Sorry. It's an update. Yes, yes. yes sorry. Because yes. there's no real need to repeat the name yeah. and everything else. You just keep them. And the relay already has so, to keep. 
keep this reference in memory. And the difference here would be that the updates would apply to objects that are going to then be sent over the future stream, yeah. rather than a new yes. resulting in I, a new stream. I don't close the right. stream, right? right? I just change what I put yep. into it. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. A few more slides. I mean, like, <laughs> is, isn't there a potential race condition? Like, if if a if a stream closes and then you and while well, a fetch update they cross each other in path. Yeah. Yes, but then we we need some sort of error condition like okay. uh, ID no fetch no longer exists. Okay, I didn't Thank you. put that in there. All right, move on. Um, this is where I'm using update to change the delivery rate for ABR estimation. So the trouble is, if I just if I know my streams at five megabits and I throttle it to five point five, I'll never really know if I can switch up to the ten meg version. So here I say send it to me at, at five point five. But then send it to me at 20 if you can. Now, if it doesn't have enough, right, if your connection doesn't have enough, you can base, you, you know then that you should be getting 20. If you're not getting it, you can at least measure what you got. So this is one way to adjust the delivery rate on the fly to help with ABR. Um, and then Gwendol put some written comments online for other mechanisms to achieve that. So one is delivery rate capping, which is essentially what we, I have in place. Another is on-off that he mentioned, where you can burst as fast as possible and then don't send anything. And then there's media pace capping, where you basically replicate the live mode, which records storing some, some information on how you receive the objects. And this assumes that they were previously live and that it's not some VOD movie that was never live. And I also added a slide for relative previous, but I don't want to discuss that. I think it's confusing. So I can stop there on the proposal. Okay, so I have a question that jumps way, way back a long ways, but um, is yeah. I, I, just making sure I'm understanding this correctly, is that if, if uh, both a, a live fetch and a uh, subscribe had been sent to the original publisher, they're going to be sending two copies of the data over, one over the subscribe path and one over the fetch You're path. You're talking about right? the same connection. So, well, but, but well, okay. yeah. But let's say two different yeah. clients connected to a relay, and then the relay had to, the relay had no data whatsoever. One did a, one client did a subscribe, the other one did a a fetch that went to infinity. Okay, it went zero to infinity, and the other one did a subscribe zero to infinity. <laughs> um, the relay is going to need to form both a fetch and a subscribe back to the original client is going to get two copies of all the data, right? It is. And the difference between, the, I think you need to do that. Okay. And the difference is that your, your subscribe may have missing objects, yep. right? And you need, you need to maintain that to get the delivery, the QoS that you want for your subscribe client. What's interesting is if there was, say, a live stream last week, and at, at some relays, it was 99% in the relay, but it missed a few things, you could... Your, your relay could say, fine, this, this is no longer live, but I have it in cache. I'm going to just retrieve the missing objects. I don't have to necessarily go upstream for the stuff that arrived in the cache from a subscribe. Sure. So that was going to be my next question is like, how's a relay? When the relay receives a fetch for one of those ranges and it has some of the objects, but not all of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it goes upstream for the missing ones. Okay. It doesn't have to re-retrieve them. Yeah, of course. Okay, so then that's sort of yeah. What the was. other when you also think through the use cases, there's not many cases where you're going to have subscribes and fetches for the same live <coughs> image happening at the same time. Like a, a real time client is, is a real time client. Uh, you might have an archival client that's trying to play this live stream back from live. That would be one case where where it might happen. But I don't think they will mix and match that much. And even if they do, I think it, it works just fine. And then the last thing is about the upstream priorities from the fetch going up. And I assume that's sort of the same as what Luke was proposing. Yeah. Just like I think relays then, off. not knowing anything about the clients, can't pick favorites. So the relays have to go up, upstream with equal priority on all retrievals. And is that priority higher or lower than the subscribe? How does that mesh in with the publisher priorities that are coming that the publisher set for the other traffic? I guess the question. again, I don't think you can play favorites between publishers. So you got one publisher says I'm the highest priority. They ha they can't in an equal yeah. world have priority over other people who just didn't say that. Sorry, I, I asked the question wrong. I meant the the it, they're they're going to the same. We're all talking about the same publisher. This is I I have a I have a. Uh, 
the publisher is currently has a subscribe screen. It has two, two it basically has a track that's publishing at two, two different priority levels. Let's say five and 10. And then there's only one priority batch. level per track. Sorry, no, the publisher priorities are per subgroup, per subgroup, right? So the only priorities that matter above the re, uh, upstream of the relay are the publisher priorities, depending on the type of relay, modulo, must, should thing, right? Yeah. Okay, so the publisher is picking the priorities. So I subscribe to, you know, track FUBAR. Or somebody, a client subscribed to a relay, track FUBAR. That went up to the original publisher as a subscribed FUBAR. And that publisher is sending, possibly through a couple relays, but is sending, um, it's sending one video track that has temporal scalability and, you know, the, the, the subgroups with the, the, the 60 frames per second are lower priority than the subgroups with the 30 frames per priority. So that classic sort of subscribe flow. And then somebody else fetches at the same time some data on the same track. Um, and it's, it's old data. We're not even talking about live edge data, just some data from 10 minutes back or whatever, because they're trying to fill in a cache or something. Um, is that fetch priority lower priority than the subscribes or higher priority than the, than the subscribes? Because they're going to be flown across the same quick connection. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I think we need to, okay. need to think that That's through. I was going to give an immediate answer. I mean, the, the one solution is to separate your quicks and your subscribes on two different connections. Ooh, that uh, doesn't right. solve the problem. Though. <laughs> <laughs> all, all, you've done, all you've done, all you've done, yeah, that's a pun. That's yeah. Done. So, yeah, but I think this problem is irrespective of our Fetch let, API, let, let, let me we've just... got this problem for subscribes going up as well, relative priority between. Like, what does a relay do when it's aggregating subscribes at different priority levels? Okay, so look, we, we, we discussed that a lot before. Let me just leave that. Let's just, let's yeah. flag that as a discussion point about all the proposals because we need to solve, they all, they all have to solve this problem somehow or other, there, right? There's a real question here about what is the fetch serving uh, at the end point? What is the purpose of the fetch? Is it, right. is, is it a friendly fetch? Is it like, oh, I just need to buffer this late or later fetch? So yes, the subscriber's yeah. priority. Well, okay. um, so I want to understand if there's any design rationale um, for your, your, your choices um, was there a conscious decision about whether the fetch goes on the control stream or whether it prefixes your request stream, like in Luke's? I want to understand if there's design rationale for some of the differences between um, the proposals. So, first of all, do you see a problem? Uh, do, was there a design rationale to put this fetch, like all the other control messages, on the control yeah, stream? Yeah, I think I want it consistent yeah, with the other control messages because that, that assures your sequence, right? You can now control... If you put it on a parallel stream, you're never quite sure which control message might arrive first. So if it's important to you, having a, the single control stream, at least sequences, guarantees the order of arrival of your messages to the, to the publisher. And, and I see no reason. This is another control message. Why should we have, why should we have it on a separate stream? Well, I think the, the other proposals were using a different stream so that they could kind of face share that stream with the control and data. So that was a, brought up another point is it was their design rationale for having this fetch cancel uh, as a protocol level thing instead of a stream level thing where you just, can't, you just cancel the stream if you want to cancel the fetch. Um, it, I, like, I like the notion of keeping it with the other control messages and hence the cancel because it's opening up a new stream for the response. That's essentially the one that's being canceled, not the control stream. If we want to move it and have a separate stream like, as what you proposed, a bi-directional one where you open it up you send the fetch, and then you cancel. You cancel both both sides of it. That's fine too. But I would say, why? How does that does that improve anything? I, I don't. See I, I think this is clearly a difference. Yeah. We've been over between the proposals, and we'll spend yeah. some time maybe talking specifically about the pros and cons of fetch and control versus fetch on the yeah. stream. Uh, does Gwendolyn have his hand up? Yes. <coughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I mean. It's, it's a question that can apply for subscribe, I think, but when, when the uh, fetch and subscribe are on the same uh, live stream, uh, uh, and if one is ascending order and one is descending order, uh, if we have multiple hops, I guess we will, have, we will need to have uh, both fetch and subscribe going to the parent. Correct. I, 
I agree, especially if one's ascending and the other's descending. Like you're playing the, the track from the opposite end. Yeah. It would be very difficult to do that for a live stream too. But it's 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 the same problem with subscribe. Yeah. Actually. I don't know if it has been discussed at that time, but uh, if we have two uh, concurrent subscribe, one ascending, one descending, after two hops, I mean two relays, uh, you cannot uh, guarantee. Um, I want to say that, that came up in the priority discussion. We talked about like, what do you do? And I think the answer is it's about removing it from subscribe. Kim? Yeah, I, I had just a quick question. Um, can a client fetch from the cache when the original publisher is no longer there? Yes. As long so as... So what... Okay, go ahead. Yeah, we, we might want to set rules. We did, I think, set a, a flag, an attribute for how long it could stay in the cache. So the publisher has, has some control over how long objects remain in cache. Okay. But if I publish a live stream and I say, this live stream's going to last four hours, but I don't mind you caching it for the next week and serve everybody out over the next week when they come back to watch this event, I think that's perfectly fine. So then my next question on that is, you mentioned about a missing group or a missing object and the server is supposed to send that to the publisher or whatever to retrieve that before it can send the next group. What happens when there is no publisher anymore? So the and it's only from cache. There's no publisher for the live stream, but the publisher must still make itself available for object repair for the duration of the time that it said it's in cache. But well, what if it doesn't? Well, then it, you can't repair the cache, and then you have a missing object. Okay, so that, that would come as like that would be the case. I, yeah, I would. So say that means we need to track the awareness that the publisher is gone. So I'm way down the list, right? I'm way somewhere way downstream, and I got a client requesting a fetch. I don't have all the data that they requested. I need to know that that publisher is not there anymore. So that I can say, oh, immediately, you know, return an error that I can't recover this. Or, or I don't know. We have to start tracking that, right, yeah. on every the one of the Relay hops. doesn't know if the publisher's gone. They have to go upstream, and they have to ask for it. And eventually, they'll get to a node that says that publisher's gone. They're unannounced. They're out of But here. upstream is where? Because this could be like a mesh of connections with other relays. Where is the upstream? Is it to where it was before with the publisher? Yes. So I have to that would be the latest information it had. If it didn't know it had gone, it must have known where it was originally. So, it okay, would so we need to retain at the relay where it was before so that I will just blindly blast off requests upstream even if there is no publisher there anymore. Or when I say upstream, it's not really upstream. It's just to wherever the publisher was seen last. Correct. Now, and once you know that, you don't have to blast any more requests up. So the first person who asks you for something, you figure out that the publisher has gone. You can cache that result as well. Luke and two hops. Oh no! I was just going to clarify the um, the idea for upstream for order and and uh, sorry ascending and descending was the publisher wins. So if somebody fetches with ascending and somebody subscribes with descending, it's whatever the publisher said is the default tiebreaker. Same with priorities. Two hops. I think actually that's just a small point. Like going so any fetch, we should always be okay to not get what you want. If the publisher is gone, if the publisher no, is gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that you, you cannot guarantee that you'll get it. I think that's the common point we need to agree upon. And you, you made it in your uh, original statement, but uh, just Although the publisher can go and then come back in some cases. Sure. But the data might not be available. That's also true. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Lower your hands in WebEx if, unless you're still in the queue. Does anyone else have? Mo has his hand. Oh, okay. Um, so by design, this API allows subscribe like behavior but flattening subscription to a single stream. That's by design, right? Yes. You, you intended that. So I think that's a little bit different from some of the other ones. I thought they were not intending to encompass the live edge, but now I also think if you put a in the future group, those other proposals may end up in the same kind of boat. Um, so I'm trying to understand what, what was the rationale for having this compete with, with subscribe? When would you intend to, to, to use this and when would be a bad use of it? Um, for Live Edge. So the use of this is for non-real-time playback of, of a stream. And I'm talking anything other than trying to be as absolutely fast as possible. So if I'm one or two or five or 15 seconds back from live, I would use fetch. Because I'm, I'm, willing, to, I'm willing to wait for the, for the object. I, 
I, I'm not, I'm, it's not urgent to so me. So the head of line blocking is you think the main design, the yeah. design reason for using Could this? we collapse, subscribe, and this together if, if that's where you're going? I think, yes, it's not that different. When you look at this and you look at subscribe, they're not that different other than in that be that norm, that requirement that you try to, you, you try to be deterministic about every object that is missing. Tim, are you still in the queue? Sorry. Okay. Does anyone else have any clarifying questions? Can... Oh, yeah. I had a clarifying question yesterday that I should ask here as well. Um, is the order guaranteed? As in, if I have an object in cache already that I could serve, do I have to go back and fetch from upstream old ones first so they must arrive in the exact I think yes. Order? Yeah. Yes, probably. Probably easiest to just do it that way. So, so the order is guaranteed. Unlike subscribe, the order is, is arbitrary. Not guaranteed. Even if you ask for a sending, subscribe does not guarantee it. Uh, question about requesting specific groups. What we expect the behavior might be if you request a group that has not yet been produced? Which starts in the future? Yeah, yeah that's interesting. In Two solutions, right? Either you wait, you wait a long time for the response, it's like group pending, or you say this group is not available because I know on my track status, I know what the latest group is. So we could say you can't, you can't, you can either wait for a group in the future or we can say it's not here yet. Well, uh, you said, you mentioned order. Uh, if you're going backwards, then you need your iframe before you get your, before you can interpret things. And also re reading through the, uh, there seems to be an assumption that iframes are always precede the deltas. That's true when you're generating it in real time. It ain't when you're going from a uh, repository. In that case, the iframe can, if you process your data to your up res it, the iframe will frequently be in the future and you've got differences from it in the opposite <laughs> direction. So, okay. you, we, so we, we need to be more crisp about what order means. To be clear, the ascending or descending only applies to the groups. You still send the objects in order within the group, but you okay. send the group ID in descending you send the order. Track in order. Yeah. Another way of saying it. So you would get you would get your frames as they were originally encoded for that group. And if it's media, you're likely to make your group your GOP. Colin? So I'm trying to understand what, what you're thinking about how relays would aggregate fetches as the fetch went upstream or whether they would at all. Or like, like if you had one client that like, particularly when, they, when, it, in, when the range includes the live edge. Yes. Right. Like if, they, if, some, if somebody requested, let's say we're at 20 and client A requests through relay 10 to infinity. And then a minute later, another client requests five to infinity. I'm trying to figure out what the relay is supposed. What is the relay supposed to implement here? So yeah, I thought yeah. about this actually, yeah. and I had a slide that I took out, but I could put it back. So for a for a five and ten, and yeah. for that difference, the relay can do two fetch. It's got an existing fetch which is feeding it, say, five and forward. Right. Where, where five is five behind the live edge, so yeah. so it keeps that. So it's mm -hmm. only got to make one other request for the difference, which is 10 to 5 or 10 to 6. So it would make one fetch for 10 to 6, and it would send that to the client who wanted from 10. And then as the objects come in for 5 and above, it would feed both of them out to both fetches down their streams. I think it's workable. I, I diagrammed it out, and it's, it's possible. Because these are deterministic start points, you know when you have an existing range. What's interesting is you have one client that made a fetch that is feeding all these other ones, essentially. If that original client goes away, now the relay has to be smart. It might have to then drop down and make a new, a new fetch to feed its, its clients. But it, it's, not an, it's not a tricky problem. It's a table, basically, of what's, what are the ranges being requested. And do I have a superset already? If yes, I can use that to satisfy it. If not, I have to go make it. I see. So, so, but yeah, okay, okay. So you think I need to work through this in my head? But roughly, the relays can aggregate all the fetches, so they, they only have one yeah. fetch for a given range of stuff. You want as yeah. minimal fetches as possible. Uh, I think it's possible. possible. I think it's ugly. I mean, not ugly, yeah. but 
I think there's a lot of logic you need to think through how to compute the minimal intersection. Part. I think it really pushes me towards wanting the fetch IDs not to be this. Sorry, I'm Josh. discussing the solution. So I have to shut up. <laughs> The way I think about this in my mind, I think the mental model I have is that fetches apply to things that are cached versus things that are streamed. Um, I want to use that model simply because that's uh, it is. I don't I don't want to say what the common case is going to be, but I want to satisfy the case where you're fetching something that's been stored for a long time. Um, the cache could be in memory or could be on disk. It doesn't matter. But the way that you address something um, should apply. So. With that in mind, there's, there's, I'm just saying that that's a model that I'm using. And if I shouldn't be using the model, you should tell me. I think, <clears throat> so two responses. I think it's it's right all the use cases we've shown here. You would actually be pulling these objects out of cache. Yes. The yes. only object, even, even that very first object, the object that you've received the first, sorry, the very latest group. You've received the start of the group, but you haven't received the end of it. You still, you could still pull what you've received of it out of cache and then send it. That's good. Um, so that it is possible. And on, on the other hand, caches are purely an efficiency option for a CDN. You should be able to build mock without putting any cache in there. And all the cache is going to save you is a bunch of upstream requests for, for stuff that people are asking for that, that were delivered previously that you don't need. I want, so, to, yeah. Yeah, I want to respond to that one if I could. Yeah, yeah, um, I might agree with that, but I think it's, it's, it's substantially more than that. Um, I agree with you that that we should be able to do it, and given the error, error escape hatches that you have, if you don't have the object that you're fetching, you don't have it. Yeah. But I think the the way that I would want to see this get deployed is that the stuff that you're receiving, you're caching because you might have to satisfy future fetches yeah. as well. And uh, with that in mind, I'm trying to build that in my head where fetches are if you receive an object, you store it in a particular way so that it can be fetched, like you know, to use this yeah. term can be fetched later. So I think it'll be a configuration setting. If you have a live stream course, that's no, real time only, only you, you might say, point, don't waste your time or your money okay. caching it because I'm never going to do anything other than retrieve Agreed it. Agreed with that. Point. I'm saying that the, uh, the model that we're using here should be useful for caching. Yeah, that's all. It should. Well, um, so in your mandatory parameters include start group. Yeah. And I think you said that it's OK to incur an RTT to discover what the start group should be. But I'm confused by that because we we can only discover the live edge, right? The track statics only tells you about the live edge. It doesn't tell anything about the, the, what the cache holds. I, I don't know what group to start from. Um, it's, so with live media, you, you, care, you don't care <clears throat> at all what the cache holds in most situations. I know that I want to start my player with a 12 second buffer. So I want to, and say I got four second groups. I want to retrieve at least three groups and I want those to be the last three groups available. That's my preferred starting position. So I ask for track status. That tells me what the latest group number is. I subtract three from that. And now I make a fetch for that from that point. And that should give me three objects that they may not be in the cache. If no one else is watching that stream, there'll be nothing in the cache. But it doesn't matter. I know that they're three behind the live edge. I, I, they should be burst quickly. From the, or from the original publisher, because they are behind the live edge, and then I will receive the rest of the objects. In. I think this is independent of your proposal. I think it's an issue for all of them, so I'll just table it until then. I think in general that um, the, uh, group discovery may be an issue for all these proposals of okay. where, where, do I, where do I fetch from? Well, we have a track status. Uh, but the track status is only for the last object, right? It's just right, like, but that's all we need. Live edge. We, we need. Then we have a catalog. We have some out of band information that tells us what to do. That just pins it where we are in this live stream. Timeline track. Yeah. Or a timeline. Okay, I'll stop sharing. At this rate, we're going to be done before the food is here, and we're going to have to filibuster. Well, we can actually have discussion. <laughs> well, we can discuss. Well, we could, we no, we have a third group. Cool. We have Supas. So. Okay. So Supas, so, uh, so, uh, can, can you share? Can you want me to share? Let's see. You sent me an email, or where do I have the latest copy of your thing? Yes, that's not uh, in your Gmail. If you've not signed the blue sheets, please do so. There are links in all the chats. Do you want to oh, I know. Okay. I, put it, I, I already saved it. I'm like ahead of myself. And then.
care about all that. Are your slides shared? Do you have a cover for that? Or not? Yeah, I put a link in. Oh, and if you have shared slides, please, uh, if you can't upload the to the Tractor. link the WebEx. Oh, you will not access this. Okay. <laughs> this looks terrible. <laughs> I don't know. Is there a I'll put it into the Slack. Cool. Um, if, if everyone has listened to the past two conversations, then if I ask questions, you should not tell me the difference between this proposal and other proposals. But uh, here, is, this is basically a Fitch uh, proposal that uh, Kalan, myself, Victor, and Mo uh, thought through over a period of time uh, and tried to put things together. Uh, listening to Luke and uh, Will, there are a lot of commonalities between the proposals, and there's a few differences. That's something we can figure out once we go to the question side. Uh, next slide, please. Use cases, Alan has gone through. The, the, the one one thing I would say is that uh, most of these use cases, at least listed in this case, has this property of something in the past and something in the future. Uh, and uh, they, they, they drive certain requirements on the solution. And that's what I, my proposal will be. I'll just say, if you, I, I did, there's actually, if you want, for people who want to take more time later, there were, there's more text on this slide, but fewer use cases. So if you want to go read them at some point, please yeah. do. Cool. Next slide. Okay, so, whoa. Yeah, yeah, proposal that two things we want to identify what makes fetch slightly different from subscribe or same but but the thing that uh, dif dif differentiates subscription as a client as a consumer who wants to consume versus the fetch is that subscription is more on the live or interactive and in those cases where you need to be you need the objects to be delivered to you within certain time if not the object is not useful uh, for for the client that was processing at that point in time, so in that case, it 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 puts subscription into the solving things for the future, which includes now and uh, later. Uh, whereas fetch is fetch basically drives something like uh, I want to catch up on some data or I want to find some recording that was stored, as like Bill was talking about in for some of the use cases that basically solves for the past. The thing about subscription, since it's futuristic or it has to be on the live edge of the things, it, the subscription system has to handle with uh, what we call as losses or ambiguities. We, in ambiguities comes because things can be reordered depending upon condition, or things can be lost, again, because of the network uh, state at that point in time. So you, you, uh, a client that is subscribed should be expecting to identify things being out of order or having uh, gaps in between, whereas on the switch, it kind of solves, right? It attempts to do, does its best to resolve those ambiguities. Um, whenever uh, someone asks for some things in the past, it, it can go find out whoever, wherever it wants to go in, you know, on the internet and find if, if it can find. If not, it will come back with an error. Uh, so that's the main difference between uh, how do you resolve the ambiguities in fetch versus subscription is natural state to be ambiguous in some cases. And with subscription, the thing is that the publisher has set a delivered rate, depending upon it's a video publish, publisher or something else, where the date, uh, data uh, uh, rate that, that is delivered is fixed and it's, it uh, keeps, as a pipe you open it, open it up, it keeps coming in. And if the consumer is behind or consumer is slow, they lose it. Uh, on the fetch case, uh, mm -hmm. there, there's an opportunity for us to kind of improve there because there's no latency requirements um, other than how much can you cache at memories or, or can can deal with that original publisher in that case. So you can control the delivery rate. The two ways we can control the delivery rate. One is that, I, I'll explain that in the next, next slide, which is um, if you're using a single bidirectional quick stream, you can use stream level flow control. Uh, that works for most of the use cases, but if you need something more granular, like what Will's proposal had, we, this proposal also has something like the delivery rate, um, which is an optional hint to the publisher to say how it wants the uh, data to be delivered. Um, coming to caching, subscription does not have a requirement on caching. Yes, things can be cached uh, when, when you're subscribed, but uh, answer to the, your question for subscription is not coming from the cache. It's coming from the live feed. So, and you cannot cache something in the future which is not yet produced. Um, whereas uh, in, in fetch, it's built around caches. So any fetch which goes upstream, uh, every relay that handles a fetch can opportunistically cache so that in future you ask for the same thing because we have a requirement in mock that the object key, which includes the track, full track name, the object ID and PID, uh, sorry, uh, group ID, uh, you can you ask for the same thing multiple times, you should be able to get it. Uh, but 
That's a quick clarification. Do you serve the latest group from cache in a subscribe? I'll explain. You yeah. So, cool. um, that's so caching is a uh, nice thing to have uh, in uh, subscription, but uh, in in a fetch, it's, it's it's an important part part of, part of the solution. And we we've talked about what happens if overla overlapping subscription comes, especially uh, in terms of uh, the way the subscription is defined today, where you can have ranges, you have multiple overlapping ranges. It just complicates the solution. And also, sub overlapping, overlapping subscription is not adding much value in the sense like you, are asked, you get the same content no matter how many times you, over you subscribe for the same thing. But in the, in the, catch, in the fetch case, uh, depending upon the use case, depending upon where the client is, a player is at the point in time, can send multiple fetches uh, can, that can be overlapped. Again, we reuse, make use of our opportunity caching model there so that you don't have to always go upstream to provide the answer. So kind of that naturally, this, this kind of property is natural, naturally divides a subscription and fetch. And uh, that was the proposal having, for having why, uh, why can't we and retrofit subscribe to solve some of those things versus having a new one provides a better cleaner design. Um, no clarification questions. So if you look at this one, the, fetch, the new fetch message looks very similar to what we had, except for a few changes. Um, in, in our proposal, the fetch is based on a new data stream. It's a bidirectional fetch stream like what Luke had, um, and it, model, it is modeled based on get request. In that case, like Luke's and our proposal is very, very similar. Uh, whenever you want to fetch, you start a new bidirectional, bidirectional data stream, and every response to that, uh, the response to that will be on, on the same stream uh, on the other day coming in. And you, uh, that uh, basically removes the need for a fetch ID uh, because the stream controls the uh, state of the fetch. Um, on the other hand, uh, uh, the fetch is closed range. You have an absolute range, you have a start and your end, they are mandatory, uh, and you cannot have the end uh, beyond the live edge. When we say the live edge here, we are talking about the live edge as, as perceived by the original publisher, not by the relays, because uh, in subscription, the live edge, if you go and query to each relay based on, the, if, let's say the relays are all geographically dis, uh, distributed, if you go and ask for live edge across different relays, you might get different answers. But in fetch, uh, we were thinking about a live edge is like what the original publisher thinks the live edge, if it's available at that point in time. Uh, so, so I have a clarifying question, but I think Wendell jumped in first. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, for the use case of the uh, live non-real time uh, streaming, it's the same as for Luke, you need to constantly request um, response, request response the same way as Dash on HLS, right? Right, like if, if the use case that I've heard so far is that I want to start five seconds be, be behind a live edge or 10 seconds behind live edge, you, you need to do one fetch request, not multiple times. Versus if you are saying I want to be three days before before live edge, then that's, you can, you need to do one, even in this case, you need to do one, one fetch request and one subscribe. Uh, it's not perfect <coughs> because this the fetch message API basically says you have a start group, start object, end group, and end object. It provides your range. Um, uh, you can support range uh, group in that case. But, uh, wait, okay. Okay. Uh, can I ask? No, no, go ahead, Bob. Well, clarifying on, on Sue Hasse's answer, you said if you want to start five seconds behind live, you only have to make one fetch. Mm -hmm. And then what? You have a subscribe from yes. then on. But the subscribe has different loss characteristics. It might have holes in it. We don't, you don't want that. Right, like if, so what Grendel's saying is you constantly have to make these requests. You might make a five second request, but after that, you, every time there's a new group, you have to make another fetch for it. Only if there's a loss. Right? Yeah. If there's a caps, it's not like you're, you're expecting the, yes. the, the transmission system to have continual loss. Right? In that case, I, I, I'm not saying your subscribe is not helping you either. Right? So fetch will also not help because it's low priority than subscribe. If subscribe cannot be solved, fetch will never get the data for fetch either. It will eventually get, may not get, but go upstream. So you might have, I'm like, it's definitely not one fetch, but but not fetch for every object. Okay. But if we okay. keep clarifying, I think we understand what you're saying. So to meet that live use case, you're suggesting fetch to go back, subscribe in the future, and then subsequent fetches to fill in any gaps that come in subscribe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Something that's like the clear. That's the answer to the clarifying question. Okay, can I ask my clarifying question or is it still on this oh. live streaming topic? Uh, no, go ahead. Okay, um, now I need to remember what my <laughs> question was because we, 
Oh, you, it was about this uh, publisher. Like, if you're ahead of the live edge from the original publisher's perspective, does that mean that any time a relay gets a fetch where the beginning, where any part of the range is past that relay's view of the live edge, it has to keep going toward the original publisher to find out is it ahead of the original publisher's live edge? No. Oh, no. Okay, because that's how I read this. Okay. So basically, what 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 uh, the idea here is that when a relay gets a fetch, it looks into his cache to kind of answer that question, right? Why, why don't you actually present the rest of your stuff before you answer that? You okay. A, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll put a pin in it, but that's my yeah. the way this reads. Is it says like, well, if I got to a place so, and right. it's and the its slide edge is ten and the request is for eleven, I have to keep going up to like get to the original guy. It's like no, 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 no. no. ten is latest. Okay, that was not sounds like, I'll clarify it saying okay. that that's not the intent. Okay, so I will wait for the other. Okay. So you have it. Yeah, easy one. Uh, the fields here, are they all required, optional? Or? They're all required except the fetch parameters. Okay. Um, the reason that's required is that uh, if you ask for the end group, this beyond, uh, say, the future, uh, fetch basically says, I can So that, that our, it serves only until what it thinks is there, but yeah. Oh, uh, I guess uh, a follow up. Clarifying question: Would you get a partial failure then, or a... to go to the examples for that? Okay, yeah, I have few examples. Okay. Okay. If it does not clarify, we can come back. Yeah. And, and as most of the uh, uh, parameters are straightforward, we know this from subscribe. This also means that subscribe can be simplified. Uh, that's for the next discussion, not for this one. But uh, it also has an optional uh, fetch parameter that says delivery hint, uh, rate hint, and it's optional. It's totally controlled by the, uh, the publisher. If, it, if <coughs> you can say this is my maximum delivery rate. And it can, it will do. If not, it will send what the publisher can do at the point in time. And one main difference is that this proposal does not support any forwarding modes because everything is on the same quick stream that's coming in. I think that was a common thing. Did no, I, 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 I maintain forwarding preferences. Yeah. Like, I maintain quick streams, those two collapse. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yes, great. Right. Okay. Jana, you had a question? No, sorry. No. Uh, one thing that's on here I saw is that the priority. is about is about priority. Okay. Um, and I guess my the clarifying question is: is how central to your proposal is the um, priority distinction versus like do the mechanics work even if that particular priority thing is like is this a must have for your proposal right. to work? At least from here in the two proposals, we don't have any proposal on priority. Yes. One proposal here. Yeah. If this is not the right proposal, we can change it. Okay. But the idea here with the fetch priority is that, like, we uh, the, the important thing is that fetches should not uh, accidentally impact subscribes. That's for the live. Okay. Thing. So if, if this is a totally strong proposal, we can change this. And what it basically says is that when you when this is within up to the first relay, the fetch priority is in the context of subscription priority. Uh, and and they, they have to share some space. But when it goes to upstream, the only way you can, uh, one, one of the ways you can you can make fetch lower priority is that if it is above 120, 127, which is like subscribes all fill in 0 to 127 and fetch by default will be lower priority. Then. When you say lower than 128, you mean numbers higher than 128? Number higher than, uh, okay. preference lower than, yes. Right. Yeah. So if you're worried about fetches like fighting with subscribes, is that only within the same track? Or is that like across every broadcast, you know, like every relay the relay ever serves? Like, can somebody just say fetch with 128 and then that immediately clobbers all their subscribes for other broadcasts? So, what I'm trying to say is it sounds like it's a leak of priorities. It sounds like you're prioritizing completely unrelated things and this is trying to prevent it. No, I, so, okay, so yeah. I, I think this is sort of mine design. So I'll take blame for that. But I, I, let me try and answer this. Yeah. Is that the. What, what happens between the, so, so the, the end clients can put a fetch priority that parameterizes how they want to get it to the first hop relay along against subscribe priorities. I think all the designs have that or easily could have that, right? All, all three of these designs have yeah. pretty much the same thing for priorities there. That's, that's, this is exactly the same as the other two designs that. And then this design here too, I think could equally apply to any of the other, <laughs> to all three proposals, which is the relay, when it aggregates to go upstream, it needs it needs to know how to prioritize that fetch against subscribes, the, you know, publisher priority subscribes in to the same track coming over the same quick connection. Right? It's all it's all in the same thing. It's in the same scope and this is same, tra scope same, of track, track. same track. Same okay. track. Same yeah. track. Yeah, hundred percent. And so, 
I picked I, what I was trying to say when I said 128 is like, hey, let's just make a middle value so that it's possible for the publisher to pick priorities that are below the priority for a fetch. So you can have, you can make, you, you can have things that are, you can have publisher priorities on your subscribe that might be more important than your fetches and you can have ones that be less important than your fetches. And but maybe that's the bad design. Maybe we should just say, no, the fetches should always be lower per priority than all the subscribes. That'd be the only alternative design. But it seems like that's really the choices we have to choose between is something roughly like that. And this applies to all three proposals equally, right? It's, yeah, I think, the, okay, well, let's, 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 let's put it yeah. in the priority that's, design space. But, but, but that's, <laughs> that's why the 128 here was to try and pick a midpoint in the priorities. Yeah. And they're only competing in the same track, in the same connection. But it's a question about how they compete against the subscribes on the upstream. And the answer would be put them in the middle. But that sounds like you would have both the subscribe and fetch in parallel upstream. Yeah, but you do. You can't not. Hash, I guess. But. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think we're clarified enough to move forward. Yeah. Two us? Okay. Oh, no, we're not. No, 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 <laughs> there's a few more. There's a bunch of examples here, I think, and then we'll maybe have a few minutes before. Yeah, time to cover. Okay. Oops. Examples. Maybe next time. Next slide. There you go. So uh, this, this example shows, like, in all the examples we have the original publisher and one or more relay clusters. Uh, it can cluster of relays, doesn't matter. And there's a client who wants to, I'm using the word client to not call feature or subscribe, but a client who wants to consume the data. And in this case, uh, the client is trying to get uh, six groups or six items, it can groups or objects does not matter, six items, uh, and it wanted to be delivered in um, ascending order. But the relay has only four, from four to six. So what it does, because it's an ascending order request, it will go all the way to publish and ask, can you get me one to three, uh, anything that you can find in one to three and in ascending order, so you'll get all those things in one to three. Once you get the response, the response will basically send in the order of one to six, because that's the request from the client. This kind of shows uh, ascending order fetch. Uh, this uh, kind of has your question. Uh, so I guess my question was about uh, if the original publisher didn't have six, for example. Yes, if there's more coming. Next slide. Window is his hand up. Oh. Random? No, I have not. Oh, okay. Okay, this is the example of similar, similar example as last, exactly same state, but the client wants to be in descending order for whatever reason. Uh, in, in this case, we show that uh, same request comes in, but the uh, querying the, querying the, your cache has the data for four to six, so it sends them in the in descending order of sixth, fifth, and fourth item. And then for the, in parallel, it also shoots another request out, original publisher to get one to three, and it, and it it can. Let's assume that it's also using descending or it can be publisher. Does not matter what the order on goes upstream, but you get that data and you'll be able to send a three to one in that order so that it satisfies client's request. Very similar to the other one other than the order change, but it has a parallelized response here. Next question. So next slide. Okay, this is a case where a fetch for a single item is happening. It can be a single group or a single object uh, and the client asks for it, really it has no idea about that one go upstream and tries to fetch it, and upstream also doesn't have an item, it just can send the error, and you get an error. Single item, not existing. Uh, slow. Clarifying question. We have, an, we have a track status for missing object. Wouldn't, instead of an error, wouldn't you just say this is a missing object, because we went to the original publisher, they confirmed it's missing? Sure. What the, 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 I've been pretty uh, hand wavy in terms of what goes in an error there. Uh, There's something to say you didn't get it. You don't have it. It's not published. It's not, it's, not, it's not available what you asked for. So everything, wherever you see response error, we need to kind of fill it with more accurate information. But that's what, it's expected, what, what you get is here. Just to clarify, these have to be objects. There's no control messages in these response streams. So that's mm. the response on the unidirectional stream, object <laughs> messages, no control messages. So it cannot be a response. Uh, it isn't object status. Uh, an object header message. Right, yeah. that's, that's yeah. what I mean. So, so you have to use so an object do, plain message. Yeah, you would send an object back yes. to the header saying, oh, sorry. Just I want to add another yes. that can be used, but you're defining fetch. You can define a fetch error message yeah. as an object. It's, that's something I would say in the solution space about what we want to do exactly. 
I was actually going to recommend something like that for the previous case. Mm -hmm. In case you don't have one, two, three, you try to fetch one, two, three, you don't get it. But you have four, five, six. You, could, you still won't respond with an error because the request was one to six. But you can tell in a, in a hint, you can tell the client, hey, I do have four to six if you want to request that. I think there's an example on that. Are you good to go forward? Yeah. 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 I say this is not, I'm trying to uh, work on the idea of having the subgroups uh, use case that we had. Let's say <coughs> the item was he had like 30 FPS stream and 60 FPS stream, and it was publishing uh, groups like the objects 1, 3, and 5, and 7, the odd objects on 30 FPS and rest, uh, the even ones on 60 FPS. And for whatever reason, because of the condition control uh, uh, reasons, that all the 60 FPS got lost uh, by the time it was, uh, it came to the relay. But client has no clue about that one, and it says, "I want, I want to kind of get uh, objects in the range one to eight in, a, in some kind of order." And really looks at uh, its its cache, and it finds out like it, it does small range queries and says, "Okay, I don't have two, I don't have four, and I don't have six. And it has to, the one fetch request that's coming in for the range will be converted into multiple fetch requests going up on their individual streams. So stream two and four, two four and six ask for two four and eight object in this case, and uh, because we the request was in uh, for the ascending order from the original client, you get as soon as you got the request first, you know you have one, it will respond with one, and then it it waits for the answers for two, four, and eight to come back. When two comes in, it knows it can fill in, it can satisfy two and three, it'll respond on the same stream, the original uh, request stream, stream number ten, and when it gets one, it knows it can now fill four, five, six, seven, it fills it, and when it gets eight, finally it sends eight. So if there are gaps in the range. You need to go upstream and ask. We don't know why the gaps are there. It has no idea. It has to go upstream and ask. Unless an object shader says that the object was never produced, it, it, it doesn't have to go up and ask. But uh, this kind of shows that uh, when there are missing things, you have to go find out the answer for it. I have my non-clarifying clarifying question. Sure. It's like, don't yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be, can't you clarify that like Will's <laughs> Filter approach is like results in fewer requests to accomplish the same goal. Yeah, but doesn't matter yeah. that much. Doesn't matter that much. It's an optimization. Okay, that was a joke. No, no, but no, 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 no. just jokes aside about that. But just like what? Because I think you need, you yes. need to serve two, four, and eight in that order. Back. Right. And so sending three parallel, two, four, eight, they may come back in. They're on different streams, two, four, and six. Right. So they can come back in a strange order. So making one saying. request. For all three, and then having them come back in that order will help you sort with, of stream, a, and you won't have to like buffer eight while you're waiting for four to show. So right, so you you send you'd send up a single request that said two to eight yeah. with an object filter of two four eight. That's Something that's, what, yeah. that's yeah. how it would work. Okay, yeah. yeah. No, but that's something in the clarifying zone. Listen, okay, really I get a clarifying question. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's, it's good. an optimization. I think it's yeah. really yeah. valuable. What? So, yeah. I chose going to mock jail. I'm going to mock jail. <laughs> Okay, someone else has to be chair. No, the next is, <laughs> this is like unsuccessful range fetch. Uh, you ask for the client asks for three to seven, three to seven, uh, the items three to seven, and it has it knows it has three, it has seven. It do it doesn't know anything about what's happening in between. It might be produced or might not be produced or might be dropped. Those for which I have no idea. Uh, at any point in time, the, the 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 relay would not know unless it's. But what would relay try to do is it will go and fetch. Saying that, uh, can you have anything from four to six? Um, and really, will come back and say, I have only four from what you asked for, and that's exactly what it responds with uh, three, four, seven. And every relay that's caching, uh, it knows that uh, it, the four is filled. The next time it asks, uh, next next stop will get catch. Okay, I think it's Gwendolyn's hand go up. Yeah, clarifying question. Uh, how do you say that you have only four? You need to have something to say, I don't have five or six, or to say it's four and it's finished for this request or something like this. Because otherwise you can never send seven. As a, as a relay, you are waiting for five, six, and you are like, a, well, you know. Um, example shows that I'm asking for anything that you can find from four to six in response, right? And the response comes back at four. Or you can explicitly say that I don't have five, I don't have six. That's the, that's the, that's the part I was talking about. You want response to fill in object statuses for, uh, for things that are not there or something that basically says that uh, this is all I have. It's, it's a different two kinds of design we can decide. Uh, 
So you're saying if I ask for four to six and I get four and a fin, that means five and six are implicitly yes. not exist yes. versus explicitly <coughs> not exist. Yes, it's don't, don't have to versus explicitly. Right, okay. It's kind of a non-clarifying question, but I'll, I'll ask anyway. Um, <laughs> going to to how is this, how does this, this seems kind of similar to HP1 pipelining, where you send a request and you can't get, the, you must get responses in the intended order. Um, is there any fear that we're not utilizing the network or something because we're waiting for upstream fetches when we could be serving stuff cached already? Right, like if, if, if the clients, that's the client's preference, right? If client want, I don't care about the order, then whatever you can in the cache can start responding. So there could be a group order question mark, which is like send me in any order. Is that That's like something a for us to decide? Option? You for can us, also send multiple fetches if you do cache. Yeah. You can say no. Every, every client that's not insane should do what your proposal is proposing. Sorry, I don't say that. <laughs> not a clarifying question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I think that's that's the good point, right? I, when I wrote this, we had like ascending and descending and can pick. So probably if there's no specify anything. I, that's something we can decide about one way or the other. It's not utilizing the network, but you're sure. trying to order things. Yeah. 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 Okay. Is there another question? It seems to me I don't even know where we are clarifying this, and so most of people, everybody's going to. How many more slides do you have to ask? I think the meeting. I think there's, there's one more slide. We have to go to the future. We can yeah. blast it from the past. No, we go to the future. Okay. If, it, if it's general, can you hold it for one more slide? And then we'll yeah. have like, and we'll have, then we nominally have 10 more minutes until the presentation thing's so, over. And then I think lunch is already here. So, yeah. Um, okay. Yes. Um, oh, that's <laughs> what we're going to do. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we, we, like all the three, that applies to everything, right? If, if, if we can come up with a common, so we need to work on here, right? And clarify subscriptions. Of this. So, the one, one thing I would offer here is that you, what you're looking at in. You have two different semantics going on. Mm -hmm. Which one of them is that you know? You request one to six, you receive one to six, that's fine. But you request one to six and you receive three, four, seven, the client needs to understand that these are, there are gaps in there. Mm -hmm. And if the client needs to understand that, the client basically has to be able to also figure out other things too. And you could do what you did for this in that case, because you wouldn't be adding a lot more over it. I agree. Like in, in most of the cases, the client has an access to his catalog. It yes. knows how the distribution is. And it, 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 most of the time it knows that, you know, what, what to expect. It oh, can break it. I just stole the share. Yeah. So, so you're so getting object, but yeah, we can, the, the, there's little bits of details that which probably will come out later. Yeah. And I think that's fine. Okay. Does anyone have any clarifying questions about this or any of the other three proposals that are worthy where this, where the language? How do we provide our feedback on these proposals? We're going to have a big discussion after lunch. Okay. Um, so, so yeah. guys, if you issue a fetch where the end group is past what is like the current live edge, um, does it just respond missing objects like they don't exist in the publisher, or does it wait? So it, it, it responds to all the objects under the live edge. Sure. So I thought it was, I thought there was a slide that said that was an error if you ask past the end of the live edge, but you might get the uh, you get both the objects up to the live edge and an error and an error. Yes, okay. Yeah. okay. Well, this probably applies to all proposals. But, um, before we used to have this, you know, weird semantic of, I don't know the end object ID, so I just say next group, you know, uh, the object zero, so that it's exclusive of the end. Um, are we doing something like that, or how are we resolving the ambiguity of, of clients not knowing the end object for any of the groups? Omit the end object field. Omit end object is that way is that the way to say okay, okay so Luke doesn't have this problem because he always goes to the end of the subgroup. Will has end object optional, which means end of the, go to the end of the group. Go to the end of the group. I don't know how you're, you're handling it. So I guess we'll make it optional. End of the group. And if you don't know the last the object, object in the group that you yeah. want. How do you ask? How do you send it back? So this is the problem with subscribe to, is it not? It's this. Okay. Yeah. Can, can we table that? I think back? we need to fix this end object thing, regardless of which are subscribe. Yeah. Then that answer, that will answer. Okay. So I mean, I guess maybe this is a chair comment, but like this, this is also a problem with subscribe. So it, like, if we're, I agree that ambiguity is like weird and, and annoying, but we could just solve that as a separate <laughs> issue, independent yeah. of landing fetch, Victor. And the end object to you int max. Send it to you int max. Yeah. Okay. Um, Eight bytes. But, but, but then you have to say the object does not exist a thousand <laughs> times, right? Because you think they're actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Object status two. Are there other clarifying questions for any of these proposals? Okay. It is. 
All right. Um, so remote people, we're going to reconvene at 1.15 Eastern time. So that's a little over an hour from now, about 66 minutes from now. So uh, plan accordingly. Those of you who are in the, here at the building, who is interested in attending? Can I get a head count for the mock dinner tonight? 5.30 p.m. We're going to leave here essentially as soon as we conclude and walk two blocks. And then we have the real dinner after that? Because <laughs> yeah. this is the one, two, dinner. three. Oh, Nine, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight. Are you coming? Yes. Nine, 10, we'll 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. A uh, record show that 14 people will attend. I will I'll try, try to make a reservation, but I have no idea if they take them. I guess we'll find out. So I did have a uh, thing for the all proposals because I'm thinking about it. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is that as, as so for caching again, right? So when you're basically trying to cache, you need a cache key and you need to be able to fetch those objects. And if I don't want to explode my cache when anybody's transitioning or trying to support multiple technologies, mock alongside dash, I would like to be able to use exactly one object in cache. Uh, these are ultimately delivery technologies. I don't want to explode my storage because you're doing my mock. Um, so just something to keep in mind as you're thinking about this is that what I will be trying to do is to figure out how to support multiple modes of delivery for the same cache topic. So yeah, I think we've had that as a design principle from the beginning that that'd be possible for exactly for the exactly the reason CDNs don't want to double their storage. Well, we'll never be successful if we don't have a model where we can roll this out concurrently with existing technology. That is exactly yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. And uh, if, if yeah. it is, then I want to make sure that that's why as I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about I don't know which one maps to current objects better. Um, the groups match to segments. Yeah, groups are and segments. We could easily have a naming scheme that points at the same binary oh, so that's object. The, that's, that's the group is the, segment. And, and that's why my cache key is a group. Technically a subgroup. So, subgroup. Yeah. Mm. But for HLS, a subgroup and group would be the same thing. But objects would be basically range requests. Uh, objects are like, yeah, like frames, range requests. Range within, requests uh, of a, um, you have to parse the payload, though, to figure out group boundaries is maybe the only like tricky part. Well, unless you write it into a little index as you like, like if you have an HLS, for example, you have a segment, you'd have to parse the MP4 header to figure out where an object starts. Okay. So we so this may be a lunch conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I think a, everybody's on the same page, and there's a design that seems to work. That's that. I think that'd be the highlight. But anyway, so, there's yeah. lots of people yeah. who run yeah. caches and, and yeah. have your same goal. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. and, 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 and I was good. doing that. I was okay. sharing a cache. While Colin's got this slide up, I think it's is there a way you could maybe drop that in case so if people can look at it offline maybe remote people or other people during lunch want to take a look and see if they want to add any other columns that we may have missed cool um, but it looks like a good like we talked about what are the common it's, look, it's very much my as people were talking to us and i trying to thank you for doing it because yeah. i think it will be very helpful yeah. for helping to frame like an efficient way of like getting through <laughs> what are the contentious bits and how do we get through them so I was going to specifically ask for that because I think you captured I wrote some on the notes, but I think you captured it better than I did. So I was going to ask to link that in the notes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I will, I'm, I'm just going to get a link to this that it, and I will, um, and I'll drop it into all the places. <laughs> okay. Also, Sue has, if I can grab your slides, I can link those as well. Sure. I, I added in Slack. Do you want to? Oh, that's perfectly cool. I mean, ultimately, again, if you made slides for this morning, please. Upload a copy to the data tracker or send to the chairs. We prefer you to it though. That was quick for us. Anything else before we break for lunch? I don't know what any more. Okay. Well, uh, we can be in one fifteen Eastern. Just a, a lunch note. There, so there's sandwiches here. There should be vegan or vegetarian and non pork you know, options for the sandwiches. If you want a drink out of the fridge, just grab it, but tell it to me. I'm going to, I'm going to pay for it as well as a bag of chips. If you want that. So I'll be standing there. I brought my charger today. And well, I, well, I left the thing. So, uh, I, I might be ready to do this too. So, like, you would come back. Yeah. I got, I, I, I got a warning to myself. Uh, you're saying it needs to be a warning. I practice because the moment you have only got one. Yeah. Oh, he totally dialed in for the whole morning. Yeah. Yeah.
<laughs> yeah, I've been on. Uh, yeah, this is my yeah, yeah. first mag. So I mean, I was when, when, do you know when the winning is?
But yes. the smoke yeah. remote. Well, well, why would it be zoom in this area for 10 minutes? All your performance should, should be dropping into web code. I mean, you. I
tabling, uh, oh, you know, Cape Town. Option. We think we should meet in Cape Town. Oh, that's that's like basically Europe, yeah. <laughs> basically Europe. <laughs> <Europe. laughs> if you go 500 miles south of Madagascar, it's literally the U.S. Well, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sent you an email. I didn't buy him for breakfast. I'm going to scroll it up and down manually. Oh, I know. I think I had a I have comment only. Says that. Sorry. No worry. This is the thing. Anybody like wait, if somebody ever like tries to share like a calendar invite, a Gmail calendar invite with me, like just the shit goes down the whole day. Yeah, AFR. Oh, at meta.com. All right, we're resuming in one minute.
There, no. Wait, did it? No. Did, that, it, did I, it kick I, anyone I, else out of WebEx? Still in. Not me. You still have access to the super secret chair website? It's still active and we're still recording. I told me that it was, for some reason, it told me it was, uh, it expired. Hit enter. Not sure about that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Is this coming in? Are you oh, no, sign in. Is there some like Google Docs problem right now? Can't sign in. Something went wrong. Sign in there. This one. All right, welcome back, everyone. It's uh, 1 15, so we're going to begin as promised. Uh, this is the un. <laughs> Un, not updated a version of our afternoon agenda. Um, we're gonna just briefly have a have a readout from lunch and see if anything emerged from that. Then we're gonna talk about these special proposals. I think the way we're going to do it is uh, Colin has made a list of differences, and we will end up just kind of going through these differences one by one and kind of seeing, taking a sense of the room and then discussing. Um, and hopefully, we get through them all this afternoon. Are able to like assign someone a updated PR. Okay, um, so let's start with lunch, and I'll ask a very specific question. So please answer this question, and not some other one. Did anyone change their mind about anything as a result of discussions at lunch? Yes, John. I mean, clarifying questions. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger cookies or cookies? Yeah. I was clarifying <laughs> a few times. Right, certainly, teams are mind about what clarify questions, you know. <laughs> but that was before lunch. Um, no, on show control, um, the conversation that we had at table was quite useful. You want me to recap? Um, you, if I you want to change your mind, what you recap? What you think? No, no, I'm asking. If you uh, want me to do it now? Yeah, just, just briefly. What, 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 how are you thinking differently? I understand that there's a gap between what uh, flow control provides at the quick level. And what we might need at the subscription level, specifically because subscriptions can end up, a client can subscribe and then a server can generate a large number of streams within that subscription, specifically, and there is no way to limit that to a subscription for a subscription. You could have multiple subscriptions or connection, you can only connect, you can limit that for the entire connection, but not within a specific subscription. So that is the one gap uh, that will force us to think about something. I think for fetch, however, as long as you're putting it on a single stream, you can absolutely use flow control. Okay, who else um, has something they want to share okay, about their something? about their <laughs> something they, they they change their mind about something at lunch? Is it too much to ask to order those in order of importance? I mean, that's a really great idea. I okay, um, like I mean, there's there's spelling things and there's not spelling things, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, do the best I, you can. If we can't get there, we can't get there. Can you always learn anything? <clears throat> well, so yeah, I, I had some thinking during lunch in, in my discussions. Um, my my concern is with this duality of having a fetch into the future and a subscribe into the future going existing in the network at the same time. And I've said glibly that well, they can both exist because it's likely to be rare. Mm -hmm. It's probably true, but it's also messy. So <clears throat> I'm coming around a little bit during lunch to the notion that a client that wants to start behind live might have to do a fetch at the very beginning and then chain it to a subscribe. What that gives us is it gives us a clean subscription tree back to the publisher. That's, and then the fetches are basically my playground for caching. I'm pulling stuff out of the object. And I think that's that to me is clean at, at a system level. It's a little dirty for the player, but I think the, the player can manage it. It's buffer management. 
Um, and I think that the ability of the player to manage those multiple buffers is easily done. The ability of a network to sustain dual live streams and try to uh, um, <coughs> differentiate them is, is, is a larger problem. So I would be, you know, as in an effort to achieve consensus, I'd be willing to take my proposal and adjust it so that end group was mandatory, but then keep everything else. And I think that gets you to the point where you can do a, subs a live subscription for the future and you can do your, your fetch-like behavior for everything in the past, including the scrubbing, the seeking, the filtering, et cetera. That was, that was very constructive about that. Anybody else have a... I'd be really supportive of something along the lines of what Will just said. Okay. All right, I, I think we're done with that then. So uh, those of you who are, um, what, well, however you're joining us, if you've not already signed the blue sheets, uh, basically, all the various chat modes that we have have a link to the, the notes. Please click on that link and add your names to blue sheets. Martin, oh. is the blue sheet per session or is it for the entire No, it's for the whole meeting, so you don't need to redo it. As I'm looking at our self view on the camera, I'm noticing that like it's quite bright behind us. Would people who are watching remotely like us to close the blinds? I think we're actually this. I think our camera's doing an incredible job. It's not doing too bad. It's amazing we can see anything <laughs> you, and you're not a silhouette. Not <laughs> Hats off to Cisco. Hey, it's Ian. So Welcome, Ian. Um, please sign the blue sheet. There's a link in like all the chats. Oh, you see, Gwendol has a hand raised. That's a new song. Oh, Gwendol? Yes, it, I mean, it's a clarifying question about this uh, idea of uh, having an end group and then moving to the subscribe. How will the player know that it reached the point where I can survive with a subscribe, actually? Because Let's say that you start with a fetch like 10 seconds uh, late in the live. You kind of catch up with the delivery, but it takes some time to catch up. So eventually you say, well, now you are back into the live track, or so you are back on time, but how do you know that? Is it like the relay being able to realize that the client is, uh, I mean, is it the, the, the end users asking for now switching to a subscribe or is it the relay that indicates to the, to the player that now it, it's fetch has been turned into a subscribe? How do you do that? It's, a, I mean, it's an open question or clarifying question. Well, I, can I, I think Will's it? got an answer. So yeah, so Gwendol, here's how it can work. You're, you're a client and you want to start five segments behind live. The first thing is you, you do, you actually make a subscription for the live, the live edge, right? A standard subscription. And let's say that's at, at 15, to, to be clear, and you really want to start at 10 and you want into the future. So you get a response back at 15. It tells you what the latest live edge is. You know the live edge is 15. You take that data and you just buffer it in your client. You don't write it to your decoder. You then make a fetch for 10 to 15, because, or 10 to 14, sorry, because you have 15 already. And that, that fetch is explicit. You know the beginning and you know the end. You take that data, you pipe it straight into your player decoder. At the end of that data, you then take the data you are buffering from your live subscription and put that into your decoder. And then that's, what, that's all you have to do. So there's no guessing as to when the transition occurs. And, and if it is like a, I mean, catch up TV or scrubbing, like a, you have like a five minutes, you are five minutes late just because you pause your TV, does it mean that you continuously, you do consecutive fetches or, is, or you have a very, I mean, a, a, a giant buffer? So let me, yeah, let me just rephrase that so I understand it. So you're starting 30, you're starting a five, five, an hour behind live? Well, 10 minutes. Or 10 minutes. But in that case, I would treat it like I was playing VOD content for 10 minutes. I would fill a buffer. I'd get a minute's worth of buffer. And then I'd get another minute's worth of buffer. And I'd keep doing that. The trickier question is, what if I'm playing it at twice the speed and I start 10 minutes back? Mm -hmm. Now I do catch up with live. And that I think is a use case we should consider and at least have a workaround. Yeah, I mean, what will happen is eventually you'll issue a fetch that will be like cut short. And 
it's a point you're like, error. okay, now I have to subscribe. Yeah, so. you would get an error as you caught up, and you would go, oh, okay. So, so we'll yeah, subscribe. That's I'm, racy, though. I, you also got to adjust your playback rate because you can't play into the future at twice. Subscribe so, for the next group. So two things. One, I'm getting a comment that the audio is bad in the room. Is there anything we can do with these mics or are they? No, I mean, those, they've been good all day. We haven't okay. changed anything. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're the best we can. Is Jonathan. it bad for everyone or just one person? Is it bad because of the noise or is it bad because of the... You know, oh, it's better noise. now. Never mind. Okay. Um, oh, my, 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 yeah, other, okay. my other content question was... Um, so if, if I actually did want to fetch levels of fidelity, I guess it would be choose. So what I would have to do then would have the fetch, have the subscribe, and then if there were holes that came in the subscribe, I would then want to find little fetches yeah. for those objects. The other thing I realized is with a live subscribe, you, the client, can set the delivery timeout. So if you're a real-time client, mm -hmm. you're going to set a very small delivery timeout. Mm -hmm. But if I'm playing five segments behind live, I'm going to set a five-segment timeout. I'm going to set 10 seconds. Take your time. I've got 10 seconds of buffer here. I want you to do it. Can I ask you a clarifying yeah, question? That, how does a relay aggregate that parameter? I think, the, <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting point because say you've got some clients that want the live edge and others that are willing to wait five seconds. That's a problem. I feel like we're bleeding into the topic discussion. Yeah, we are. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, does anyone have something they really need to, a burning question about this they need to have answered at this moment? All right. Well, uh, we'll uh, circle back. I'd like to ask a question about, about We're going to go through this whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other learnings from today that from lunch that people would like to share? All right, let's move on. So here's how I propose that we move forward to this. We're going to, um, so Colin has thoughtfully created the summary of what, what he believes to be the difference. <laughs> thoughtfully being a loose term. <laughs> um, so the first thing we're going to do is, is go through it very briefly and not debate it and just agree that it covers all, covers all the space. That, they're, that the yeses and nos are correct. There's not some other huge glaring difference that we're missing. Okay. Then we're going to go through these one by one. We're going to take like a quick um, show of hands to see where we are as a group, and maybe we have rough consensus already. And we can give a chance for people to yell that that you know that, why they're in the rough if, if that need be. And if not, then uh, the second thing we're going to ask is, can anyone? Is there anyone that can't live with one of the outcomes? Because I want to time box arguments over small differences. And then, um, and then, then we'll have discussion about it, and then conclude. And ideally, and at three fifteen, we're gonna we're gonna look and uh, we're gonna look at where we're at and decide how to proceed for the rest of the day. Christian, and I wanna just before we yeah, go, it's kind of, it, it's kind of a continuation of the point that uh, Gwenel, Gwendal was discussing. Um, I'd like to have a feature listed that we that the fetching can indicate the point at which the subscriber should go to subscribe instead of fetch. Basically, that they, that what happens if the subscriber tries to go beyond the live hedge? So you want the, there, so you want the fetch response to include information about that? It's not just. I, I I don't care whether you put that in the fetch response or in an error message in the fetch stream or whatever, but I'd I'd like an indication of that. Yes. Okay. Is that. I guess that's it. That's an additional feature that's not in any of these, right? Well, I mean, it doesn't. And, and it's, it's, it's really racy, Christian. Okay. Yeah. okay. We're, we're adding a line for that, Christian. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about the process Martin described or feedback? Does it seem okay? So we're going to kind of make, sounds like we're going to go one pass or two passes. Well, first we're going to briefly run through this. Okay. Um, uh, I, do you want to talk about it for about five minutes or do you want people to just read it and see if it's well, I'll, I'll, I'll just start going through them a, a little bit okay. here, but let me just say one add one comment on this I was trying to write these down in a way where I picked sort of orthogonal features such that we could say like look this is something that could probably move to any one of the proposals you could modify any yeah. one of the proposal I mean let's take the you know, object filters the easiest one right I mean obviously like we could add that to any one of the proposals if we think we want it. Yeah, right. And subscribe. Uh, I, I think clearly. Yeah, subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so clearly we're yeah. going to mix and match. Like yeah. I, I, in an ideal world, like one would emerge as an obvious base PR to start on. Right. And we'd ask if it was Will proposal, for instance, we yeah, ask Will to write a PR if he hasn't already. Oops. And this we can is... edit it from there. But um, it, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's really split and we have to, have to assign a team and that happens. But anyway, anyway, so just running through these, I mean, I think that the, the biggest difference in my mind, it, and it doesn't matter whether it's biggest or smallest or whatever, but is, you, you know, does this work into the future or is it only about data that exists in the past? 
Um, and I, I think that that's the biggest differentiator on all of these proposals when you really get right down to it. Um, okay, we accurately was, captured the way the proposals yeah. work with respect to that? I thought Will said no now. Well, well, I said I'm willing to compromise as long as we can get, as my, con my concern is what happens at the relay and back to the yeah. publisher. Yeah, so, so is, right, is, is, we haven't, is, I'm only going to give up on that yeah. if we can say there's a sure yeah. path to. We'll resolve these later. Let's, let's, let's uh, just talk about the proposals we heard this morning. Yep. Okay. Um, single bi-directional stream. So th I, I didn't know how to phrase this, but you know we're, what, what we're really talking about here um, is the we make this fetch request on a separate stream, and and then some data comes across that stream. I'm not even sure I captured this correctly for you, Luke. I, you know, but this is, and I'm not even sure how big a difference this is. Is do people get what I was trying to get at? Can you help me rephrase yeah. it? I would say like control versus data. Request is on new request is on control stream, or uh, in this yeah yeah okay that that would be the. Response on well, there's a few different. There's two yeah, different two things. Points. There, like request response. Yeah, like a, response is definitely on a single. Yeah, stream. Oh, response single stream. Okay, so single body stream is like. Request on same. Response just call it request on control stream line two. Yeah, and I'll invert the white guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's because we wanted to make sure that um, oh, that's the, the line three I, was. It's gonna flip the yeses. So now the y's and yeses are backwards. Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, yes, right there. no, yes, no. Yeah. There, yes. Oh, this is, I should have used a spreadsheet. I did not know I'm not in a spreadsheet. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> that spreadsheet is set in slides. Okay. Okay. <laughs> response on a single screen is yes, yes, yes. No. Well, okay. They're all coming back. How on about a single stream for an entire group? Can you fetch multiple streams? Is I think the yeah. difference. I will mean, uh, that, that, right. I, I, I mean, let you fetch one. Yeah. I, I think the fourth one is like a range for resources, like single. You can. Well, we're still, we're still, I think right. we're still getting together. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. So, so, so my take was on Luke's. You could. Oh you, you, no. You can only request a single stream. Right. On mine. And the other ones you can request multiple streams, and they get merged together. They get he's, merged. Yeah. He's he's. Yeah. So this, I'm phrasing this wrong. Yes. Uh, it, the, the the response has always come back. Yes. Yeah, always stream. And all of them. Merge. Streams, um, merge response. There's a, at merge the bottom, subgroups. there's a forwarding mode. It's like kind of ignore pre-prior delivery. I think yeah. that's that's yeah. more accurate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Your forwarding preference. Yeah. Merge it's, it's there at the like last. I can see forwarding, forwarding modes. Forwarding modes. Yeah. Is that the same? Can we say ignore forwarding preference? So that's like the the second row on the bottom. It's already, yeah, there's yeah, another line thing. for that, so. Okay, I don't know what that Yeah, is. this is fine. I think as long as people understand. Look, I think, I think this is pretty clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, support range queries and loop click. I, I, I know yours does by doing, doing multiple queries. Right. So how about in right. one request? No, well, I, I think yeah. uh, I have a clarification question. Merge subgroup to one stream, I, I don't even know why it is S for us either. Merge subgroup to one stream basically means that you one stream per subgroup. No, merge no. multiple sub, uh, sub subgroups. Merge maybe even S. Merge subgroups to one stream. Yeah, yeah. subgroups. Thanks. That makes it. Yeah. Merge everything to one stream. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, look, we all understand. Yeah. Luke's has a query per. This one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Support updates. Um, I think that's something that could be added to any of them if needed or whatever. We just sort of need to go back and forth around the differences between you know updating yeah. a query versus making a new query. Christian, yes, on the uh, merge subgroup to one stream, there's one feature which is interesting in Luke's proposal, is that by letting the client fetch one subgroup and then fetch one subgroup and when fetch one subgroup we have the implicit flow control at the application level because i mean the, the client can say i request that other smallish set of thing and then these were all small set of thing etc by opposition to i request a gigantic thing and everything comes in a single fell swoop so it's not quite true. So we're, so we're going to debate these later. Let's 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 continue to make sure this. Well, thing is yeah, but I mean the feature there is uh, the the feature is really request individual subgroups. 
you can I mean, do that with the other proposals too, right? Yeah. Both of ours allow you to request a single object. But it doesn't allow you to, yeah, but the point is basically is whether you want to make that the default or whether you want to make that one of the multiple modes. And uh, the, the, there is I, something I, very neat I, about I'm, that. I'm calling the bait. Like, I mean, I think, we, I think we know what the proposals are. I think, okay. I think what Colin has written is, is accurate and we'll get there. So let's, let's keep going down the list. Colin? Okay. Where are we? Okay, so we're on range queries. I think we got through the support of range queries. Okay, support update. Uh, uh, fetch single object. Uh, so I think this is the wrong way. I think that what I probably should have been put here is support object filter. That's different. We have yeah. object filter yeah. download. Yeah. Do, do, do we even care about this? Can I delete this row? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Because well, maybe we can get through. Just just leave it. Okay. Because it, it is it's accurate. Let's go. Uh, control delivery. That was just this delayed delivery rate option thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, it maybe a different. It's sort of like Luke's is client. It's not no. It's, it's control. But this is what. Yeah. yeah. Colin, this is where um, Christian was making the point that there's it, it does sort of do it in a different mechanism. No, right. no I, I completely disagree. A, a group is not coming down at the right. You yeah. get the whole group in one millisecond. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Trying to Fair. get link. You look at the timestamps to decide when to request right. the next one. Ian. Uh, clarification. Um, uh, okay, this is explicitly specifying a bandwidth uh, delivery, yes. like a, basically a pacing rate for yes. the subscription. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, I have a question. Just also, isn't that orthogonal, orthogonal orthogonal to everything else here? Like you can add that onto like yes. anything. Absolutely. Right? I should have it. Okay. Too, right? Okay. Just one time. Okay. A lot of these are. All right. Keep going, yeah. Colin. Um. Group ordering. Um, the, 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 so, sorry, this is the ascending, descending. And yeah, look, yeah. I put no on loop, but it's just wrong. It's basically a yes. Then, I don't know what to say. Well, he's not one thing. group. So, yeah. so technically, you can do it with priorities, um, or you could have a variant to where you have group order as well in fetch. Yeah. So, two fetches of the same priority and group order, you know. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Object filter. Again, it, this is mostly here so we can decide whether we put yes, no, and we want it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So request a subgroup, which is sort of the one above here. I'm just figuring this in. It's, it's very clearly yes on, on Luke's and no on the other two. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or well, it's it, a little sketchy. You might be able to use an object. your subgroups filter. map to an object, right? In which case. Well, they always do. I think we'll go to the discussion at some point, but there is no way to identify a subgroup in the object data model, right? Yeah, right. The cache key does not have a subgroup in it. If that means you need to redo the data model, but we'll wait for a discussion point. Yeah. Yes. So the okay. answer is NN is correct. Let's move on. <laughs> so fraction of the object, this is the requesting the byte range of the object. Um, it's all I meant by that one, right? Obviously, we could add this to any or none or whatever, yeah. right? Okay. Could you say the same thing for subgroup? A subgroup we could add to any of them too if we can figure out. Yes, how to do it. It's a need for me. Yeah. So, um, forwarding modes. Do you respect the original forwarding? Yeah. Mode? Yeah. 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 Um, Except for datagrams. <laughs> <laughs> so just to clarify what we're doing here, <laughs> we're not going to pick one of these proposals and like so it's important. So like like it's a unitary thing. These are a bunch of features. We're going to pick a feature set we want, and if it happens that one of these proposals is the best base to start that with, that's what we're going to start with. Or maybe we have to get a team to write something from scratch because it's so mixed together. But we're not going to accept any of these whole whole hog. Please continue. Okay. Uh, way to know. That, so the last one here. Way to know fetchable into data. Um, end on all three. Yeah, and I think I think everyone's going to agree that it needs to be a, a, a yes. Well, I'm going to give I'm going to give Luke gets a yes here, doesn't he? Well, I I want no, to subscribe. No, he will still be the current subscribe, and subscribe right. can fetch stuff in the past today, so you don't need this. So, right. oh, because, because Will's yeah. original proposal never had to switch to subscribe. I think Will gets a yes. It doesn't know when it's time to. Well, there, okay, maybe. Well, it never I mean, had the way I phrase this question. Never, is a no. Use both fetch and subscribe. <laughs> like, Ian, lower your hand, I'm please. Like, I'm still leaving it as an end. Okay, so uh, I think what Martin was proposing next is we should sort of 
now that we sort of understand these and where we stand, yeah. are there important features that we should add here that we're missing? And then we should sort of talk through, is there clear consensus on what we sort of, what, what would be desirable on a bunch well, of these? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. But, okay. but your first question is a good one. Is there, is there a difference we're missing between and the One proposals? thing we're missing as a feature is the priority. Everything should answer or to do with the priority. Okay. All three the difference is these are like orthogonal priority. things, right? Don't they are. Don't they all have priorities? I think they all will need a prior, uh, some answer to how priorities are answered. Them, right? Do you have priority think... in your yeah. batch? Yes. Yeah. So they all have a, they all have a yeah. subscriber priority in them already, yeah. so there's not a difference. I think it's just being, I think you're talking about the detail about like the one that you guys had about uh, what happens past a relay and how do you yeah. rel do relative prioritization. Yeah. I don't know that it's a, I think that's one that we, we're going to have to come back and solve no matter what. Yeah. So is... we can just leave it off the feature set. Right now. Awesome. So one thing missing here, because it's implicit, is what's being removed from subscribe. So like the, the Suez proposal is you cannot subscribe to old content at all. So all I, the arguments to subscribe. No, no, let me clarify. You cannot fetch old content. But so you can subscribe, subscribe starting no, five back? I, I basically did not talk anything about subscribe because once we figure out what needs to be fetched, at least the basic features. Okay, so then, nothing's uh, being removed from subscribe. Well, I don't know. I'm not saying, I'm not uh, saying we should not. We, we mix both two ideas, the two complete things. I'm just trying to say. Well, I didn't see you when I first looked at it. I think we should definitely discuss what we're doing for subscribe. Uh, I definitely think that subscribe, as currently described, is not even implementable. Uh, at yeah. least that's my experience. Uh, like, <coughs> that's basically what my last slide deck was. It's that, like, I do not think this is possible to implement in a meaningful way. Uh, Can we quickly, so let's just loop. What's your. I would remove object ranges from subscribe. So you can only start at a group. You can go back in time, but you just can't do a start you object. Still, in yours, you would still subs allow subscribe in the past. Yep. But you'd remove. You said remove object ranges. It's, 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 it's totally it's, orthogonal subject to fetch. Can we please do fetch and then discuss how we're okay, going well, to use I thought subscribe. it was good we want in fetch, yeah. if we can modify subscribe, then maybe we don't need fetch. Yeah, okay. I mean, these are very similar to subscribe. Yeah. Like. So clearly you can just implement fetch stuff in subscribe. And that's just, again, like just a, 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 a that's an organizational thing. Uh, we could always add any number of flags to subscribe to yeah. do the same thing. Um, I, I think there is the, the reason why we are spending two days here because there is a clear distinction between fetch and subscribe, especially when you do subscribe aggregation. Many of the properties that either uh, Alan discussed, uh, discussed this morning or the properties that uh, the differences I showed will not scale with subscribe. It's not implementable. I agree with Bill on that one. But my point is that if we describe both fetch and subscribe in the same time, we'll not conclude even on the fetch. I'm saying like we'll describe, yeah, we'll discuss valid. fetch, <laughs> go to subscribe and say what needs to be removed from that. Yeah. And, and then and then we can ask the question of can we merge these two into a unified yeah. thing? So yeah. like we are we're getting nowhere for two years on this. Like <laughs> so, uh, can we agree that for the time being it's orthogonal? Yes. And then we can revisit subscribe later. Yes. Okay. I'd rather yeah. make all right. here. Excellent. All right. Let's go back to the top of the list, please, Collins. Yep. All right. Um, those of you who are remote, please use the little hand raising thingy and WebEx, and I will count those. Real quick pr process thing. Yes. Difference. Besides this table of differences. We're going to also talk about the things that are needed for any of this to be actually functional. The, like the, what's the relay behavior? What's the, what's the requirements around the priorities? Things like that. Things um, that are independent of the three differences. Let's get this. We're going to talk about that. Maybe we can get that. If we can agree on these points of designs, like whether we have a discussion about it here or we have a we have a PR writer that can that you can contact a PR writer with concerns. Like I don't know the. I would like to restrict the number of debate points we have at this at this moment. Okay, I would say that those those are the most high runner things to do in a face to face. <laughs> but those debate points. Right. I mean, we have whole day tomorrow. Right? Okay, and we have the, the rest. Who knows how quickly we'll get through this? So, but <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think if this helps us come to some sort of unified design of how to squeeze these things together, then we can move into talking, like working on a proposal of what this would actually look like, what a proposal would look like. Okay, I don't care which one of these we use as a base. All right, or like so that. we're going to take our initial temperature on this one. I'm sorry, Ian. Can, quick question. Um, I, I think there's actually three answers to each of these, which is like, yes, I really want this. No, I really don't like this. And eh, I don't really care. Like, as long as it's not too costly. Like, if, if we have disagreement, we're going to see a can you live with okay. either. Okay. Because okay. okay. there's a bunch of stuff where I'm like, I don't think we need it now, but like, sure, I'd take it. Okay. So 
Um, first question is, uh, is it important to allow a fetch to go into the future? Um, if you think a fetch should be go allow allowed to go into the future, please raise your hand. Uh, six, seven. And then who, and you're looking you, online too? Yes. Uh, who, uh, who thinks it should not be go into the future? Six, uh, seven, eight. Yeah, I got it. Eight. Okay, thank you. All right, that's pretty split. Um, <laughs> discuss. Well, uh, let's. Wait, 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 okay, wait a minute. So, ra raise your hand if you uh, if you like think it's a very serious problem if you don't get your way on this. Okay, this is worth spending a lot of time on. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. All right. So, should we just launch? I, I would rather let's just go and wipe off the ones that. Sorry, no, we yeah, know that. It, let's go through the list one more time. Okay, and right. then, pick, then we'll like map out the. All right, we can agreement. do it that way. All right, request on control stream. Um, can you make a thing on the agreement that like we need to discuss? Important to discuss. Okay, request. So, um, who thinks that a fetch request should go on our current control stream? Raise your hand. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> one, well, I mean, two. why don't you start with? Care. Does any, yeah. Who, who cares where the fetch request goes? What? Getting a single stream back, you know? <laughs> you don't need a fetch okay. ID. If you don't care, don't vote. All right. Okay. Who? Um, all right. Let me let me try that again because we're talking over each other. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Who thinks that the fetch request should go over the control stream? Raise your hand. One, two. And we got online. Three, four. Okay. Four. Who thinks it should go on its own on a different stream? One, two, three, four, four. Okay, what's the game? <laughs> <laughs> well, people vote, yeah. okay. Who uh, who really cannot live with uh, one of those outcomes? Raise your hand. One. Okay. Uh, can you? Mo, which way are you? <laughs> I, I, That's your concern. From the minute we moved to a control stream, I was always worried about constant correlation between the control stream and the data streams it's referencing. I think it's a horrible design, and the more we can move away from it, I would love to see even subscribe go down this fetch path of put it on its own on bidirectional stream. stream. This one. Okay. A lot of people don't like the control stream, as it? But that's sort of a generic yeah. control stream problem okay. in fetch in particular. Okay. So can I, would it be fair for me to say then that we are, the question would be, can, can we get, could people live with, we're going to do it on a separate, not on the control stream? Is that, is that where we are? Is that like I'm trying to figure out the notes to take from this? Was that the conclusion? Um, I, I say, may, may I enter? Uh, yeah. I think that uh, Mo has a, has a point which is interesting. I think that there should be only one way to make requests. So either all the requests are on the control stream, or we can have either a control stream per subscribe or a control stream per, per uh, fetch, etc. But we cannot have fetch do it one way and subscribe to it another way. Ian? I would strongly agree with Christian. That was what I was going to say. Like, I don't care which way we do it, but like, do not don't make it like one way for fetch and one way for subscribe. Like, Luke, that's your position. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm smelling a bit of scope creep. Like, almost this is a separate thing that can be yeah. like, I, I, I think like the status quo thing to do would be put it on the control stream and have a, a whole discussion about moving subscribe and, and fetch off of it. Oh, I just realized. Do we have a scribe for the afternoon? Are you still scribing? I was just starting to because I realized no one was doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll uh, Oops. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. We've got I mean, the good news is the majority of the current discussion. Okay, finish. Sorry, I didn't mean to go right in the middle of the thought there. But it's important. The majority of the discussion has already been documented on this, so we're mostly good. Okay. I have just one comment on that one why a separate control stream might be so different. Why fetch is slightly different from other things? I Fetch is low priority. If I don't want even the request to be not so going now, no, it's not fairly. Not. Even Will's example fetches higher priority than subscribe. What are you going into? Yeah. So my, my point is, my no. fetch, if my fetch, my yeah. application reads fetch as low priority, I don't want the fetch to be acted upon just because it went on a control stream. I guess, I mean, All right, I would, would, would you object to my proposed course of action, which is that we just go ahead and put it on the control stream, pending a holistic discussion about subscribe and fetch? Right. You mean about control streams? Control streams in general. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, no, that, that, be, that like, for this proposal, because like people are also concerned about subscribe, that this proposal, like this PR, uh, will put it on a control stream. Yes. And I'm a person who doesn't care. Put it on a control stream, and then we have an issue about subscribe versus fetch. 
and if they move, they move together. Yes. Is that, does anyone object to that course of action? Okay. So I think this is resolved, Colin. Do you understand how? Yeah. Okay, I thank you. And that announced to the list. Sure. I mean, like, whoever writes the issue can, yeah. can rope in as many messages as they like. Okay. Merging subgroups to one stream. So, yeah, so this is the idea of do we want to, um, do, do we want to have the, the whole fetris? I mean, it, it's, this thing is so different in a lot of ways. But considering that conceptually you want to fetch a bunch of stuff, does it all come back on one stream or does it come back on multiple streams? Right. So who thinks it should all come back on one stream? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Put your hands down. Thank you. Who thinks it should come back on multiple streams? One. So I would like to talk about it a little bit before we just vote. Okay. Well, I mean, this this is an initial temperature take to see okay. where we're at. Okay. okay. So it's two. So it's eleven to two. Um, who cannot live with an outcome other than the way and prefer? I mean, oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> uh, Tony, what was the question? Let's say uh, not live need, with need, the out, not needs discussion. I, 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 needs discussion. Um, I, I want to say that Luke is in the rough right now, but I mean, we will absolutely we need to talk about. I, uh, uh, I would, you know, I would have a we will absolutely have point. I mean, do we have a multiple fetch going on at the same time? There can be multiple yeah, fetches. I, I think all proposals well, allow well, parallel well, fetches. The relay yeah. will have like n multiple streams simultaneously that it has to somehow box into one. Well, if we put all the fetches on a control stream, then we've got not the response, just the request. The, yeah, just the request. Oh, the request okay. is only on control stream. Okay. I mean, if if I want to have, I mean. Fetch number one to five and fetch number seven to twenty nine and fetch number fifty one to twenty three. Those response do those responses need to be on the same stream? No, no. they will be on three different streams. Okay, well, so uh, what what does that mean about this uh, merge? I mean, what, what do we this? What what are we discussing there? We're talking about whether if you request a single group that is split into subgroups, whether it comes back in three streams out of order and you need to reorder them or whether you get them all, all the objects in whatever object order means um, in one stream. I think that that's, that's all I meant by this point. I think that's only the difference. So, and I think it's well so worth some time for Luke to completely yeah. Yes, order. yes, but if we look at Luke's proposal, Luke's proposal is really to have multiple fetches with the fetch restricted to a group ID. The application would then merge them, as opposed to yes. Them. And so the the fact that you have multiple fetches is actually common to all proposals. Yeah. Well, we're talking two different So I, this is kind of bleeding into the next one. So maybe yeah. we can talk about the next one. So supporting <laughs> range queries. So if I have a continuous set of objects, object IDs that I want. Is that like expressible in a single fetch message, or I need to use multiple fetch messages to, to do that? Um, is the, can you clarify though? Is this range on a byte level, or is it the range? No, sorry, this was on a sized around object bound range. Object range, it's it's group, group, I think. Group, 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 yeah, group, 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 group level. Yeah. yeah, object or group. Object range. Okay. All right. Um, if you would like to have this range request capability, raise your hand. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If you would, if you don't necessarily want that feature and want these discrete atomic requests, uh, one, one. Okay. Uh, who can like who who would like have a serious problem with their not unpreferred, not preferred option becoming the point of the spec? I still have a question about how the. This works, which is about my click about like how you what is the, how do you discover subgroup ideas? Yeah, that's different. I mean, I, I, I hear you, but let's leave that aside. <laughs> I don't okay. understand how it works. So I would say rough consensus, um, and let's have a time box discussion about it because I don't think anyone's going to die on the hill. I, I mean, I don't really understand how that's different from previous one. Yeah, that's why I would say they are, yeah. are kind of similar. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, supporting update. So. Uh, if you want to change your update, instead of like cancel and refetch, you can just send an update. Who would like to have an update message? Show of hands. One, two, three. 
four, don't vote if you don't care. Five. Oh, okay. Five. Who Priority. wouldn't does not want to have an update message? One, two, uh, two. Does, can anyone not live with their unpreferred option? No. It's just going to be closing two. connection on the use endings as message involved. <laughs> you're saying if we add an update, you're going to close. You'll always close the connection when you get yeah. one. I mean, that's. That, I, I think that, that that would be. You can't live with it. <laughs> one. Okay, one. All right. So we maybe we have to discuss this. Or is there anyone who object to us just like kicking this can way down the road yeah, until we have the rest done and seeing what so it looks like? Martin, well, you might want to look at the total number of people actually voting. Like yeah. Only, yeah. Because most of the room does not seem to kick, kick, to kick it down the road like until after this PR lands. Or... It's like can V one have no updates and we add yeah. updates in V two? No, but it's in the updates are intrinsic to things like rate delivery, which for a long running fetch doesn't make sense if you're pinned to your one rate delivery forever. So I, I think that is a problem. If um, you don't want the updates, don't use them, but don't prohibit okay. them being there. Um, can we make a fetch request? Can we push it? Can you just say discuss it and end of end of session? Uh, I think we'll, we'll well, so I'm gonna kind of prioritize it, but I'm not gonna like, yeah, yeah. no, look, I, 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 I think that let, let me put words in Will's mouth, which is the rate stuff. If we decide we want that, it's hard to see how that works by making new requests and canceling the old requests. Yeah. So you sort of need an update if you want. I'm tearing down a stream. I don't. I want the same stream to be sending yeah. me data. I just want you to put stuff into it at a different rate. So, so, he's, so he's convinced me. He's that's what convinced me about yeah. that. That's yeah. why yeah. I raised my hand. Okay. Yeah. So, so this this is also tied to the up, the, the explicit rate thing. So maybe we'll. we'll but the explicit come back. rate thing is also controlled to flow control because if you're doing fetch on a single stream, you don't need to do the explicit rate thing. You can just do flow control. Yeah. 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 So and, they're all tied together. I think kick this one down the road. No, but okay. flow control just kicks in if you don't have enough actual bandwidth. I might have a gigabit connection, but I only want to deliver it at oh, three no, megabits. No, no, no. Flow control is the opposite. It's in fact literally for when you don't want to read it out of this object. All right. So okay. I just stop reading it. Correct. Correct. Let's, let's, let's move on. <laughs> fetch single object. So uh, if, if you think it's important to fetch a single object inside a subgroup, raise your hand. I think fetch single object inside as a matter of Right. One, two, three, four, five, five, six. If you um, think it's bad to be able to fetch a single object um, within a subgroup, raise your hand. One. Can anyone, is anyone uh, like very, very sad if they don't get their way on this? Well, one, one. Okay. So, it, it, so just make me sure, uh, this is a clarifying question. My understanding is the scrub use case is requires this, right? This is the scrub use case we're talking about? No. no, no. Cash this is repairing a, cash a, 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 you've got a group in your cache and it's missing one object. Instead of fetching the whole group, oh, you can just get one object. Your substream have a, ha a yeah. gap. Oh, okay, so I was confused. I thought this was the you want to get object zero out of everything. No, group. that's the filter, object filter. Okay, okay. Right, can, you add, can you say short discussion? I think this is not super important. But Okay. This is, so yeah, what's the smallest contiguous thing you can fetch? Okay. That's granularity. I, yeah. I think this will follow from the range thing. Okay. Rate request. Uh, who thinks we need an explicit rate request in fetch? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Unless we do it, I'm sorry, right? Like I'll, some of these things are technical. Okay. Six. Six. Who thinks we should not have an explicit rate request? Is the question the mechanism, or is the question, do you want to be able to full control? Do you want to be able to uh, receive no, an explicit receiver? rate request? Like, this is the rate, rate I want. Bits per second, please. We're yes. going to put in an option that says bits per second yes. is yes. in the fetch request. Okay. Yeah. So who thinks we should not have that? One, two, three, four, five. All right. Who, um, who's going to be very sad if they don't get their way? Raise your hand. Yeah, I want a solution if I'm fetching a whole file that I don't get the whole thing at once. To me, that's that's quite an that's elegant solution. That's a requirement, solution. but whether that's done by telling the other yeah, side. I, I sense that the people that raised their hand against it were thinking that flow control would solve this. Yes. So that's still, I mean, that's a solution level thing, but we yeah, both, all, we, everyone agrees that this, yeah. there has to be a cap yes. on the receiver somehow. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. But Mo, you are, you are putting thoughts in people's heads. <laughs> that's just... 
No, I mean, there are no, also reasons. There are I'm also right. reasons. There are I'm also right. reason. I am worried about the complexity of having drip by drip delivery implemented in the server yeah. side. Yep. Okay. So, so, uh, so yeah, that needs discussion. All right, group ordering. Uh, okay. Ian had, Ian had a request earlier on the chat. I just want to tell you. So, is that? Yeah, I was, I was requesting, I mean, I, I can do this as well, but at some point I'd like to go through and have a column that's what is, because like a lot of these have like a pretty clearish answer for like, if you look at the draft today, what you, what it appears would occur. Like there is no uh, bandwidth rate limit, but there's very clearly like, it does support updates. It does support fetching a single object, like some of these things. So like, because in my mind from this is partially just from a, like how do you write up something big perspective the key thing is like if we can agree on the key points we really want to change and then like change those all in one pr and then anything else that's like we might want to change it like we might want to add a like delivery rate bandwidth limit or maybe not or we want to like or we want might want to move all subscribes and all fetches to their own stream we can just like split those off as separate issues and really like go into them one by one and like make the core change a little bit smaller and more manual, but also like in general, what's in the draft? I mean, isn't this is, this is consensus, this is but like, Victor. is the status quo? Oh, uh, I, I kind of object to this proposal. I don't think there is status quo because there's no fetches. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is all about fetch uh, only. Like, so like, like, can do this. Like there's things about fetch and subscribe, like, the problem with uh, current subscribe is it, it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. So I, it is. So I. I so I, I do agree. It is possible to have a smaller PR and just like punt on some of these features. Um, and I think if things are contentious, we'll probably end up doing that. But um, an ideal thing would be like we have enough consensus that a fetch PR can kind of address all of these issues uh, in one shot. But uh, we'll see where we get on these discussions. Okay. Group ordering. Sure. Is it sure. important? It is important for the, is it, raise your hand if you believe it is important for the client to be able to dictate the order of groups. This is the ascending, ascending, ascending or descending, descending. Yeah. in response to a fetch. One, two, three, four, five. Does anyone think that is like a bad feature? Okay. Hey, let's say, let's say we have consensus on that. We've had consensus on that forever. Okay, so it's good right. it didn't change. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> lovely. Okay. Object filter. Um, I don't even know how to explain this. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so uh, the question is so, so, Will's proposal adds an object filter that would be added to any of them that when you request a group, you can provide some additional thing on it that says which objects in that group you want specified in some. Every group. Every group. Yeah. Multiple, multiple ranges. Multiple yeah. multiple ranges. I, would, yeah. I would just call it an object list. Yeah, uh, multiple it's ranges. List. Well, it's more than a list because it's a combination of ranges and explicit. Yeah. So, no, but okay. that, no, that is a list. It's a complex list. So, so, okay, we, we both agree range. what so it is. It's, it's a complex good. message that allows you to, to consolidate a, a, like, a metaphysical fetch request match. One fetch. We call them act blocks. We call them object blocks. So you never have to do multiple fetches if you have a unitary idea of what you want. Um, if you always want object ID zero, yeah. is like the one big use case. Yeah. So yeah. Does anybody not want this feature? This sounds like icing on the cake. Of course you want this. How yeah. could you well, not it, want this? Because it's, because it's, it's messy. It's I see. You have to implement it. I don't want it. Um, <laughs> okay, does any, okay. <laughs> who wants, <laughs> raise your hand if you want that. The filter. One, one two, filter. three, four, five, six. 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 Okay. Raise your hand if you don't want that. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. Yeah. five. Okay. okay. Who um, who's gonna be very sad if they don't get their way? Because I don't see an efficient way to do the keyframe scrubbing without it. I don't want to request make a request for group zero and repeat that for every object. That's that to me is woefully inefficient. So if you give me an alternative for the keyframe scrubbing, sure. Right. But I the see object that zero, okay, object zero, zero, object yeah. zero in every group. Right. right. That, that was, that was my maybe point. fetch each group individ individually. So you have a comment. Yeah, my comment, yeah, comment is that, uh, yeah. you know, you can, you can do that with yours as well, right? Yeah, well. yeah, I mean, you can do that. Hey, Suhas has the floor. Okay, I think we can add support for key, key uh, frame scrubbing, but the object filter has to find in the uh, Will's thing. Uh, the two things, we can wait on that because it complicates quite a bit. 
uh, if you want to supply in lot large ranges with multiple filters in between, it just complicates the billing implementation. Um, I would say if you really want to do this, this can wait. All the things. The feature can wait. Okay. Anybody feel like it can't wait? We do. It has to come now. Yeah, I, see, no, I, don't, I don't think it's that complex to implement. You're reading objects, you apply no, them to a filter, time. you send them or you don't. Like, it depends, it depends on your range. Okay, all right. Range I, 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 think, I think we need to discuss this. So yeah. like, so that's the outcome of yeah. that. All right, request mm -hmm. subgroup. I uh, think Ian responded something. Just another, I can wait. Let's okay. Okay. Can... All right. Yeah. Uh, <clears> so just on this point of the uh, object filter, looks to me that the only use case is uh, key frames. Today and we can have a separate track with only keyframes if we want. So that is an easy way to do it. Without, and, and object filter can be hard to process at the at the at the relay side. I want to I want to make sure that I understand this. This is an optimization, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then any optimization can always wait. If it's a function that you can't live without, it's because it doesn't do the thing that you want it to do. In this case, it will still, it still do the thing you want to do, just not as efficiently. And we can always answer that question later. Just, well, I'm convinced you we don't need to talk about this right now. Still not. I don't think it's an optimization. Mm -hmm. It's like saying, well, you can fly to LA, you can walk. So flying is an optimization. We'll do yeah. okay. All right. <laughs> we'll I mean, just go with <laughs> <laughs> Chair judgments, we'll talk about it. Okay. But it's, I'm thinking of other things. Okay, I, like, got you. I got you. Filters are useful outside yeah. of media. Like we just have our media okay. hats yeah. on. But okay. Think of all the apps where it might be useful to. Well, I gotta subgroup. catch you up. Let's, yeah. I want to okay. get through this. Request subgroup. Uh, currently, no capability request subgroups at all in subscribe. Um, fetch, well, this one fold allows you to request subgroups. Now, there are questions about how you discover the subgroup IDs, but we'll table that for now. Who would like this feature? One. Oh, you can so retry it earlier, yeah. yeah. Okay. Who thinks this is not a great feature? Two. Who can, who's, who's going to die on the help? Okay, short, short discussion. Yeah. Okay, uh, fraction of objects. Uh, do we want to fetch fractions of objects, like break the atomic? Byte ranges, ranges instead of objects. Byte ranges instead of object by. ranges. Who, um, who thinks it's a good idea? One, two, two. Who think it's a bad idea? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like, are you guys? It's just for this? HTTP caches. Like, it's just to reuse existing caches. That's it. I'm not going to die in it. If you did that, then can we remove all okay. the other ones? Like, all right. ready for can you put exactly. rough consensus? You get rid of object and you know, need range. Discussion. I, I just, I, I like that one comment on why I changed my own yeah. what, what I heard what loops. Uh, so, like, if you're in the middle of a fetch and stream, can got cancelled for whatever reason, you can resume the fetch with, yeah. I thought that was, that was I just want to clarify one point here. It's not just fraction of an object. It's an arbitrary byte range. In which yeah. case it could be several objects. Or it could be a fraction one of object. That's, that's range. I, my understanding was a, a given object. That's what I want to clarify because I think that okay. my, mine is a by range of a stream, just like it's a by range of an HTTP response. So, so I, I mean, okay. that I'd be on the die on hill against or whatever, right? Because I have no way in the relay of knowing. It's just like I'm caching objects, not streams. Okay. That's, 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 that's the difference. Yeah. Unless you're caching yeah. streams, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe we have like a, I'm not sure if they actually text made it into the spec and it survived, but when we were originally discussing objects, we agreed that objects are the units at which we address, and we do not reach into okay. binary. I, 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 I think we're debating this. Uh, uh, I, 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 this is a very good principles that served us well. This is, okay. this is an old, it's like, yeah. I think you're agreeing with like, this what is saying, yes. okay. this so, is an old decision. So, so, so the rough consensus is no, we were going to spend some time, a, a short amount of time talking about it. Okay, forwarding modes. Uh, so uh, should Fetch respect the forwarding preference that the publisher has published? Or should we just, I mean, it's kind of related to shoving it all on one stream, but, but who thinks this is good? One, two, who thinks that's bad? Who thinks forwarding preferences suck? <laughs> <laughs> one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, Who's 
All right, who, who's going to be very sad if they lose? Luke, Christian, Ian. All right, I, got, uh, I would say rough consensus, no need to discuss. Um, and what's the last one? Way to know end of live at live edge. Is that what it says? Oh, uh, fetchable date yeah. time. Fetchable. Okay. okay, this is really poorly written. It looks like it was written is by this, me. Is this the live edge? <laughs> this, this is people saying they need to have like like some the, the whatever the solution is, they need to have a way where they know when to stop fetching and move to the live Fetch edge. Fetch signals live edge. Yes. Okay, so do we need a feature in a fetch response, in some sort of fetch response, where the public, where the sender says this is the end, this is the live edge? Uh, I mean, I assume this this presumes that that fetches can't go past the live edge. But well, if see. they can't, then yes, because what I could do is I could make a fetch to a big number. Yes. The relay doesn't know that's yeah. that's not there. So um, given that restriction, do we need this, this piece of bridge? Who thinks this is a good idea? I Raise think, your hand. I think Christian is. Christian. Yeah, what, what I did, I never asked for that to be part of the fetch response as in control message. But uh, I would be fine if there was something like an, a message in the data stream that says, I'm stopping at this point because you should really get the live hedge. Okay. I mean, basically, I want to have some way for the server to say, nah, I'm not going to do a fetch with that because you are the live edge. Okay. Who would, who would like this explicit signal? Raise your hand. I think everyone would an explicit signal so, as in a new signal. Or here's, look, 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 here, here's my proposal. I, I think everybody wants there to be some way to do this. I don't see a lot of cases. Like, yeah. Yeah, right? Okay. So, I think right, whoever's I... designing a merge PR should come up with making sure they can answer that question. Okay. Right. Is, is that proposals. true? Does everyone just want a mechanism, but they don't care what it is? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Non-racy mechanism. Because by the time you say you're caught up with a live in, you can't fetch future stuff. Right, because you explicitly get an error if you try to fetch the conditional on us choosing not to fetch future stuff. Do we that, need this? This is conditional. Right? Yes. Well, <laughs> if if you want to have no race, then you should have the super race. The subscribe, the subscribe and the, you should have a subscribe and fetch as a sub option of the subscribe. Okay, let, let's not design that's, it right now. Yeah, okay, so I, I think I think the consensus is, if if you forgive me, that that. Conditional on us not allowing future fetches, there should be some sort of signal, and people are pretty agnostic as to what that signal is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mechanism not necessarily a new signal. It could be existing. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally like stream fit, but whatever. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's move on. Okay, scroll up. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, so it's two twelve. We have an hour. Do we think tackling them in this order is good, or is it? The other ones that were closer to consensus, like what what would be the appropriate uh, order to tackle? I, I I would say that some of these are grouped together. Uh, I think but. if we get answers to the first two or three, uh, we will have easier time with most of them. Okay, well the yeah, second one we've already taken. I think for me, merging the subgroups in their own stream like affects all of them. That's an important one. Okay, Should we yeah. start there because if well, you say fine. yes or no, it changes well, everything. Let's, let's do feature yeah. though and do subgroups. That work? Well, actually, well, okay, I guess the subgroup thing solves the future thing. That's an end. Yeah, okay. Let's do subgroups first, then with the future. Yeah. That's that okay. That's that's an an the future. So well, you features. can't request the future if you, yeah, you request these You're still, still going to ask Give me all the subgroups. Okay, all right, fine. Talk about the future. All right, so. Um, all right, so I, I guess, so I, I think we were pretty split on this, like almost 50 50. So um, let's just open up the queue and people can start talking. Which is the one you're talking about? Can you fetch the future? Oh, fetch the future. So, yes. Um, Luke. So what this comes down to is mostly a race condition. When you're moving from the DVR, and you're playing back at faster speed, and you're switching into subscribe. If you issue a fetch for the next group, and you get an error message saying, you can't do that, idiot. Like, you need to subscribe, and it gives you the number. You then subscribe as a race condition. It may be the next group now, and then you have to go back and fetch the one you missed again. It just creates this like border boundary between fetch and subscribe where you have to use the right method message, and you don't know it's racy. Okay, can you make sure that you tell me what you 
when you state your position, say, I want, I want in the future, I don't want. to work in the past or fetch to work in the future. Okay. Victor, then Mo, then Colin, then Jonna. Damn it, there's no whiteboard in here. I got it. Okay. Victor, well, Colin. So I'll, we'll do a text. Victor, Colin, Mo, Mo uh, uh, Jonna, Mo, Mike, Mike Jonna, Suhas. Suhas. Okay. Victor, Colin, Mo, Mike, Mike Jonna, Suhas. Anybody else? Go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there are two things that uh, I want to say. First, to reply to Luke is that this is a solvable problem, uh, and it's solvable by you basically subscribing and fetching at the same time. You make a bet that it does both. You, you kind of. So there are two. It's two ways. One of them is like you can make a message that subscribes you to the head and fetches back. Uh, and the second is you can make a, add a flag to the page that if I ran right into the edge, please subscribe. Me. I don't think it goes subscribe. Uh, well, like like this is like something we can solve as a in the protocol by engineering. Yeah. Now, why do I think that patching in the future is fundamentally a bad idea? Is that uh, so? This key idea of patch is patch uh, gives you like well known state of objects, and you cannot give well known state of objects in the future uh, without uh, 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 without uh, this, the yeah without having those objects. You can only say that those objects do not exist. But now, like in my ideal view, like patch is something uh, the nice property is that its atomic transaction is that it's like. You start, you handle it, you finish it, and uh, you're done. Uh, and you do not have to uh, maintain state. The important thing here is there is the pitfall of fetching into the future is that because you when you're fetching into the future, uh, since you promise to fetch everything, and that means you're fetching everything and you do not drop everything, uh, now you can put yourself in a position where you're fetching far and far into the future, uh, but the client is getting behind uh, because, uh, and in subscribe, we have timeouts and other mechanisms that would lead to streams being discarded. And like subscribe is designed to operate under that condition where you might have either temporary or permanent uh, bandwidth available lower than the data you're subscribed to. When you do that with fetch, you can now be in a position where you're getting far and far from the fetch, and that is really awkward combined with the reliable thing. Okay, Colin. Um, so I think we absolutely have to be able to solve the use case of a, of a smooth transition with no you know, missing gaps or something as you go from old stuff to live stuff, no question about that. But I think that that can largely be, I think there's multiple ways we can design this, including subscribe to the current group and forward, um, or, or some sort of a, you know, a control message that you sent up that's atomic that indicates you're doing a subscribe and a fetch at the same time or, or linked. I mean, there's many ways we can design a solution to that. The simplest way to me is simply that as you start getting close to the live edge, you um, subscribe and you look at what object you get back as your first object in the subscribe and then you do a fetch up to that object. Um, and now you, you know exactly the transition point. There's no chance of gaps or anything like that. Um, so th that's sort of my, the, the way I think about that. But I think we need to solve that solution, but I don't think that, we need, that that means we need to allow fetches into the future. And my problem with fetches in the future is I don't see any way that, the, that a distributed relay network that's really sort of complicated can be able to efficiently aggregate those together without resulting in multiple upstream, multiple upstream copies going to the publisher that use their bandwidth. And so on the ingress case, it's like, if we're just talking about distribution type cases, it doesn't really matter if you end up with extra case, uh, extra fetches to the origin or extra copies of the data being sent from the origin. But if you're talking about an ingress case, we can't have a situation where the publisher is trying to send two copies of the same data. I mean, that just totally trashes their ability to, that's going to half their quality of their bandwidth. So I want to make sure we avoid that. And that's, I don't see how to avoid that in any of the solutions that allow fetch into the future. So that, that's my concern about fetch in so, the future. So I can interject, it sounds like the people who don't like the future thing are willing to like tune the way that 
this message is expressed to avoid the race condition issues that might be. Oh, there. for sure. We okay. got to avoid those. Some yeah. Of these will... Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm glad we agree on something. Um, Mo. Uh, so I agree with Colin on that, but I think that's orthogonal to us. I don't think it has anything to do with fetch and subscribe. I think that's just distribution period, distribution and caching and dedupe period. We need to think about hard and not put stupid requirements, you know, like, like not being stupid duplicate objects around. On fetch and subscribe, I don't think there's any point in having fetch if it overlaps in at all with subscribe. So we have subscribe as a God object, a God message right now that does everything. And we decided we wanted to have this different fetch functionality. If it's so indistinguishable from subscribe that they overlap so much that there's, you know, grayness about when you should use one or the other, I think we failed. So fetch should clearly be only things in the past. Subscribe should only be live edge only. I wouldn't even support subscribe at a offset from anything. Subscribe only right now. That's your only option. And I know we're not talking about subscribe changes, but right after the fetch lands, we will ask for subscribe changes. And the first thing that I will request is subscribe only at the live edge. And that makes a clear distinction between what can I already do today with HTTP, fetch is just another synonym for Git. It's just an exact H3 Git. And, and subscribe is really the difference in mock. It's what allows you to get the equivalent of HTTP pushes across new streams that, that you <coughs> didn't even ask for. You asked on one stream and you got a bunch of pushes from these other streams. That's the semantic difference in mock, and that's what subscribe should be doing, and fetch should only be doing H3 Git. Mike? Um, yeah, I echo most of what's been said so far. Basically, uh, subscribe should deal primarily with the future. I'm okay with having it uh, go back, maybe relative a group or two, um, and having some, some potential overlap there. Um, but yeah, I think we either want a, a combined subscribe and fetch message to resolve the race condition, or like Colin said, maybe it's possible to, to issue the subscribe first, check the first object, issue the fetch, and you're fine because you're tolerant of latency a little bit. So, yeah. John? Um, I don't want to echo strongly what Mo said because that is most of what I was going to say. The semantic difference between subscribe and fetch, if it is clear, it can make it very powerful because we then can describe each one of them very clearly and we can leverage them as more basic units than something that is more flexible but doesn't necessarily i mean but those verbs aren't necessarily different and you end up with these duplication problems and all kinds of other issues as a result and ambiguous implementations um to me the 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 thing i want that i would like us to do is to commit to just using fetch for fast subscribe for live edge i like that uh, formulation but then also commit to solving the transition problem in the best way that we can. And if we assume those are the tools that we're gonna use and we're gonna start figure out how to solve the transition problem, I think that gets you like 90% of the use cases is fetch and subscribe, and then like the 99% of the use cases is fetch and subscribe, and the 1% of the transition problem. And we, we can at least box that uh, into what the meaningful uh, space that it deserves. Suhas. Yeah, and I, I think I'm uh, in the similar boat of what uh, has been hearing so far. Uh, solve for future and past uh, separately. Don't mix those things. Today we mix those things, at, uh, and it has its side effects when you try to aggregate things. Uh, the problem with having fetch into the future is that you can say I want to fetch with some priority, and say it's coming on until it is trying to keep up and it comes to you, and suddenly the live becomes with that priority now. The whole thing of having live to be at whatever your priority, now it has to be unit to unit, cancel that and you subscribe again. So anyways, you're going to solve the subscribe problem. The same thing with all, happens even with, uh, if you have group order or delivery rate. Let's say I deliver, I, I'm, my fetch started delivery rate of uh, three Mbps per, or, or, or 500 kilobits per second, and suddenly it starts with two Mbps on subscribe. Like how, how do you tell the client now, you ask for some delivery rate. So other thing you do is that you do another fetch update, which in this case, you can do a subscribe to the live stream. So I think most of the things where we are saying that how do we transition to live, uh, I think there are ways to solve it, even when we have a uh, fetch to the past and uh, subscription to the future. We also need to think about how relays would implement this, especially when you have to aggregate things. Uh, when you combine fetch and subscribe, that's, you'll go back to the same problem of uh, aggregation, which is much harder to solve. Okay, I inserted myself um, as an individual, and I, um, so I'm a proponent of what we're calling fetch in the future. And I, 
think the way I want to think about that is we're all talking about subscribe to live, thinking that staying current on live is more important than fidelity to the original data. And that's because what we're talking about is primarily media over quick. But if you look at media over quick transport, that system is capable of meeting a lot of use cases where 100% fidelity of live is more important than latency. And I think having we should have a solution for that. Now, if, if that means subscribe has a mode where I say, I like, I want fidelity and I want you to tell me when there's, if there, if there wasn't something and I want the cache to have this behavior where it fills for me, I think that's a feature that people will want to use this protocol for. If you look at other pub sub protocols out there, they all have this kind of capability and not like, oh, well, yeah, I subscribed to the this topic and I only got A and C and I don't, don't even know if B is there and I have to make a whole separate request to like find out if it was there or fill it. So I, I think that we want that and like exactly how we spell it. I understand having a single message that crosses the live boundary is complicated. So maybe it's just like, I want, I want high fidelity subscribe is what I want. Um, and I understand that people are concerned about how that's gonna interact with people are fetching or subscribing at the same time and how that might impact publisher and duplicate objects being sent. Like I, but I also wonder like, if the Hertz don't do that, like uh, <laughs> if, is, is a potential uh, solution. So anyway. Alan, can, can you clarify, what, what, what's the publisher? Why do you think that's not already solved today with current subscribe? If you say ascending order, What's the problem? Why would it not be high fidelity? If the, today there's no mandate in the document that says if you hit, uh... we 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 don't drop objects today. Yeah, you, I don't. I, I can't, this is my source of confusion. I think it's okay, what well, we're maybe, talking maybe about. The, you can't put a gap I'm all for object. high fidelity. Is that the That's whole point of subscribe? Is it's like that you can you can you can toss a, you can re, you can reset a stream because you're falling behind. If I set my delivery timeout to infinity and my cache timeout to infinity, infinity, consciously over. resetting the stream. He's saying he doesn't want to do that as a receiver. Why would you, why would you do that? You don't want to do that. So if the sender could reset the stream. Why, why would the sender reset the stream? The delivery time. Yeah, delivery time. Yeah. Okay, but if I said delivery time. time to infinity, you're saying I'll always get every object from the original publisher and none will ever be dropped. That's yeah. not what you want. They won't be real time, but yeah. yeah. Real time. Okay. Yeah. Like a to me. All right, let's move. Um, okay. Tim. I was just going to kind of say that I don't think we're ever going to really have a good handling of transition unless we are just replaying from cache always for all transmission. Okay. Hello. I mean, I, that it, I, it, that could be possible. That's not what we're doing. But other than that, you're always going to have a gap. When are you at the end? And your transmission is going to be potentially slower than what we can send to you from what we're receiving uh, live right now. Philip? Yeah, I... Listening, I'm thinking that there probably is an interaction here between the catalog in that if I'm looking to get stuff from the past, I'm looking to get specific things. And the difference you're saying with subscription is I may be getting stuff that's unexpected. And so if I'm going into, if I attach myself to a stream, start watching it from the past, the point at which I attach myself to the stream is going to be of ongoing interest. And when you try and do this transition from catch up to live, that's probably going to be the point at which you want to be able to, you know, that's going to be the point at which you step from, these are all things that are archived objects that are known, to these send me the stuff that is relevant to this query. And it comes from being in the, this is looking backwards and that is looking forwards. Christian. Yeah, uh, the part of my, uh, we should keep it simple thing, says that we should not encourage uh, clients to do stuff that the server don't like. And so I think that we should have some hard, hardcore uh, things there that if a client requires an object, requires in fetch an object that has not arrived yet, then as in that is past the life edge, then the fetch just fails. Maybe the fetch tell them that they should subscribe instead or whatever, but 
just fail it. And that way we, we cut all the complications. Suhas? Uh, I think I agree with Christian on that one. If fetch beyond uh, live edge, um, it, it basically provides what you have and it also tells that, you know, it might tell this is a live edge for you, uh, if, if that helps uh, for the sequence of uh, subscription if needed. But on the other hand, for Alan York, in this case, where subscription with delivery timeout, it was added to, uh, to support different use cases wherein for real time use cases, maybe beyond a jitter buffer size, docket is not useful. But delivery timeout, they set is very different than delivery timeout. For example, I would set for a chat or anything. The, the top key I want to, uh, it can stay in cache for a while because they are not uh, generated uh, every 30 milliseconds. It's generated a few days or a few hours, right? So it, I think delivery timeout is still useful. And again, it's, it's not fetch because it's still saying that from the live edge down, but I give a guarantee that uh, I can hold on to this for a while. It's not going, it's not solving the problem of, uh, let me go find out if I don't have the answer in the cache. I'm gonna cut the queue soon to yeah. take the group's temperature. So uh, if you really gotta say something, please add stuff to the queue. Christian, please lower your hand. Uh, Alan. Okay, so it, I'm, I'm glad that people have said that they think subscribe can do this so, and that there's some version of high fidelity subscribe. And I think one of my concerns in the past was that because you could ask for subscribe and what you got back was different depending on the state of state of some cache, that that was not good because the property of fetch where it tells you, but like it fills in a gap. But now if we said that subscribe is only future and yeah. the, the state of a cache can never impact what you get back from subscribe, then like that handles most of it. And then now I'm the, the distinction that we have, if you look at, excluding Luke's proposal, the other two, put the response on a single stream, which allows me to sort of flow control it or like, or there's some mechanism for applying a rate on some subscribe, which I guess is another feature I want or being able to know that if it's coming on a single stream, if I didn't get it, there's a gap. Versus like, I don't think people, there's just, there's a parking lot and I'm like, can we kill stream per track? And I kind of think I'd rather have an ability to stay. I want everything collapsed onto one stream because that's how I want it. Because I know what I want, and like the, that the publisher may have wanted it on multiple streams is well, I'm not sure. Anyway, this was, those were individual comments. So I think I, I, I guess I'm mostly moving toward the idea that like subscribe can accomplish things as long as we have an idea that like subscribe can be high fidelity. Then we don't need that to the future. So, um, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead, Luke, and I'll cut the queue. Yeah, uh, Luke and Victor, I'll quickly say. Um, I'm okay not pitching the future, but I do need a solution for the race condition. And like That's my clarifying point. question here is like, for example, fetch and subscribe sounds almost identical to subscribe in the past, right? Like if you subscribe starting five groups back and fetch ascending order, that sounds like fetch and subscribe. So like, I kind of want to like talk about how to fix the race condition before we have this very hard, I'm going to error if you ever at that transition point. I think in the past, this has come up and the, the answer was, I think I want to say John has said this a while ago, which is that like, having primitives with key semantics and then composing them, like may, it may exactly be fetch and subscribe stuck exactly. together. Yeah. There, there may be power in doing so because there's clear semantics for fetch and there's clear semantics for subscribe. If the words now. in your mouth, it's <laughs> all Victor, <laughs> okay, so first to, to reply to that, uh, it's uh, like uh, the, the problem of current subscribe is that it delivers stuff on multiple streams. So the problem, that by itself is not a problem. The problem is like, then you need to go to fetch from the backend if you don't have that in cache. And uh, because it's all like really wishy-washy as to what will arrive. But uh, you, there are really bad things, really weird things start happening if you are, if you use that subscribe for the best. Uh, now, I wanted to comment on what Alan said about the high fidelity subscription for PubSub. And I want to point out that subscribe currently is can be what we call high fidelity, but conceptually there is no such thing as high fidelity subscription to the future. Because if your network is able to sustain like the pops up rate, you will just get everything good. You will get everything and that's not a problem. However, if you're unable to sustain this rate, then almost any pop-up system in existence will eventually say, I only buffer 
last 500 messages. If you get behind so far, I will, most will probably just terminate your connection. Then. Uh, so uh, in our case for subscribe, if we don't have timeout, we have like a priority queue based on the subscription priorities and the MoQT priorities, and then we cap it at the bottom and then we evict the, the lowest priority ones. So that's better than traditional pops up. But at the end of the day, like there is no absolute high fidelity because either you have bandwidth and everything works, or you do not have bandwidth and you have to lose something. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. It's true. Okay. All right. Um, all right. We spent 20 minutes on this now, uh, this particular issue. Um, have, has anyone changed their mind or decided they don't care anymore? Can I just see a show of hands, or are we still deadlocked? Well, there's new caveats, so, so, right? But, but, We've but, come to the conclusion that we can solve solve the transition point through some other mechanism, yeah. and that we can get a degree of fidelity with the subscription. So with those two things, yes, I would accept that there's a workable solution. I, that's, I think that that should be what our conclusion to this conversation should be, is assuming that those two things continue to be true, that we have answers to both those. So everyone agrees we need answers to those, and I think we have them, but on those, then we have consensus that fetches in the past and that subscribes in the future. Future fetch will be in. Balance about it. I'm thinking okay, of like the means from, from, you know, from, you know, from, you know <laughs> your intellect is so, baffling. Right, so so if, you, if I could try to restate how the proposed consensus Thank it's you. that uh, that we that the PR, the, the upcoming PR, um, Definitely handles the transition problem, but like the semantics of what you do in response to a fetch only apply to objects in the past, and that the semantics of what you do to subscribe only apply to objects in the future. Well, I maybe we should bracket that, but in general, the, the semantics of subscribe only apply to the future. Is anyone like, is that is that a problem for anybody? Can we? And can we explicitly write down what our, what we think the two problems are? Because I'm not everyone. Yeah, not I'm sure sorry. What was the second one? There's transition. What was the other well, one? Well, oh, one's high, a high fidelity subscriber. High fidelity okay. subscriber is one. Okay. The, there's so. two transition to futures. The one is where I'm starting five segments back from live. So I'm going to get five segments very quickly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I, that's, that's one. And that occurs very frequently. Daniel, the other transition to live is where I start 100 minutes yeah. back at twice yeah. the rate and I catch up. It's actually quite a rare one, but it's a different. Daniel, are you still taking I'm notes? I'm trying. Okay, thank you. Because <laughs> double I, chocolate. Because we dropped it. Wow. <laughs> because like we dropped the question of who's going to succeed. I think you have this found this you Okay, so can we can we actually this is, this is where you come. You're very important. So I I, 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 I think the new consensus right we have had here is that uh, the PR will produce a design where. Uh, Responses before the live edge have fetch semantics, fetch response semantics, and after the live edge have subscribe response semantics. And the solution will cover two cases gracefully. One is transition from past to live. And number two is subscribe, a, a high fidelity subscribe. Oh, we used to have an issue called reliable subscribe, which I think got closed accidentally. Luke, I have a <laughs> clarifying question. Subscribe for the future, does that include the current group? This, that I, is technically in the past. There's yeah. a, there's a, the I, I, that, a bunch of hands started. Finished. The end of the group is oh. in the future. Current uh, object. I think yeah. that oh. the, that's different than current object. I, I, I object. think this is the thing that most I So the reason, since we have use cases where there are like, a group can be running for minutes and minutes. Mm -hmm. There is like no practical way to like a catalog this. track, right? You always subscribe well, it's to a, it. Well, the, 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 the things yeah. I'm thinking are like long, long VC calls or <laughs> video calls where you just have no iframes. Okay, so, but you're saying you should not get the current group, only the most recent object. Yeah, if you produced. Yeah, yeah because that's well, like. Okay, hold on, let me. Or, the, the, the queue is open, so okay. How many people do we have? I see. Sorry, this very like two hours in the past. She was calling Will. Agree with what? What do you want? 
<laughs> so the should should start the the uh, subscribe should start with the current group current object or is from the beginning of the group. Which of those two are you asking for? Subscribe. subscribe is in the future. So whatever's in the future is where subscribe That so means subscribe gives you nothing when you do subscribe it. Subscribe do nothing. Subscribe See. will tell you, you basically add a routing table entry. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Are we raising hands for that? No, no, we're raising hands for people who want to talk to this topic. Do you oh, want to say something different? Yes, you opened this can of worms with the future and the past stuff. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. That is the okay. future. I, do, okay. I, I no. definitely want to talk about okay. this. Suas, are you done? Yes. I, I think Colin was first still. Oh, okay, fine. Colin? Okay, so look, I, I, Mo, Mo said the first thing he's going to want to do after we land this fetch is go refactor the subscribe stuff, but we should leave that. It's a little bit out of subscribe to go, but he's going to argue for exactly this. The subscribe is only in the future, not future plus a little bit of the past. Um, and given we have relays that are non-caching, which I've always been sort of antsy about how that worked with exactly this topic, um, I, I think I'm, I, I used to be strong against this, but I think all 180 to where Mo is on this, that the, the subscribe is purely about the future. And that if you, and so if you want to get the beginning of the, the groups, but I think that this is really an orthogonal from the design of the fetch thing. And no matter how we do that on this, we can, we can deal with it. So my preference would be to not spend a bunch of time on how we change subscribe today, but go get fetch sorted out. Actually, with the assumption we may change this on subscribe once we sort out. Fashion. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I think I'm more with Luke on this, but I, I agree with Colin that, um, like, if we land this PR, subscribe will still exist in its current form, and we can argue about subscribe later. Um, okay. Just a minute. So, you say you're with Luke. I, I think I, I've lost track of where Luke is uh, on this particular well, one. Well, my... I, th I, I, think, I think you can subscribe for object zero in a group. Okay. The most but recent. I, I, group. Yeah. But we can. It, but okay. We, okay. So that's the most recent group. Yeah. Which is where I always was. Right. Yeah. Was yeah. Subscribe yeah. starts but, at but the correct group. We'll have that's, that discussion later. It's a, it's a joke. Okay. Point. Does anyone have anything to add to this topic yeah. that, that that has to come in? Well, oh, sorry. Well, yeah, I, I agree with. I I definitely want to subscribe at object zero, but I acknowledge there's people who don't. They're yeah. both and or who right. have ten minute gops. Object zero was ten minutes ago. Yeah. So there's two valid use cases. So for me, it says in subscribe there should be a flag. I should, have, I should have the ability to get the very next object, or I should have the ability to get it from the last object zero. But, okay, okay, does that, this is, comes back to real, the high fidelity subscribe. If I say zero and subscribe, from zero to current, do I get high fidelity semantics or yes. whatever's in the capture? You get whatever is your delivery timeout window. My delivery timeout is always a million. So I want to get high fidelity, as long as I get high fidelity semantics until the current one, I'm okay. okay. During the break, we talk about metaphysics and groups. That's another topic. Uh, I, I want to, I want to see if we can squeeze another one in. It looks like we've, let, I think we run this to ground, and maybe there's get one up, more in before break. Uh, there's a hand up from Gwendol. I don't think that's a hand. Yeah, sorry. I don't know if it, it was. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, one of the, uh, one of the problem I see is when we have a. Uh, uh, catch up uh, between five and five seconds and 30 minutes you i mean you have no clue on, on what limit to put somehow so and if you go if you play double speed you you never know exactly where you are compared to the to the life unless we use this timeline uh, track which was one of the proposals uh, a few months ago, which was not really discussed. But I think that we this this timeline track is a perfect companion for the fetch. It is a way to let the player know that he is close to the live, or that he could switch to something which is a subscribe now, or something like this. I don't say that there is easy solution, but maybe we should reopen and go a, a bit deeper into this timeline story. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to move to the next topic, unless somebody... Yes. Uh, for the notes, do we want to add that the subscribe, or we making any changes to subscribe for this? Or keep this PR will have no changes to subscribe. Okay. Okay. All right, let's... let's... All right, so the other thicket, so we have about 30 minutes to resolve the thicket of uh, merging, like, does a fetch response come on one stream or on many streams? Um, all right, let's, 
fire up the text window. Actually, I'll fire up the text window. Okay. So I'm not going to talk. Luke, you want to go first on this one? Go ahead, I think you were the one. I want to. I want to raise it. Put me right after Luke. That's fine. When, when a relay is serving a fetch, it might have some stuff in cache. It might need to do a fetch back. It might have a subscribe active and receiving stuff. So merging them all, and you have like effectively two options. You either do HP one pipelining, where you deliver everything in group object order, and you just block and don't do anything until that this cache is filled. Or you write whatever is available, which effectively means that object IDs and group IDs come completely out of order, like completely randomly. If you have ob you know object ID six in cache, you're going to serve it. If two's not in cache, you wait, you fetch it. And then to Alan's point, you're, the whole point of this is that you could build a player that just has head of line blocking, receives everything in intended order, but you're not getting that by merging into one quick stream. You're actually getting chaos. You get it completely out of order objects. If you try and merge, or you introduce pipelining. You're saying because of subgroups or something? Or? Why, why are you getting chaos? Can why is the chaos? Happening? Well, across subgroups, within and across groups and objects, like every group <laughs> and, and every subgroup is delivered out of order. Just you you might get, like, for example, one object out of stream one, and another object out of stream two, merge them together. That can only happen within a group, though. Well, two separate streams and groups, yeah, and or sub subgroups. So it couldn't be the same sub two. So just about, let me just clarify a question yeah. yeah. so, so I don't, I don't quite, I mean, one, one way that a relay could send data, it's got a bunch of data for this fetch that arrives at various times because it had to go upstream for some of it, some of it's cache, right? So one way it could just deliver stuff, like it deliver like it in any order and let the client sort it out. The arrival timestamp, I would say. When it arrives to the relay, you deliver it to the... Okay, yeah, that doesn't answer the stuff that's already in cache, but yeah, it makes sense. But then the other one is it delivers it sort of in group ascending order yes. and then objects inside of there. Yeah, so it doesn't deliver stuff that's in the cache until all right. the stuff has been fetched. Or if there's a gap in the cache, it yeah. fill. yeah. I'm calling so, it HP1 pipelining. Okay, H so are you, are this, so, okay, got it. So, but that's, that only, see, like, there seems to be only two viable ends of the spectrum, like send it in whatever order you can get it to the client fastest in, in aggregate, or send it in a, like the intended in order. HTTP yeah. one order. Yeah. <laughs> like, what is the, the, the order that internet gods meant it to be in. Um, <laughs> and, um, uh, 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 but, yeah, it's true. Uh, but, uh, so which one are you arguing? Which one do you want on that? That's, well, that's what I, I was trying to get to. That's why I have a separate stream per request, so they actually arrive in parallel. The subgroups arrive in parallel instead of being merged completely out of order. Okay, so a you're, subgroup you're will always you, arrive in order as opposed to when you merge them, subgroups will be interleaved. Okay, so, so you're arguing That's for, true. just to clarify what you're arguing for, you're saying that, that, that the stream delivers all the stuff in a subgroup in order, yeah. but the order of how you got your subgroups or which, which groups you got in which order yeah. is just arbitrary, yeah. It's based on I, I don't want to use the word chaos, yeah. but it's, it's arbitrary. Basically. They yeah, think yeah. Blocking. Was that the okay. point you wanted to make? No, not at all. That's okay. why I just wanted to understand where Luke was trying to argue for there. Um, so I, I think on this one that I, I lean very much towards just HTTP GET is a very coherent model for us. And probably my view of HTTP GET is HTTP 1 streaming, I'm embarrassed to admit. So, <laughs> um, uh, but I, I mean, I, I think that like, if you want to get things in parallel, you should issue multiple fetches in parallel. And then if you want to just get everything ordered for you, you do one order. So that's the way I lean on this just because it's easy for me to think about and implement, but I, I definitely, like, I'm not going to die on that hill. I could live with other solutions. Okay. Uh, I, I'm next to Q as an individual. Um, I, like, share uh, Colin's aesthetic preference for this, but my other comment about subgroups specifically is that, um, well, one, from practical matter, subgroups are not really discoverable at this time, so, so subgroup IDs yeah, are, are, that, are yeah. essentially random, and so you don't know what to request. And the second issue, I just, I don't know that it subgroups are a meaningful uh, abstraction to make in a fetch context, right? Like they're meant to, they're meant to sort of have these, provide these layers of dependency and reliability if certain objects aren't gonna be delivered, which is not the fetch semantic at all. So I don't, I don't think subgroups are the right layer, <coughs> right tool to use. I, I'd, mu I'd much rather you just like request groups or something if you're gonna do something like that. Um, all right, that's tough. Suhas. I, I think I, I, I for start something simple and start with uh, one bidirectional data stream 
and if we really have use cases where that cannot be solved, we'll open up. As, that's, that's, that's something we can solve the problem later. And also, uh, if we really wait for the data to be fetched before response, it's, it's the client's decision if it can wait for it or not. It, 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 uh, to make its decision. So we have group order that provides two options for you where it wants, if you don't have something, get me in the order that I requested, which is the ascending order. And the descending order is like, what do you have? Give it to me and go fetch uh, the rest of the things. So I think with the, with the tools that we have, we can use these use cases. And how things come from the upstream to the relay is still the same fetch request going upstream as well. So there is no, if, if you don't have any forwarding modes or anything, then that will also come in the same own stream. So, uh, so and when, whenever, if the relay decides that, you know, this is a really huge range and it, it I, I want it to, really optimization decides if I want to split into multiple fetches, it can fit, uh, fit into multiple fetches too. And we don't have to uh, mandate one way versus the other. Uh, John. So I'll go back to that idea of, I, I, I like what Sura started with, no, which is simply to say that let's do the simplest thing and then optimize later. Because we really, I think we are, we are getting into the place where we have design abstractions upon design abstractions and we're confusing ourselves the like fuck out of our minds. And we'll 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 go around in circles forever if we don't actually get real implementation experience with this. So what I do want to say though is that for the simplest case, using a single stream is easiest. If you require, I mean one of the one of the reasons you do multiple streams is to avoid head up line blocking, which is a latency specific thing that applies much more to subscribe than it does to fetch. Because fetch is uh, the, the, the primitive there is really about like, get me all of your stuff. It's okay if I have to wait a bit. Right? And that's usually the semantic that I associate with fetch. Um, so using multiple streams itself becomes moot when you don't worry about head of line blocking. In terms of blocking on the server to actually give you data before sending, that just seems silly. The relay should always send whatever it has. And we can, again, this is a piece we can resolve, I think. Like the ordering questions that we can resolve that but how exactly to fix it um, without using multiple streams. So I'd say go with single stream. Um, yeah, Victor? Uh, I really don't understand why you're saying the things arrive on multiple streams. Well, you can have multiple outstanding fetches or subscribe or some stuff in cache. The relay could. Okay, if you have multiple outstanding fetches, so Makes sense. User A requested something, user two comes in later, requests something else, and then user three might have both of them in the range. Uh, I still don't understand why you, you pick. Like do you flush an entire stream before you start in a next stream, or do you interleave them? Or do you block in ID order or something? Is the question. You block in ID order? I, I don't see any other. You you block until you receive the object. No, this is a, the intended order. So this is the oldest thing would be delivered first. Yeah. And if it's not in cache, you have to wait for it. Yeah. That sounds like the, the best meaningful answer. No idea. Uh, Alan? So I'm sympathetic to the argument of like, I've got this in cash, I could send it right now and yeah. get there faster. Like that appeals to me. Although I will say the second that I had was John was talking is that like, I don't know, our HTTP CDN caches large objects and pieces and for cash purge reasons, you can have a gap and like HTTP, like you're talking about one, one pipelining where request after request, like true, but even in every version of HTTP, like you can't serve the end of an object before you serve the middle. So yeah, sometimes we have that thing is cache, but we have to block while we go upstream and refill the cache of that piece. Shouldn't be a problem for hot objects. That's kind right. Of I mean, it's, it's rare. Yeah, yeah, you get partial hits, and the logic is gruesome. Yep. Um, yeah, it is. But you just <laughs> have to implement it. Like, Ideally, you yeah. catch the head of a response, not the tail. You well, we, eviction. But eviction is independent of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it happens how it happens. Fix issue. Sorry, I, this is as an individual thing. It's okay. Um, uh, so, the other thing is like I'm also sympathetic to the idea that like we organize these things into subgroups, we're planning to send them normally if they were subscribed to in their subgroups. And then let's say we've got evens and odds, however, right? So you've got those stored in a certain way and then you're, the sender now has to like pull those, pull that crap apart and like interleave them back onto a single stream. So like, I know that's a pain. At the same time, I think that I'm just 
Jonna's appeal to like, let's just do something simple because if you have multiple streams, we haven't solved the, I, I like the single stream approach to solving back pressure better. Yeah. Um, actually, you stole my thunder. So I insert myself back in the streams is one thing I forgot, which is I think this is a native, this is a, this is a natural solution to the back pressure problem in that you, yep. extreme flow control and quick works. And if you just don't read it off the stream, like you automatically, like the API is there, you just don't read it off the stream if you're not ready to take it. And like, boom, it all just, just works. Um, which you have multiple streams, then you have to build this other bespoke, like group of streams specific MOQ solution. So you can certainly do that. This seems way easier and less 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 uh, uh, fragile. Um, and it's you, Luke. Yeah, uh, the other wrinkle I was gonna say, so it sounds like you should at least serve a subgroup in order. Or what if you have the tail of a subgroup cached? Are you allowed to serve the end of the subgroup first, the objects individually, and then go back to the start and then serve out of subgroup order? You know, you and, could. I mean, the main problem there is gaps and like existence and stuff. No, you serve an object ID order. You serve an object ID okay, order. Okay, so you have to serve every group an object ID order or subgroup an object ID? No, subgroups are not. No, subgroups are just order. Order. subgroups are only for dependent to, to like essentially a prioritization drop. Okay, in fact, so, in this case, all, everything, all the groups are in one subgroup if it's a, a single stream. Okay, so, so you matter. at least serve a group in order. Yes. But, uh, but groups could be interleaved with each other or no? no. Okay, so we're going back to so strict order. With the idea is, again, like it's pipelining. Like if you're yes. blocked on group one, even if you have group nine in cache, yes. you can't serve. I mean, it's a, it's a question of where you're going to, who has to do the caching? Are you, are you going to do the caching that's just- yeah, my, my, take, my take is this, is this is worse than HTTP. <laughs> but that, anyway, that's my, my opinion. Mike. Uh, Mo. I think this is really a question of whether or not head of line blocking is a feature or a problem, and as long as a client is free to use it as a feature, we should let them use it as a feature. If they want head of line blocking, they should say, okay, deliver me all this stuff reliably in order, no gaps, boom. And the latency is, the, is, is implicit in that. You know when you want head of line blocking, you're sacrificing latency. If you don't want that, if it's a problem for you, you ask for everything parallel. You can make 10 fetches for 10 groups, or 100 fetches for 10 groups of 10 objects and get them all in parallel and do your own jitter buffer on the receive side and do your own reordering and do your own opportunistic playback of them um, if, that's, if that's the mode of delivery that you want. So I think supporting both is already there if we just support the, the ordered reliable delivery on one single stream because you're free to fan that out in the 20 fetches if you want. Jana? I'm going to take it back on what Alan said earlier because it made me realize that something I said earlier, I'm going to take it back, which is, no, no, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Alan. The, the, the part I'm taking back is, is, is I agree with you that we should be thinking about the common case, optimize for the common case. Yes, it is possible that you might have four, five, and six in cache and one, two, and three not there. That is not the common case though, because that tells me that that is not a hot object. Or one, two, and three anyways are not hot somehow. Four, five, and six might be hot. And if I want to optimize for the common case, either I'm going to have all of it in cache or none of it in cache. That's the most common way I would see this happen. There are possibilities. Possibilities do not, they're at the tail of my probabilities. Right? Even now, as you were saying, you can have a large object in, 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 in there, but a, a fragment is missing. But that only happens because not everybody is fetching that large object to begin with. So you're already talking about like the one user who woke up one day after a month and fetched an object. So this is, I think, optimizing too hard right now for a case that may not even exist. Um, I would argue that again, going the easier case, where let's say that the it's a single stream, the server sends everything in order. If the server has to wait to fetch, then it waits, fetches, sends everything in order. Is the simplest case. If it becomes a performance problem, <coughs> let's um, litigate it then. So, so the, just a clarification, John, I was saying that in that case, order sends when I default the group order to be ascended in the sense that it will be sent in the yes. okay. Increasing group order and object ID uh, in groups. Victor, and I'm going to close the queue soon, so join soon mm -hmm. if you want to join. One thing I want to comment is, is one thing I like about old proposal, which is a strict improvement over status quo of subscribe, is that one stream can only result in one stream for fetch. 
uh, and uh, so that is very good because uh, so, so that means uh, there is no situation. Yeah, so there is not just DOS, but there is no situation where like I have to open more and more stuff and like reconcile it and really. Uh, and the reason this is good is that in some, so we can always have very complex interactions with caches, but we can also, as the, the common case is like everything is either there or not there. The fallback is always we can fall back from fetch, like doing this merger of like requests upstream and cache to just take the fetch, send it to upstream, pipe everything upstream, and since it's one to one stream, we have end to end flow, uh, flow control from quick. Uh, and maybe objects that are passing through will put them back into cache so that this will work out better. And uh, I, I think this is a, a very nice property. Uh, and I, I, I Fundamentally, I think one of those, uh, I, I think that's why I like wrenches is that uh, uh, ranges are easy for the upstream because the upstream knows the state of everything. Uh, and ranges are, can be complicated for the relays, but only if the relays choose to do something complex with caches. Otherwise, relays can always proxy to upstream. All right, I'm going to close the queue. And that means Mike gets the last word. Question I was going to raise, which <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Last part. Let's go. Yes, we can go to break early. Thanks for the question. Mike. All right. You're not going to answer because it's the last word. No one has to go back. Right. I, uh, this is probably not worth reading. Okay. <laughs> I respect your restraint. Um, all right. So we, we, we've uh, talked about the for like 15 you. minutes. <laughs> I recall that the original state of this was that we were like in kind of in a potentially a rough consensus in favor of of having the single stream. Yes. Um, uh, I don't know, like, has, are your, are your so, fears assuaged? I mean, if you, if you want the server to introduce head of line blocking, it's like whatever. Well, let's That's assume what this feature is, right? Yeah. Let's assume you could solve your subgroup ID problem and we added a subgroup, optional subgroup ID into group the ID fetch API, yeah. then it sort of merges yours in. You can still have your client request them that way. Does that help at all? I mean, some group part important. I mean, I guess that, that's to Mo's point. It's just like, is, head, is headline blocking a feature or a bug? And if, if, I, it, if it's a feature you don't get, you don't pay for it if you don't use it. I think it. On, on the application side, it's very easy to have a few streams and just read from the one in order, you know, um, versus making it do it on the server side. Now the server can't send data until it had populated it. So, so just as, so, uh, so so I, I want head of line blocking to be done in the client, is what I'm saying. So, okay, so yeah. let me propose something. That maybe this is about what you were going to say, but this is what this, like, I think I'm guessing most people would agree to this, which is like a fetch returns on a single stream, but we add into the filters for a fetch that you can provide a subgroup ID as part of the query for it. So it's only going to return you that subgroup ID. And the subgroup ID discovery will be discovered through catalog or something else like that. Yeah, right. So subgroup. We do. We do. Uh, that's that's another. I mean, what discussion. I heard from group ID works too. Was there anything I proposed? But I am. I think what Luke is probably sad. Sounded like you were sad that you have to write a relay that does the head of line block. Like basically, the well, so it's just pipeline. Like I, it just feels weird that you're not using the network. So um, that's what feels. That's not okay. for you. So meaning I, that that particular I, user. I, I, I do want to. So like, it, that just will just take longer. Is the subgroup bit actually important to you? Or you just want to break a. Bit? No, a subgroup. I just want to stream. That's okay, got it. Yeah. All right. Good. I think that okay. let's eliminate a lot of. Yeah, no, no, no. One, so, one stream, yeah. I mean, I think I think the headline broccoli thing. I, I I think Mo really was on this. Like, I I do think that if, if we take the the proposal that there is a rough consensus for now, uh, which is that it goes on one stream, then essentially it is up to the client where the buffering will happen. Right. The client can have lots of little fetches, in which case it will do all the buffering because it's going to get all these things on different streams as they arrive. If it asks for one giant fetch, then it's offloading all that to the to the center. Now, like whether that's if we're okay, I, I, I have to figure out group ID gaps, for example, and stuff like that will make it very hard because it's always an upstream fetch because the relay doesn't know if there's a gap if it blocks. 
Yeah, the I mean, client yeah, might yeah, so know, there's, right? there's, The client there's, might know that every thousand. I think, I think everyone paid. agrees that there will be cases where there, whether it's the uh, uh, like the usual case or not, yeah. who knows? But there will certainly be head of line blocking, uh, you know, delays as you fetch stuff, et cetera, because you're trying to deliver everything in order. So I, 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 I would put the rather than saying is there head of line blocking or not, I would pose the question that way: Is it okay for the client to dictate server you're going to buffer stuff for me? Um, well, I yes. Can I make a point? The, okay. yeah. To write yeah. stuff into the cache, the server has to. Right. It's got it's got all these yeah. subgroups yeah. covered, yeah. but it's going to have to write it into a cache, and we're essentially serving out of cache any fetch. Yes. So by the time it's gone into the cache, we've lost the subgroup. Doesn't matter how it got there; it's there, and I serve it out of the cache. Yes. Yeah. I, I think you're at the point where it's coming in and I'm going out, but I think that's the. So maybe that's a that's distinction. The live it case. sounds like the subgroup or the stream mapping is lost as soon as fetch. Like for, the yeah. for, real, yeah. for yeah. future yeah. stuff, you know the stream mapping. For old stuff, you have no idea what the stream mapping was. Yeah. It's it's yeah. now gone. It's not you're, exactly gone. Yeah. If someone subscribed, no, you're right. No, it's gone. Yeah, Unless it's gone. Unless we preserve it in the cache, and, 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 it's and, and, gone. He's right. Uh, uh, it, 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 if, 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 if subscribe truly does end at, at, if you cannot subscribe for the past at all, that is correct. Um, if if you could subscribe a little bit, then uh, subscribes do respect subgroups. Yeah, so you would have to. What's the, again, subgroups. Yes. Going back, are useful in the con in the, in the world of subscribe? Are they useful as a construct in the world of fetch? No. I think then they why are do you care about them? I think they are for layers. Like SPC because if you could subscribe for something in the past, you need to know. Fetch. Right? I'm talking about fetch. I want to fetch a the base layer and not the enhancement layer or something like that. Like, like object can you not fetch the base layer? Like I don't understand. Uh, no, that's that's I'm... object. You're talking about objects here, not subgroups, right? Subgroup, subgroup is, is a layer, effectively. Could there there be, you align the your object with subgroups? It's like the base layer is one. Could there be a filter for a yeah, subgroup? No, I mean, yeah, that's. I, I mean, with like, like, yeah. Objects. it's perfectly reasonable to but say. You know what objects are? I, I, I want to. Okay, I want to fetch yeah. with just group, just subgroup, just layer one. Yeah, exactly. Just layer one will be great. One conversation at a time, people. Okay, I'm going to go down this way. Mo, Victor. So I think in the canonical object, which I assumed is what the relays are actually yeah. going to store in their cache, in the canonical object, we have all of this stuff, right? We we even had the forwarding mode at one point. I don't know if it's still there. It's still there. So, so, so you, you, have, you have everything in the canonical object, including the subgroup ID. <laughs> yeah. So the, the relays do have the subgroup ID, and we can't eliminate any of that information because once we ever have end-to-end -end encryption secure objects, the entire header has to be authenticated and so you can't change or drop any part of anything the payload or the header so we're going to have all this data somewhere sitting in some somebody's cache and you can resurrect the exact way it was sent if you want to i don't see that there's a need to resurrect it like that but you can if you want to republish well, it. well will is saying you would remove that information you would not cache based on subgroup id it, it has to be there it, well, so he's all giving us the same header right? so either it, i strip it out you, you don't you don't need to index on it but it's there when you yeah. index into the thing it's there in the thing that you indexed right. okay yeah, let, let, cache let's close because we have eight minutes till our break so let's close the queue and i was just going victor mo and then colin sue off no, 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 was no, in there. sorry john Mo just talked. Victor, John, and who else is Suhas? No, no, I Colin, just basically Colin. go down the row. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, did you have something to say? I, That's the mic. I was going to really ask the word. question and I defer late. It takes up 10 minutes closer to break. Go ahead and ask your question since you have been defending. Okay, so my question is basically if we're, if we're going to order everything, uh, and it's kind of like what, what can a subscriber ask a relay to do? Uh, if the subscriber issues a fetch with a very large range, for example, for a all day cricket match. Mm -hmm. And it says, I would like from one until, you know, one million, one million, all the groups, and they have to come in order. The likely case is that because of subscribers previously, the LRU is going to evict the head. Yep. And you're going to have the tail sitting there, and you're going to have to cash fill the head before you can service this fetch request that's come in. And so is there a is there a possibility there where you're going to overwhelm the capability of that host because it is gonna to have to you know call this or is it gonna evict the tail? Are you like evict from the LRU if there's an active fetch for an object in the range. Let's not do cache design. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah uh, this is a cache design issue very much. Uh, I, I don't understand where the assumption that we do not put subgroup ID in fetch object headers came from. 
I don't melted. think anyone said that. What I think they were trying to say is that we don't index. You out never cash, serve right? if the way their proposal goes right now, because you fetch always goes in one stream. Those IDs are not used to construct quick streams anymore. Well, yes, they're not. Big, yeah, because when you read them from cache, they're, they're not used for the streams. Yeah, you, you can still retain that information if you need it to know like which layer you are. And if you there is nothing else preventing to like put you a filter on a fetch. It's just one fetch results in one stream that is block control. Uh, I was going to about making doing work for uh, making the relay to work, uh, as I pointed out. Uh, in a lot of cases, there is no work, and you just proxy things to the upstream, and that is fine. And that is how HTTP mostly works, except for some cases when we catch things. Yeah. Um, Jonathan? I'll just say that caching of days, a good match to you again. A cricket match for a day is nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, so no, no, I'm not, I'm not handing the token yet. I just want to say that you're in the queue before it closes. Okay, the queue. now I'm going to close the queue. Um, the uh, the thing I wanted to say is that if subgroups are a thing that we really want to have as an identifier somewhere between groups and objects, then it should just be used as an identifier to be present in various places and so on and so forth. Um, I want to be clear again that. <clears throat> The cases that we talk about are not the common cases. I can always, for any protocol, I can come up with an attack. That is the reason there's a whole industry of DDoS. I mean, the DDoS industry thrives because TCP, HTTP2, and HTTP3 will all have attack vectors because there are common cases, there are cases which are uncommon, and therefore the code isn't optimized for. We all cut these corners in our implementations every single day. And we're going to continue doing it. But I want to be clear that the the, the that all the cases that we talk about, as long as we have a way to fall back, I want to be able to say we'll always have fetch. Basically, you know, if we can fall back to fetch and keep it simple and keep it clear, it may not have to be perfectly performant, but that's okay. It's a it's a thing that you fall back to because it works and it works simply and in a predictable way. I think that has a lot of power. I don't want us to ignore that. If you make fetch fetch extremely complicated, then you end up having these problems where oh, fetch is. Now, this complex abstraction, subscribe is this complex abstraction, and then there's overlaps, and nobody understands how to use either one effectively. So I think, again, that being able to deliver in order is fine. If one, if there's gaps, you just wait. This happens today. Cache management is not a problem. We manage caches with large objects all the time, and uh, you can deliver them in order. The server does not have a problem. Nobody wants head of line blocking. People want ordering. Ordering is what results in head offline blocking, which is not a good thing. But I just want to be clear that you know the, the language that Vinny says, if you want head offline blocking, I don't think anybody wants that. Um, <laughs> head offline blocking Colin, is not a feature. Ordering yeah, is exactly. a feature. <laughs> Colin? Um, okay. I, I, I really favor the, the sort of merging this down to one stream at the protocol level, but I still think that that allows the application to do as many fetches as it wants. It can do yeah. a fetch for each yes. group and all these things. And I would be in favor of, I mean, I think that Luke raises the case of like, look, I want the base layer and please give me the base layer before you give me the enhancement layer. It's totally reasonable. Um, and so that, the, but I think that the solution <coughs> to that is to add into our filter queries um, the subgroup ID as one of the things you can ask for in, when, when you're filtering things, right? Okay, Philip. Yeah, I just want to flag when you were talking about the uh, caching and so on. It strikes me that that's uh, the reason that you want to keep the fetch separate from subscribe, because when you're subscribing, you're going through this net one network of relays that are caching. When you're fetching half an hour before, you could be on. To, you could be ending up being served by a completely different server. You know, because the place where you put the stuff that was 30 minutes ago could well be different. And so that's the reason that you want to keep them separate. Now, obviously, when you're talking about 30 seconds in the past, it kind of like becomes fuzzy. <laughs> Certainly, if we're going two hours before and you've got a thousand people on this stream, it's going to be a different, probably different hardware. Is that it? Do we drain uh, the queue? Uh, yes. So um, I, now we spent a half hour on this. Um, 
I, I think we're kind of in the same boat, um, which is that I think we have a, a, like a rough majority for, for, I, for doing the one stream. And like, I, is there a use, like, so given that we can, you can decompose a fetch into like any number of fetches. This means you have to implement server side merging of streams. That's really, the, it's not a big deal. Yeah. I mean, okay. I, th I think we're in a place where people are, have an idea of the solution they want to see. Yep. We'll, if that's the solution we will right. look at in the PR. And then as with any decision that we make, if people implement it and like, everyone's like, this is horrible. We, we made the wrong call. Like it's, you know, it's not. I think group ID gaps need to be addressed though, if the server is going to merge stuff. I think we need, we didn't talk about group ID gaps. Group ID gaps did not make it into our list of things we need to talk about. If it, if it <laughs> subscribes and it has like one and 10 in the cache yeah. and somebody says fetch and it's yeah. like, I don't know if okay. five exists. This may be a topic for yeah. the break. But yes, uh, okay. To help look at Luke's, it has to deliver in order. Remarkably, Luke in the break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, my, my slide uh, just for the notes, do we have a conclusion to record? Yes. So, okay, we're gonna. The conclusion is that the the uh, that each fetch is going to result in a response on a single stream, and fetches can span groups. Yeah. Which is because I mean, technically, what the first thing I said is true of yours as well, even though. Uh, so the fetches can span groups, and the response will be on a single stream. Okay, so that's where, now we got through the first. And that, is, that will be in the PR, and so nothing is ever settled. But uh, you know, that's that's I think our path <laughs> forward. Okay, take a break. Uh, yes. Uh, so we're we're going to resume at three thirty. That's fifteen minutes from now. For those of you who can't do uh, time zone math, <laughs> <laughs> you can't manage time. Oh wait, that's all of you. <laughs> no, time zone math, like I don't know, someone's like three thirty. an hour and a half from now. No. <laughs> Colin, I thought you were actually going to come kill me. <laughs> you stayed the comments like, you didn't just, you didn't, no, you didn't just say that. Sorry. So, okay. <laughs> uh, no, no fist fights in my, you get fist fights, put your man on the deck. Are other forms of fights allowed? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, no, no. I just said, <laughs> you get my, I, I was, when I made the quip about in the future. <laughs> yeah, no, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like, so we're in the middle of this thing, and I was like, I was just, it like just sort of exploded my head for a sec. I know, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's violent. Is that yeah, to your point about being able to serve the whole thing. Yes, yes. Uh, basically, what I was trying to do, and I think you got exactly that, is like, think of the uh, pathological I mean, for the issue. Like, what's the worst that's thing? That's thing? That's like, you have a really it's long, 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 long thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, true. But you do, actually, it's fine. All right, see you then. Ultimately, I think There's that's a lot of ways to <laughs> thing. Like, I think what's happening in the scene of the game. Which I guess it's a bit. You want to do it? You will not have to take off the design like to be around tomorrow. Uh, the 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 tomorrow. And then go oh, with the main uh, control. Uh, leftover spawn today. Leftover. If you have the course, you the oxygen stuff. Then you quit, then you quit the little more bills for me. as you start to expand it. And yes, it may happen that you go two years down the line or six years down the line, you go. All right. I'll see you in the whole thing. It's possible. But it's unlikely if you start with smaller, very, very clear pieces of them. It's so, easier if you start with a bunch of complicated pieces. Then you end up looking at the whole thing and going, this looks ridiculous. Uh, but yeah. I don't think that. So uh, rather than trying to like exhaustively cover all the corner cases as you go, <laughs> right. you just say, you can't. You this is the feature. That's the reason that these are. Yeah. We, we can say that, okay, by December 2024, we want to complete it. It's currently not exists everything, but we can see that we covered all the problems that are absolutely crucial. It's not hard to get the time to do it. There's a continuous line. I'll talk to you this time. Then you address the tape. You don't need to talk about it. 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 You can at least build without it right now. So let's just do it. Alan, does it seem that you have to do that? The way of doing things like this, we punch it like on things that we didn't want. 
to address right away and wasn't up to the big question. Parking lot for the entire group? Yes, please. Parking lot and we do. What would we use that? Here. Uh, what what is your suggestion for parking lot? Here? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Is there something is there one of the features on there? You're like no, it, right? I think it's become clear, right? Everybody's joint forces on the joint forces. Everybody's on the single stream, let's keep it simple thing. But I'm saying that that kind of decision, if you want to say, oh, how, how do you support this particular oddball client that comes up and like and ask for things? If, you, if not enough people are raising their hands, if you say this is an issue that we should come You mean for now. the remaining issues? Like would, yes. if, if, if there were if only four people voted? I um, won't make it a room wide discussion because everybody will then have an opinion. Mm -hmm. okay. only four people who care about Unfortunately, we didn't write down which ones, like, we only had four people. I know, I know. We can ask again, right? And it's fine. I think that if we, if we, like, I think that this group is constantly leaning towards solving for all of the possible cases. But not everybody cares about all the possible cases. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying that I'm saying that I'm saying parking lot is a really powerful tool to have. File an issue, target parking lot, and leave it there until we get to the parking lot. Right? And and it allows us to focus on building the most important things that everybody wants to do. And we end up removing the interrupts much faster because we get to simple solutions to the interrupt and say that the simple solution will happen now. The more complicated and tricky and I'm looking forward things to, are gonna be parking lot. Well, when we get through this, like I have a real aim, but like yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, I once tried to think about like, my really doesn't even cache. I was like, what do I do if they're really like, not just like random parameters on my subscribe? Or if I had a cache, what do I do? And I'm like, I've tried like a few times and I can't write the logic for it. It's like, I don't know what to do. Or it's like, unsubscribe, put an entry in your forwarding table, you're like, I got this. Right? But that's, <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, ultimately, we are, we are, we are like, we are doing the painting the bike shed, not quite painting the bike shed thing because we don't have like the large problem to solve. But really, what we're trying to do is like finish every little bit before you move on to like moving the bigger pieces. Yeah, let's get the bigger pieces in place, and maybe that's enough. By that time, you know, people there'll be like four people left in the room. It's like we're doing with multi-platform. And it's a library link to the that we're going to scope it down to just connection migration. Yeah. Multipath can be done later. That was, that was a big yeah. thing. All right, well, send me Slack message in the rest of the afternoon. I think of your talent kicks. Do you want to do you my buddy? The way to do it is to start by just asking how many people care about it. What do you think we should do? Hold on a second. I'll answer that question. I haven't made it back. I have to search out of my bike show. Oh, what happened? Wrong slides. I was on the next slide. Killed all my windows. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yes. I'd like to have a baseline of what that would like. <laughs> that will not be with slow. <laughs> so I built I built this chain. Like, no, I built I built this. It's, it's in my backyard. Just, okay, I gotta hurry up. I think that's what we're gonna do after the break. So, so, yeah. uh, <laughs> do I respond to the Airbnb yeah. host about the question she sent? Oh I didn't see what oh, oh, okay. Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Or you can walk up with it. I'll walk with you. A large object. Every time I travel, especially to the West Coast, I'm I'm zombie. I don't know how you guys do. Yeah, and they have like. No, I try not too much. 
I mean, I think it makes me more tired too. Just like, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not full. It's just like paying for something that I'm not doing right now. So those things are actually just fun. Just I take a lot of breaks during the day. I take breaks like literally every 10 minutes. I, don't, I, have, I think I have ADHD. It's very I think a lot of people have to, a lot of people in there do. It's like, kind of a thing that affects a lot of them. Yeah, it's a lot of people. So yeah, it's, it's, it's super hard for me to stay focused. But you know, this long. Either one of you guys get hit with the iPhone issue when you're traveling? No, uh, Cisco uh, iPhone. They, oh. Cisco bricked our iPhones from <laughs> corporate access. I, I did not. We I, since they started moving, I'm used to yeah. dual. Yeah. Of course, I'm not in the outlook anymore. I'm carrying two laptops. No, but phone. You don't have mobile access on your phone? No. For like four years now. Really? Yeah, I did the same thing. I just gave up on access. I mean, I have the Duo as an authenticator on my phone for logging so you in. Do you watch your laptop every time you check email? Yep. Yes. And, and every time, time you whip out your your phone and you're just like, oh, yeah, checking your email, I'm jealous. <laughs> so whenever you see the team, whenever we move to the teams, the yeah. whole point was not to catch the team. So most of the conversation no, I have, I check every night once. That's it. Well, I mean, I'm in the weird boat that teams even requires me now to be managed. That if that goes, that will be really bad. Probably just telling that they, that might require dual access. And that makes no sense. Like if they need, if, if I need duo help to log on to Teams, Teams. I do. Yeah, I know you do. Why, yeah. why, why but is like that? if they do that to everyone, I remember some group that requires it. Yeah. If they do that to everyone, <laughs> I'm moving the disk. I don't know what I'm doing. It's not everyone. It's because he gave me the name of the group that I was in. It was like the why can't they Adam move from the group? I've never. I've never been an AD, you know, financial creator for anything. I don't mess with Microsoft anything. I don't even know how I got into the like group. If you're in the special Why group, you just kicked out of this? I asked them. I said, just remove it from the group. They said, we don't, we, we can't do that. So or you should call Chuck. Well, how, <laughs> who put me in the group? I, I don't manage anything. So come who's the ID head for Cisco? You should message them. My, my guess is that it's, it's like from 20 years ago when I used to manage the phone teams, like we, we, we published the images. So because we published images, we had to have two users, you know, with the private key, both yep. consenting at the same time, going log into some server and turn and turn the, you know, release key signing on. We can publish the code yeah. signing. We code signing all the images. It's probably something lingering. I'm shocked that that system is even still used. And I'm shocked that they haven't aged me out. Yeah, that's the part that's truly shocking. That should be, you know, that should be job. Yeah. Six months at least. What's the we go through? Yeah. Yes, uh, other companies, and, and they even registered their external release. For water is for it's not giving it. Oh, you can make sure you're in the hard work. Yeah. And so the world. That place to get it. That's straight down the way. It's not a special privilege. It's not even a media. It's not even a media. You keep saying it's an agnostic I guess the. It's really a binary, right? Normally, I mean, normally. Right. I want to sell it to people internally. Yeah. 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 Like, I was like, oh, like I think there was one. Uh, one uh, it, it, you should go talk to media. It was like a wisdom. Like, yeah, so even that was like almost a mile. And now, even that, that was like four thirds. Everything in the area was just. Yeah, so you don't get to go to the area. This is called IT manager. That's not really a scenario. It doesn't need traffic. 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 It doesn't need traff
Oops, we've been all over this. Yeah. Here you go. Oh, yeah, like we did there. Yeah. All right. What are we doing next? We're gonna run through this. Tell them what we're doing. That's what we're doing. You wanted to know. So we're like, okay. I'll look straight up. Oh, man. Got a little link down the shoulder right now. Oh, we're doing the first. So it's kind of management skills. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Oh, all of oh, yours. You're here. Oh, oh about one minute. Oh, still. come on. Like, man. Yes. So <laughs> yes, all the I mean, first off, it's I mean, with inflation, things are from all right. I have three thirty, so I'll get again. So, hey, um, Gender Daniel, you want to like wave to people out there and let them know we're starting? All right, uh, Alan and I um talked about it over the break, and uh, we're gonna back the agenda. I think we're making some progress here. Um, we're going to provide a table. So, with the objective being that we can tap someone to go write a PR tonight. Um, so, it doesn't necessarily mean that every single thing on this list has to get involved, but uh, certainly enough to, hopefully, enough of the check boxes will. And the rest of these should be pretty easy to nail down, I think. But we'll see. Okay, so let's, let's move down the list. Uh, all right, so supports a range of groups. I think I think that was rolled into this discussion. Yeah, it's in the above point. So that's done. Right. Support updates. I think we decided that that was a low priority yeah, thing to do on the table. I think we can table at least till later because it, yes. I think because okay. the rate thing might require us to come back and do updates. So let's right. let's okay. pin that one and come back. Yeah, updates okay. are very useful for long running fetches, which we've agreed we can have as soon as long as we have a range. Yeah, but we we agreed that was going to be a low priority. So. Uh, and honestly. If a PR had them or didn't have them, we could fight about it tomorrow. Well, yeah, but there's a very good use case where you want Actually, the update. I, 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 understand, I understand you want them. I, I have a concrete proposal. Why don't we do the control bandwidth delivery bit rate yes. thing first? That's good. Uh, yeah. Not the same. Okay, sure. Before a month. Before. Okay. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Okay. Uh, you want me to keep the queue and stuff? All right. So do all right. So uh, I don't remember where we were on this, but we were discussing a, a, a fixed bandwidth rate. We now have we now have fetches being in single streams, and so therefore, um, at least I think a lot of the the quick vets are like, well, now you don't need anything. <laughs> um, I don't know if anyone else agrees, but um, that's where we're at. So I, do we want to do we want to take another temperature of the room thing or just so the, the question like do we need a parameter to specify a rate in bits in fetch is that the question yes that's yes the question. let's take a temperature on that Raise over, your what, hand. over what window like well let's let's, let's that's, 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 that's where the, that's yeah. the beginning okay that's the beginning of the like, let, let, pulling this thread. let's just yeah. say that there will be some at least one number or maybe multiple numbers to express. How many bits you want over what time window, but you want some parameter to communicate this in the fetch. Okay, are you guys going to clarify the question about the question? No, to answer no, sure. it's it's a four or we're going to vote first and then we're going to talk. Do we want the bit rate? You want to, okay. Well, one, two. Raise your hand if you want a bit rate, rate in, in the fetch. request. Rate in fetch. Rate, a, a bit rate in request subscribe. in fetch request. So one, two, three, four. Four. Is your four bucks? If it's off. Nobody's. Okay. What if you really, okay, so raise your hand if you really don't want that and you want people to use flow control instead? So or something yeah, else. So, so I'll raise my hand. <laughs> I think they're asking the wrong uh, question. They're asking their solution at this point. Okay. Yes. They're asking Agreed. about between these two solutions. And I don't I don't know that. But let's keep going. Well, no, no, Sorry. because look, there will be a PR that contains this or not, right? I mean, so we kind of have to talk about the solution. But, 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 but if, the, if the PR okay. doesn't contain the rate, it still needs to have verbiage about. Well, there's an API going to be ah. surfaced somewhere in mock or quick to do the cool thing, right? 
we're going to say that there's a need for this in the fetch semantics and the fetch API, even if the fetch protocol message, which should be get, not fetch, I doesn't include it. No, sorry, more once again. I interrupted. Keep going with your product. Okay. You think, all right. So if you don't want to see the bits per second in the fetch request message, oh, raise your hand. What's the question? Do you want to see, you don't want to see a bits per second I'm, in the. I'm, I'm going to raise my hand, but I'm going to have a Solomonic proposal to maybe split the baby here. Okay. Wait, 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 let's get a count first. Okay. So, wait, so, don't, a clarification question. If, if you don't care, don't raise, right? If you don't care, don't raise. I, I do care, but, but, but okay. there's a Let's proviso. get the count first. One, two, three, four, five, six, and is there any Seven. Okay. What was the number? Seven, four? Probably eight. Sure. Probably eight, four. four, four, four so, 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 so my, my, my potential split, the difference would be if it's an advisory, if it's a should, yep. uh, or like the 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 climb's like, hey, like I really love this at ten megabits per second, and like if it's a if it's an uncomplicated sender that cannot rate control or whatever, I just drop it on the floor, and then the ground truth is is quick stream flow control. Would, could people live with that? I like that. It doesn't work, does it? No, I, I, I can't I, depend I, on sure. that. Yeah, I I, I, I hate these. Depend on that. I, I hate these things that it's may or may not should. work. Yeah, it can't be a shit. Yeah, I weren't probably... there two rate limits by the way? There's the bandwidth. But then there was the publisher rate. In the proposal, I didn't see that. Will's it, proposal had a publisher rate, which I, which we've talked about as use cases, is really interesting to keep it on thirty frames per second or sixty frames per second, whatever. That's not exactly the same as bandwidth rate limit. Oh, okay. But I think that was Gwendol's extension to my. Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. I think maybe a different way to say what Martin says. Let me see if this goes down any better. Since it's on one stream, quick flow control has to control the rate. Now you can set quick flow control to an infinity if you don't want to, but like it will govern the rate. Sender can't send if they don't have flow control. But if you can, want something that is, you want to set your flow control high and have this, the sender also respect some limit, then you can set a limit. And we can say if you receive a limit, you must send at that rate. Or you must not send faster than that rate. Is there any discussion? I'm just asking if that if people like that any better for the four people who are really want this parameter. Well, it the, the difference is your client doesn't have deterministic control of the rate. If you're a JavaScript client using Web Transport API, you can't adjust. Will said it right. You're relying on. So, on another the first point I want to bring up is the bandwidth rate here is a proxy for media timestamp, actually. Like, we're assuming constant bit rate. Otherwise, this does not do what you want. If you have BBR, then you receive too much data or too little data necessarily. There, there's no, we can no, assume BBR. Okay. Anyway, and, and, and the other thing I want to say is uh, we are making the assumption that max stream data is higher than max data. Because if it's uh, lower than it, if it's not, then, then flow control does not work because you just deadlock every other stream, too. Um, uh, sorry, who's over there? Will, you have more to say or you got it all? No, I don't. Okay, Colin, so I just have Colin. I was just going to say that, like, um, maybe sorry, not John. for a very production video. For most of the types of video we're talking about, it's, it's far from constant bit rate. So. But it doesn't the require case, 30 seconds of VOD is the use case, and you're using the delivery rate to try and get to that 30-second mark. It's no problem. Yeah, it's close enough. I get it. Okay, I've got Jonah, and then uh, I put myself in, and then Will. So, oh, I'm sorry, Victor. How long you been in there? I'll pick you up for John. Okay. So we start talking about rates. Time scales become extremely important. And uh, when you say constant bit rate, right, I'm going. The media so is incredible. Packets aren't constant. being sent out with a with a constant interpacket time, but that's not what you think when you're saying CVR. So I think it's really important that you talk about the right terms here. Um, flow control, even though it is credit based, we chose for it to be credit based. But fundamentally, the mechanism is still the same. It is a control on how much, uh, oh, I got you. how much, how much buffering the client can do, um, and it allows for the client to say, "I can't buffer any more than this. Please don't send me any more data." And the reason the buffer <clears throat> exists and the buffer builds is because the application isn't reading fast enough. So the, the way that the application ends up reducing the read on the on the on the connection is by stopping to read, and then there's a natural pushback. And as soon as it starts to read, 
the uh, sender is able to send more traffic. And that over time, if you look at an average over multiple round of times, you will see an average bit rate that comes out that is going to be roughly whatever it is that you want to accomplish. So again, time scales are really important. Um, don't think about the actual mechanics of it. If you want to achieve a bit rate over a certain time period, you can absolutely do that with um, flow control as long as that time scale is larger than one RTD. In under one RTD, I don't think you can build a mechanism that does anything outside of purely perfect rate control. So I think the problem definition is really important. What time scales do you care about controlling this rate over is really crucial. Do you have a recommendation for what you think the time scale over which the I problem needs to be? I'm looking to the video experts here. Really, I don't want rate control. I want, I'd like it to has to be a gap because you have like iframes of bursts and stuff like that. So it, but, but it but it's more complicated I, too. I, sorry, I, 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 like, I like one one small quick thing to it. I want to be careful that we, we're not trying to build, again, a tool for an abstract arbitrary question. Like, I'm not saying that it's arbitrary, but, but I want to ask, how will the receiver actually figure out that it can only receive at 25 bits per second or whatever it is that it does? Is it an estimate of the bandwidth that it has? Is it the yeah, something else? See the bytes it's received divided by the time it received. Excellent. It, that's, so that's, that is exactly what you can do with flow control as well. You can actually release flow control credits using exactly that equation. Okay, so hold on. Uh, this is so I've got Victor, myself, Will, and Mo. Yeah. And then I'll put Colin in. Okay. I'll Victor. Uh, I don't like this for two reasons. Well, can you specify uh, what this is? The, uh, I don't like the proposal of uh, adding delivery rate. One is uh, it's actually fairly non trivial to implement uh, because every time we have a timer, we don't like that. That's annoying. Uh, uh, and the second one is uh, I really do not understand which problem this is supposed to solve. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I definitely, yeah. Sure. Uh, okay, is it is that the end of your thought? Yeah, I think that's that's a question slash answer. It's I do not understand what this is supposed to solve. Okay. Um, all right. So as an individual, um, first, I, the pro I think the problem we're trying to solve is more about buffers than it is about rates, right? Like, I don't, yes. I don't want the peer to send me more than I can handle, but I may be wrong. Um, but that's sort of how I perceive it. One was about this, like, constant bit rate, and I think maybe Luke mentioned the thing I wanted to say, which is that iframes don't re represent very much media time, but they represent a lot of bandwidth. <laughs> And that the, through the work that we've done with evaluating Scone Pro, we know that like if you're trying to like tap, if, if people who are dropping or like shaping flows to be a particular rate, they actually negatively impact video quality because of this exact problem. So um, it would be really great if we didn't do their job, like do their bad job that we're trying to make them stop doing for them. Um, and then the last one was a question for Will about how the JavaScript web transport flow control works. Does and or maybe Victor knows the answer to this, which is that like if I don't read from a stream it, in JavaScript land, the transport won't release the flow control to the, to the peer, right? So there is a way to control it from JavaScript, yeah. which is if you don't have buffer, don't read. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, Will. Yeah. So I asked for this in my proposal, but. Two, there's two factors that would mitigate that. The first is it's difficult to implement delivery rate on servers. Like at Akamai, it's expensive. It's computationally more expensive to throttle yep. delivery than it is to just send it as fast as you want, which is a problem. The second one is that, <clears throat> at least in my use cases, and to go back to those, this was where you request a lot of content, but you control the rate it's sent to you. That can be substituted. You can solve that use case a different way, which is give me a short amount of content as fast as you can, and I'll just keep asking for it. So I would, I would give up the requirement for delivery rate as long as I can update the range of an existing fetch. And why do I want to update it versus make a new one? Because I want the same stream sending me my data. So I'm just reading from the same stream, and I just want to update what gets fed into the other end of it. And that can give me a sawtooth behavior, but I can also control the delivery rate like that. And for that, I, I would give up the requirement to pace the output. Uh, okay, well, no. Uh, yeah, so apologies to people that heard it over lunch, maybe regurgitation, but um, my my fear of trying to do this in flow control 
is that there's no precedent for doing it in current flow controls like TCP and UDP. People don't close their windows. <laughs> People don't set U limits in their app um, dynamically for what, what they want to have as their app receive rates. So it seems strange to me that we think that we should start doing this now as a general app behavior. You know, just close your windows down if you, if you want something delivered at a smooth rate. Um, so I think this naturally is an application level signal to deliver at some rate. And what is the upstream relay gonna, gonna do? It's gonna close its windows down. It's gonna do like window matching. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna see its, 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 send, it, its remote peers window is closed. So I'm gonna close my receive window towards my upstream relay to get it to, to back off of me too. Um, That's how HTTP proxies work. Okay, but yeah, do, do, do they do do they do it dynamically based on uh, an application preference, or do they do it because they have a four gig buffer and they say four gig is my limit? Yeah, I can answer when it's my turn, or I can answer it now. Four meg. But I mean, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, they tend to be smaller. It's bytes and bytes go out, and if the peer stops, if the guy who requested it stops reading, then you stop reading, and you know these things essentially fill up, fill up. And some people quick in quick do have dynamic flow control where they're like, okay, this peer wants to send faster and I know that they're not trying to DOS me and they can like grow their buffers dynamically. Um, so like this is stuff that happens in quick and since we're fundamentally running over quick, I think we're gonna have to solve some of these problems as well. Like if you set these things too small, the media is gonna go very slow, so. And then doing it at the quick layer also <laughs> introduces this extra chattiness of the mechanics of doing that. You have, you're sending protocol messages to do this and if you wanna do it smoothly, you're gonna do it every frame. So you're sending a protocol message every frame. Just open your windows. It, Not a okay, uh, John, I'll put you in. Uh, Colin. Um, so I was going to try to answer John's question from way back of, um, well, what would be the control, you know, what would be the time frame of if we, if we were, so first of all, I'm not in favor of doing the bit rate because I think it's going to end up with a control loop running at this layer that's interacting poorly with the congestion control loop but running at a different layer. <laughs> but if we do do this, I think we, for the video cases, we need to pick a time scale that was, you know, we need to be like a leaky buffer in a 10 sort of 10 second time scale or something like that. Like, like we're talking fairly long time scales on this. Um, and we'd have to define it or else all the implementations would be completely useless because they'd all do different things. And it would be, we wouldn't rely on it be a mess. And whatever we define will be good for one application, but not other applications. Um, and so I, I, you know, this, all of this just makes me lean away from this if we can. So, when Will says, like, hey, if I had an update, I probably wouldn't need this, I'm like, wow, that's really convincing for me to go add update. I, like, I, I think I lean towards that being a better solution. Is, let's go. Like, if we think we can avoid this by adding update, um, then I would be all in favor of that. <laughs> okay. Because this sounds the more we I mean, you. you said it the very first. You're like, this is just the beginning of the complexity. The more you pull on this thread, the more complicated it gets. I agree with that. Okay. Um, so you ask? Yep, uh, I, I think I, I did propose this in the slide deck, and I, I feel that was when I proposed, I was not sure if it really solves the problem, but after seeing the discussion, it's made me clear it is not solve the problem that I uh, intended it to be. Uh, with what we have is flow control, and I agree with Colin that having multiple congestion control, multiple loops of control just complicates the application on the <laughs> server side, which is not needed. Um, I would be in favor of not supporting this one and definitely open to consider. Uh, okay, I had myself in the queue and as an individual, I mean, just to move your point about like sending additional messages for flow control, they're all implicit basically in the way all the quick stacks work. Like once your application reads data out of the transport is like when like that will, pretend, I mean, different stacks work differently, but that will eventually become a trigger for the quick stack to release that flow control to the peer. And so, and that'll like- Most stacks I've seen it's half. It's when you, well, when you deplete half, you'll double it. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, there, it's different per stack, but yeah, I mean, that's that's not uncommon to like see that particular thing. I mean, yes, you got to set your buffers right. Like these things are all in user space; they're all tunable. Most of the implementations are open source until the Linux kernel patch lands, and everybody starts using the Linux kernel. So we get user space. That'll be the day. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, but anyway, the day I was mean, yesterday. I mean, I'm also happy to. Say, I'm also happy to say that. Uh, you know, like update will, if you want to do with a range and then update the end of your range, I view that as like kind of isomorphic with flow control. Maybe it's a little bit better, gives the app more control. I'm fine with it too. I probably not want to, I probably make it personally make a bigger range and control with flow control, but vote for it. Uh, and next is John. 
Yes, uh, ossification is a real thing, right? So yeah. if it <coughs> does happen, then we have to paper over it and figure out what we do next. But I don't think we are at that point yet. Um, but quick, for sure. And we don't have all the implementers in the room here, but we do have most of the implementers in the room in the IET, for example. And if there are requirements that we have, often we should tell them and they will go build it because MOQ is going to be an important user application that sits on top of that's it. What I want to say is back to the, the 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 thing I was saying earlier. I think we should optimize for the common case here again. Let's go with what we have, and we try to we see if it doesn't work, right? I mean, this is basically when you're talking about being able to change the rate periodically and so on. I, I my 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 I, I could be wrong about this, but my sense is that you're understanding <coughs> how easy it is to actually estimate the correct rate at the receiver to begin. With. And to then turn that into something that actually the server can combine with various things and productively act on. It's possible that in cases you'll be able to show that it, it does well, but in the general case, I find it to be extremely. I don't have a. I, I don't see it as compelling yet, um, and I I would argue that my instinct are that it's never going to be compelling. But I I. No, my interest of moving forward, all I want to say is we should I think get. Uh, Fund on this question because it is ultimately an optimization. Punt on it entirely, like don't make it, like don't add anything. Flow control exists. Flow control, you can't get around it. It's there. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying. Okay. Uh, I'm going to close the queue in a minute. So get in if you want. Victor, I've got you right Christian, now. Christian, you're up. You're muted. Okay. First, I mean, uh, it's very clear that flow control is not what you want to use to enforce 40 packets per second. I mean, that's not the purpose at all. We we have the general idea that fetch is like HTTP get. We are, you are getting all data, and basically the network will send it to you as fast as you can receive it. Th that that should be the, the model. Now, because all the all the frames have been composed, etc., and so you can. The server is reading that from this. The server is reading that from another server. The server is reading that from memory doesn't matter, it's as fast as the server can do it. If the client wants to receive fewer data than that, then it should ask for fewer data, either by asking for a smaller range in the fetch or by uh, some kind of update mechanism if we are afraid of doing that too often. Luke, okay. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll Closing the queue. As somebody who's implementing pacing in quick, uh, it's really hard. Too frankly, um, it's going to hurt congestion controllers because if you have the application pacing that takes priority over the like you know BBR's pacing, it's just going to BBR is going to be app limited now and stuff like that. Um, so I think we I, I I do like the sawtooth idea like basically HLS dash you just request a group it bursts it at line speed. The only caveat is if it's huge groups and I think flow control could be like the saving grace for huge <coughs> groups that you can't burst. Um, but like even just wake up some like mobile phones and stuff like that. Like you really want to just burst data if you can. You don't want to trickle data if you can help it. And I same for flow control. Like I don't want to free up tiny amounts of flow control for each frame. I want to burst stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I just do like HLS dash. Like do a fetch fetch update um, and groups in the future. Okay, Mike Victor Mo. Uh, yeah, I have come around. I think. We probably want to not have an explicit uh, rate uh, parameter here. Uh, <laughs> control and that's awesome, Victor. Uh, yeah, to from what I hear is that you really don't want this kind of rate adaptation on low timer granularity that is mm -hmm. order of milliseconds because in that case you have iframes and it just works really poorly and if you have a high level of granularity flow control works perfectly because, um, unless your buffers are like infinitely huge okay no last one uh, I'm not gonna die on the hill I'll be in the rough uh, but I, I I don't see how this is going to work very well. And if it, if it ever works at all, it's horrible app complexity. Imagine just your basic use case. 
I want to download a video. Uh, I, want, I want to stream a video to me. I mean, there's going to be an audio track. And, and if I just say, you know, fetch this and this, same group numbers, I'm going to get like the entire hour of audio in the first three seconds. And then in the, in, in the video is going to be, is going to be, the buffers are going to be the same size, right? I'm not going to set a different stream buffer. And so I'm going to get the default stream buffer for each stream Get and the audio is going to completely fill it, right? So in the basic use case, it just doesn't work. Unless you do a bunch of other mechanics, you find out, oh, there's a web transport API to set a stream, uh, max stream uh, data limit. Oh, okay, let me hit that, and I'll, I'll reduce my audio buffer to that. So I don't get an hour worth of audio for my first two seconds of video. So I think when we actually practice doing this, we're going to realize that this is a, a horrible mechanism for most use cases. And no other app does this. No other app relies on flow control for basic application rate delivery. Flow control is for my buffer to not overrun. I can't consume it. The app absolutely can consume it. It doesn't want to render it like that. It doesn't want to actually consume it and render. It can create a four gig buffer and read it all. There's not a limit in the app. It's the, it's the, it's the intended playback of the app that it doesn't want the data to come in at that rate. Uh, so can I, Ignoring flow control for a second, but do you think sending fetch updates from the app is sufficient? Which is sort of, I think, to the point of how it works today. Like so H the, that's how HLS avoids this problem today. Fetch update, you mean you change your object ranges? Yeah, yeah. constantly. Per, per, per that is more yeah. range than burst. But you, by, request, by controlling the ranges of how much range you request and when you request them, you can effectively control the incoming rate. So audio, you would request... Yeah, examples. if you request like on a second on a second boundary, the audio and the video synchronized every second, you do a. And then you're like, fetch, I want the next group. Fetch update, fetch update, you could fetch do update. Every twenty seconds. I could live with it. That's a much easier semantic than digging into the web transport yeah, max okay. stream data okay. APIs. I think, okay. I think. I think we. Where I think it sounds like we have a consensus in the room. Where like, okay, you can't get rid of flow control. It's there. If you don't want it to do anything for you, send it to a bazillion. Good luck, and use fetch update to control things. I can look okay, <laughs> which right. means that updates are now. Looks like that we need updates. We just yes. answered that question. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, so I, close, close I have one. Okay, so just, just a minute. Wait, what? I, I, do I got a yeah. question for the chairs? It, it, yeah. Are you calling rough consensus on the two things I just typed in? Hold on. But, uh, uh, well, sorry. I'm pending Victor's comment. Victor's going to die on the hill. Okay. No, no uh, I, I object to that notion with no discussed updates. Yeah. In okay. Fact, I. Uh, I have a point on updates because I just said we needed them, but I mean, thinking about it, I, I don't think we need it even for the use case that I just spoke about. Yeah. Um, oh, well, boy. I, will okay. go, I have alternative yeah. proposal. Okay, so no, we're not in consensus apparently <laughs> at all. So <laughs> we, I hit delete. Good. Thank you. <laughs> My mistake. Please continue. I unboarded it. Uh, okay. we or, were, well, it sounds like you, your main yeah, point was sorry. to raise the objection, which is noted. I'm you. looking through my use cases, right? And I, I was using updates in two places. One is to do the adaptive change the rate control, which we don't need anymore. Yep. We said we can just make a series of race requests. My other point was I wanted, I, wanted to be able, I wanted to have a single stream I'm reading and change the data going into it. But at the end of the day, it's not that necessary. By, by not having long-running fetches, I don't need to update them. I just cancel them and make another one. And really, at the end of the day, a stream comes in and I can read it. I know it's coming in because I asked for it. So I don't think the simplicity that I, I thought I was getting is actually that real. So we could simplify things by just saying we can't update it. If you make a long range, you can cancel it and make a different range. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Starting the queue again. Uh, Colin, and Luke, <laughs> do you guys know who is first? I don't care. No, All right, Luke, go. go quickly. So first, fetch yeah, update uh, useful exactly. for changing the priority. Like if you had made a request, it's outstanding, and you decided this is now low quality, you know, it's not important anymore. They pinned a new thing. Uh, number two, though, if we do have fetch update, don't let the start group go backwards. I think, yeah. It has to go forwards, especially with yeah. if you if you decided we must deliver in order, you cannot grow the range in the backwards direction. Okay. So, I'm sorry, I missed the very you said we you feel we do need an update to handle priority updates? Priority, yeah. Because <coughs> you might have you have an outstanding fetch and you have to be priority and Okay. It's like when, H3 priorities has When it update. comes back, one second, I'll get to you, but when it gets back around to you, Victor, I want you to tell me if 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 we fetch priority update is as egregious for you as plain fetch update. But, but oh wait, I don't even have Suez. I have and then, okay, Colin and then Victor and then I'll put you in Suez. Oh, okay. Is it a scribe? No. Okay. Colin, so, so totally agree with Luca. We can't go backwards if we do allow updates. By the way, but, subscribe update yeah. already has that restriction. Yeah, I think exactly. Yeah, yeah. Same, same thing. But I mean, I, it seems to me that 
and maybe I'll change my mind to hear more people speak, but that we don't need updates now from a simplicity point of view. You can just issue, you know, make shorter fetches and issue a new fetch. And if it turns out that's too inefficient for some reason, we can add updates later. So I tend to be like, okay. let's not add updates until we, from a simplicity point of view, until it turns out we actually need them. Um, but maybe I'm going to change my mind based on whatever said next. Did you have, what about priority updates? Does that, does that impact your thinking? Uh, I still feel like a priority update would be so rare that I could just cancel the request and redo it. Okay. But maybe some, maybe somebody convinced me I'm maybe on it's the an wrong option page there. Okay. I, I don't know. It's it's, it's making it, me think. Let's request, put it that way. Right? If you're downloading like okay. ten minutes of data, uh, just cancel it. yeah. We have to there is, group. You can make the second fetch on the same stream. Today you make the fetches on the control. We decided for now you're making the fetches on the control oh, stream. Yeah. So you will. <laughs> okay, that's that's a. I guess that's a good point, but like. In that case, I, I don't think I particularly object to like extending a fetch, even though it's kind of annoying and racy. Like the, the thing I'm afraid is like fetch has the semantics where something happens where you hit the live edge. Uh, and if you like mess with a state machine while you're uh, You can always have a fin cross. Yeah, you updated it, but it already update. ended before you get there. Right? Yeah, I think the race is not. Yeah, there. Well, yeah. Okay. Do you want to if I, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of having update. Uh, I'll go back to keep it simple. Pro proposal start with fetch, and if the use cases you need, we'll get back to it. The way to like the way we resolved um, having multiple small fetches would help with the delivery rate. We can you can also cancel and uh, continue the fetch if we need to change the priorities, and if that. Because really hard, we can introduce update. But right now, I'd be okay with not having update. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, uh, that was just Daniel. Uh, so we're generally not a huge fan of the idea of fetch That's update. Um, but I had a question also to Luke's point of the um, you said you can't extend the start backward. What do we do if we do the descending group order, and then you do fetch updates? That, that inverts the logic of not being able to do that. It is yeah. in the end, but now you can go to That's however far back you feel. That's a good point, and we should Yeah. Let's can, can tell the note taker to write that down so we don't forget <laughs> about it. <laughs> uh, OK, uh, Luke. Yeah, I think thinking about more, I think we just get rid of fetch update and subscribe update. Um, it's also racy. Like, you can issue a fetch update, and the fin already arrived or something. And now you yeah. have to have, like, rollback logic. Like, my update failed, so I needed to issue a new fetch. Honestly, like, it's, it's, I'm not, nobody's going to implement updates. Same with H3 priority updates. It's just like, it's there. It's still updating. It's technically correct, but nobody's going to do it. Technically, we do that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, to grade our app, the super performance is crazy. No, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five is the combination. I'm like, oh, Victor, you want to say one more thing? Uh, I think for, for, for subscribe updates, there are like practical cases in like ABR switchover. You do want to like, with mess with priority. That's for like ending. It's like ending. A it's like ending it, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, a, and yeah. we want to keep that. You could do yeah. that with fetch too. Maybe a fetch end instead of fetch update. Let's just cancel. Okay, what about end, oh, cancel end at, a, at a group at a specific end. point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. End at this group ID. I'm gonna ask you to summarize fetch, fetch in a second. <laughs> or you need me to? I, I can try. Okay. If we, I want to make the point, if we get rid of updates, then the order in which you cancel something and establish something new becomes important. And that's a, that's a argument for putting them on the control stream where their order is guaranteed, their order of yeah. execution is guaranteed on the server versus having them as independent streams, in which case you can't guarantee that mm -hmm. you won't make the new one before you cancel the old one. Yeah. You can use priorities, though. Yeah. You want to be high priorities. That's I'd rather have explicit. <laughs> that's an right. Explicit. Okay. Um, all right. I think the queue's drained. Um, now we should have an answer for both the previous discussion and the update yeah. discussion we just had. Particularly Martin. Uh, I, I, I think we, I, I think the people who wanted to update it convinced themselves they can live with it, with it, live without it for now. Does that feel? I think that's success. since Mo, that was your solution. We were using updates to placate you on yeah. bandwidth rate. <laughs> now we got you, rid of that. And we got rid of that. <laughs> you, are you still placated on delivery rate, or you think issuing small a series of small fetches is not going to work? I'm okay with being in the rough. Um, I think this is going to be an inefficient mechanism. Um, it's going to be chatty. Uh, it's going to be basically like, you know, uh, small segments today with low latency dash. It is. It's same. exactly low latency dash, yeah. small segments. 
it's you know the exact same thing. Fine for VOD though. I mean, I'll see. it's horrible for networks. Networks could have much better capacity if we didn't have a sawtooth ABR running on them. Okay, but I think we I think we've achieved rough consensus, on, and Mo reserves the right to tell us all he told us so. And, and you're from now we build it in. It sucks. Yeah. yeah. As a Cisco I shareholder, that, I'm glad uh, you're all buying more routers than you need. <laughs> more capacity. It's still pacing with the congestion. No, I, I want to be still paced. Yeah. 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 I mean, I want to be very clear that this is not. I mean. There are things in the system that actually do smooth out the sort of for the network, and that's not necessarily the applications. Uh, application is not going to do a good job of it. Yeah. So relying on the yeah. All right. Okay. So we so we. I, I'm, all right. I'm going to move that like fetch signal out of <coughs> the overcome by events. Like, I, I think so. Okay. Does anybody disagree? Yeah. What does that mean? So that you can you can fetch signal object given our decision. Based on yeah, object ID. Fetch yeah. an object ID. Yeah. So, so, sir, just say yes. What's the answer? It's yes. overtaken by. So, yes. 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 You have to object IDs. Uh, group ordering. We already did that one. Uh, okay. So, we got an object filter. I, okay. So, for request subgroup, did we did we decide that we didn't? I think did we it? said maybe you could add it. Could we merge that into so filter? Just meant to, uh, 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 on yeah. object okay. filter before we even get there. <laughs> object filter was a yes. We're going to add that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm trying. I'm oh, trying. To, try, I'm, oh, you're I'm, trying I'm, to I'm scanning the situation here okay. because I think I request subgroup is like maybe a filtering thing, and maybe to some extent we've already right. booted yeah. it. Uh, uh, forwarding and, modes we, we okay. came to consensus on forwarding. Let's see. Modes. Forwarding modes is done, right? Which is no, right? No. Okay. Does anyone have more to say on forwarding modes? Are we, we okay? I think we discussed. All right. Okay. Excellent. All right. Let's talk about filters and and I guess request subgroups are 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 adjacent discussion there. Although there's discovery stuff that comes along with that. Okay. So um, object filter. I'm. Um, I'm going to make a. Let's start a queue. Okay. I guess. I'm gonna, unless you have a. I'm just going to make this as an in, oh, start as an individual, which is what I want to say is that I think object filter is cool and that we should have it, but we just shouldn't do it in the first PR for fetch. And we should just add it in a follow on one because it'll make it easier to review the fetch PR. And I think the object filter should include the ability to filter on subgroup. So, all right. Luke. Luke. Uh, I think the use case here is like thumbnails for scrubbing. Okay. I got, okay. Make a thumbnail track. Yeah. I, I think. Decoding a 1080p iframe is just a hack, and it's complicated. We shouldn't implement this. So no filters at all? No filters. Jana? Um, that's not what Alan said. This is this is complicated to implement, um, because once you start right. talking about ranges and so on, it gets uh, tricky. Uh, OK. Victor? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's entirely plausible. Uh, I think just does not block. The initial fetch PR, so in the states, I agree with Alan, like, we should probably discuss this later. Like, there, it's true that this is possible to add it. Mike? Um, yeah, uh, so this is an idea I've been tossing yes. around for a while. Um, but I agree that we do <laughs> differ. Like, it's cool, but we, it's not essential to doing fetch. Colin? Not now. Well, thank you, Bob. Yeah, I think now, I, when things get deferred later, they often don't come back ever. That's don't my you trust the not, chairs? Not, not, yeah. I do not know. I, I have a history of stuff, <laughs> accepting stuff will come back later. It never does. So mm -hmm. I persist in asking for it up front. I don't think it's that complex to implement. I'm, I'm reading mm -hmm. objects and groups from the cache, and before I write them to the stream, I just check if they satisfy the filter. Yes, I put them in. No, I don't. And the use case is not only iframe, right? Yes, you can make an iframe track, but now you have to produce an extra track. The utility of this is I can leverage an existing track to get my scrub. Now. Right, but no one, the reality with media, people don't do that. They all leverage the lowest bitrate track to do this. So, and now beyond media, there's other applications that may want to select smaller things that inside the group. So I don't think it's a, it's a complex feature set. If you don't want the filter, don't use it. But kicking it out, um, I think it's at this point, this, this is something Mock can do better than some other solution. Okay, uh, Tim. So I agree with Will. I think it's actually not hard to implement. I think it'd be really easy to implement this. And I like it, but I do think it opens the door for content filtering. Because really, I think what we're really doing here is 
filtering the content. I want to iframe, P frame, whatever. And I think that's only that only works with an order with a specific unique ID. And we're going to have to design object IDs that work to be able to support the, the, the filters. So I don't know, this might expand into more of content filtering in the future, but I do like the idea of filtering um, your selection based off of your fetch, because I don't want all the data. I just want the important, significant data. <coughs> you ask? Yeah, I, I'm in on the boat of uh, not doing it right now, um, but I would like to extend a proposal to Bill saying that can you come up with a proposal of object filter that is simple? Because right now your, your object filter goes everywhere. I like, did. It's slides three, four. No, that, that, that's complicated. That, that's that's what we are opposing against. If, I, I I think like I'm not saying we should even for the first proposal. I think we should not. But if someone says <laughs> filter that does not do a regular, regular ex exception expression kind of parts throughout all my content, I don't think so. That scales. Jada. The question I would ask is, uh, is this fundamentally necessary for the performance benefits that Mock is going to offer over other things? I agree that this could, there's a lot of design things that we will all want, which are you know, the nice ornate bits that we could add. And I think if it's important, it should surface up later. And this this applies to even things that anybody might want to do. The, the goal is that in my mind should be that if there isn't enough, if there aren't enough people asking for it eventually, then the group should not go pick it up and do it. That's simply the reality of how it should be done. So I would say that if there isn't enough consensus right now to pick it up, then we should punt it to later. Hopefully experience shows sure. whether it is important and valuable to do. And it comes right back up. So, um, oh, you're stretching. Okay, Daniel. Colin. Okay, this is a kill two birds with one stone. Um, I have been wanting to exercise our protocol extension mechanism. And I wonder if this could be proposed, and like, Will, you, may, you can throw me out the window later. Um, I, I wonder <laughs> if this could be proposed as an extension um, to be able to do this. It's, it's pretty simple. I, I agree, it's, it's fairly simple to do. So, it, um, yeah. So I would just say, like, should we consider, we, we could not do it now. We could consider it later. We could do it as an extension now. And people can decide whether they're implementing it or not. You can negotiate and see it. And there might be some advantages of seeing that. Or if we add in, I sort of agree to it. Not really all that hard to implement in the relays, particularly if you do a crappy implementation of it. Um, and I don't, I don't, this is certainly not a hill I'm willing to die on one way or the other. I don't care deeply. No. Um, I think the strongest use case for this is uh, things like temporal scalability, different layers, extracting different layers. Um, and I think uh, you could even do the keyframe scrubbing by putting keyframes in their own layer, which is what a lot of newer conferencing systems do. They call it KSVC, keyframe SVC, where the keyframes go in a separate layer and the rest of the frames go in, in, in a higher layer. So I think maybe a compromise to eliminate the complexity of all these object ID ranges. I think don't mention object IDs at all. Subgroups were intended to capture the, the the different layers and the delivery aspects, and I think that could also be relevant for fetches. Now you want to fetch only these things that the application thought should be delivered separately, and so just add subgroup IDs <coughs> into the message, no ranges or anything, just a, a subgroup ID, and that way you can filter on just at a specific layer. And you can get a keyframe, you can get a, an enhancement layer, you can get a base layer, you can do layer extractions from the content. Whatever the application sender thought was useful to send over different streams, now you can get that, that same semantic from the fetch. Victor. Uh, it's 4 p.m. So uh, <laughs> what I was going to say is uh, I heard there is a working group of charter to run filters. Uh, You're kidding. Oh, BPF. Oh. <laughs> Next. More seriously, <laughs> uh, I, I was... <laughs> it is, it is, it is, okay, we're going to close the Q soon. Suhas is in there. They're not uh, extended. Uh, they're not I, I packets. Gonna, they're not filters, and they're definitely not Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> they're uh, packets. What What's I was going to say is... Uh, uh, 
I, I agree with Collins that this is a good candidate for extension, and the reason I think is like all of the use cases sound like optimizations, and you're likely going to function without it, especially like the core functionality of delivering media. So uh, I think that that's probably the right way forward for this feature. Mike, okay, you're gonna close it. Q's closed. Um, yes, I agree that this would be a good candidate for an extension. I would like to volunteer to work on send text. Uh, okay, I, I, I thank you. I, I um, put myself in the queue as an individual to say that, uh, like, I don't have a fundamental, like, philosophical objection to subgroup requests, but if we have that in this PR, we need to have some sort of, and I think Tim said this in some form, some sort of either discovery mechanism or some sort of, like, framework on how, like, right now, peep IDs can be random. And so you have to say something like the highest, uh, like, the highest priority peep is always peep zero or something like that, or, like, that is, you know, um, which we can do, just can also be in a catalog. Yeah, so either there's an out of band communication thing or like there's a standard on how peeps are numbered. And um, we could do that, but that has to be in the PR, which adds to the, to the, <laughs> adds to the PR. But if you want to do that, it's great. Two hops. Oh, okay. So I, I think we, we've run this to the ground again. Um, so I, I think there's three things out there. One is like put it in, two is put it as in an extension. And three is punt it to later. And well, and I think there's different shapes to put it in, like put it in only on subgroup ID or put it in with the full mm -hmm. proposal that we'll have with yeah. like object ranges and whatnot. So I, maybe I, we. I had one comment on that one. I think when discussing the, the, I think something earlier, we kind of agreed upon having a subgroup as a filter uh, to the delivery to the fetch request. So we already. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, I think we punted maybe it. we told we, were, we, we discussed on, on it for a while. Uh, it was tied into the whether or not we were going to build all the fetch around subgroups, and we okay. decided not to be. Okay. Um, how about we start with who thinks we need to have some kind of filter in the initial PR? Does that sound like a good starting question? Like, yes. we absolutely have. Okay. Who thinks we absolutely have to have filters in the PR we see tomorrow? So, well, I, 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 understand, I understand your fear, but if you, if you file an issue, we will address it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. And, and Mike's I'm willing well, to won't. do the market closed on you, Will, six I, months I, from now. I, I can read do. the room. That's fine. Um, you that. what, I don't think it's a good candidate for extension. The trouble with extensions is some things support them, some things don't, and then it's you never problem. build a good solution. <laughs> so no. I would, I'm okay with we open a separate issue. I would look at filters. I would filter on object ID. I'd filter on subgroup ID. And I would actually contemplate a group ID filter. Yeah. Why not? Because now we've got full flexibility in what we extract from this range. Before you open your issue, I think you already opened one. Like this, there's an issue for filters. It's, oh, there is. It's open. That you open. I oh, that I open. <laughs> <laughs> so we haven't closed it randomly on you. Well, I will revisit well, my. That's issue. why they close mine, is because I open them twice. <laughs> Since, 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 since uh, Will agreed to defer, we're not closing the working group no more. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right. So that I think that closes that. So uh, filters are going to be uh, farmed out through separate issue. And is it okay to put request subgroups as part of filters, or does somebody feel like we need requests? Okay. So separately? I, I, I think I think that that can be either that can be addressed in the other issue, or even potentially part. Just of make the, a note in those notes that yeah. as in the other issues should consider. Expanding so, yes. what you filter. Find that and, if the initial, and, and if the initial filter PR isn't good enough, someone could file an issue for subgroups. <laughs> but, or maybe we could roll all on the one. Okay, sounds great. Um, 99 issues. All right. Issues. Okay, we have, uh, we still have 40 minutes, so we might actually get to the end. Um, all right, so that gets us down to fraction of object. This is okay. We don't need to talk about that. Right ranges. By <laughs> ranges. It's just to get rid of. It's if you get rid of object ID. You're but the room is like clearly wants object ID. Rough, okay. All right. So you're willing to concede that you're in the rough. Excellent. Okay. So wow. consensus is no, and then um. Uh, oh my gosh, Mark, you have to do this. What's what's the last one? Oh, oh sorry, sorry. sorry. The, the one that yeah. we didn't remember. It fetch is not future fetch signals. Live edge need non racy. Mechanism does it. So this this is purely like whoever's writing the PR, like you need to come back tomorrow with a perfect okay. solution and a unicorn that solves this problem. Okay, so like I'm looking at this either is it Suhas that has the most 
like as the smallest XOR, the lowest XOR between the yeses and the consensus. I, I was parallelly trying to highlight in, in my slide what we have consensus on. It, it looks like I need to remove the delivery rate. Sure. So share this one. Um, so, I mean, I think there's two things here. There's one, like getting a slide deck that represents a proposal on this is pretty easy, right? And then there's somebody actually picking up the pen and writing a PR. I, That's I, a think, much I, think, bigger I think the thing. next yeah. step is to write a PR. Yeah, I agree. Um, do we think I, I, is, I, don't, I don't think we should discuss this more. I, I, I think we need a few yeah. proposals for this race condition. I think that's the problem with just say write a PR. We we don't yeah. have an agreement on how to solve it. Uh, okay, well, so we, should we talk about that now then? Yeah, I mean, we have to have at least a plan, yeah. right? Totally. Richard? Yeah, I'd prefer before a PR, I'd like prefer to see slides with like message syntax before we write everything okay. down. All okay. right. So, um, can I, can I talk to you? okay, so we, so we have three. Proposers from this morning. Um, yeah, I don't see any reason to include it. Do the three of you want to work together on a slideshow? Do we want do, do are like are any not available to do one tonight? To do one tomorrow? Uh, like okay, who is willing to work on a slideshow tonight for tomorrow? Let me show of hands. Victor, <coughs> Duhas. Well, collaborate, but not an all night thing. Well, <laughs> okay. Can, can you guys organize amongst yourselves at dinner? And Suha, since since you seem to be the minimum XOR, okay. I'm gonna put you 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 own you own the responsibility to have slides for tomorrow. If these guys bail on you, it's on you. But my point is that what should be in the slides? Uh, uh, Our protocol messages at least and some yeah. examples. Yeah. Like, like like what is the does best this example of fetch? Like I do have an example. Does this work? Like my point is that. He so thinks he's already done. <laughs> True or false? The live playhead, the, the, when you're going between fetch and subscribe, you, that's the problem yeah, we need to yes. solve. I can add an example. So should, do we need to talk about We need to brains? talk about we that. Need we need slides on that tomorrow. Okay, okay. so yeah. it's not, we don't want to design it this live the in the last 30 minutes. Wait, 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 wait. I'm fine to design it live right now. Okay, is yeah. that what we want to do? Yeah. You, you were this, talking about that, this, or are you talking about the entire proposal? Well, no, uh, it's a proposal just for, like, how do you know the transition between fetch and subscribe? If fetch errors, if you do in the future, right? Okay. Okay. If it's going to error yes, on you, you need you. to know that you have to subscribe. I, I think or, I'll send it. This is yeah, something. I, have, to me, you know, we should, I think we should talk about that now. Yeah. yeah. We should Who's talk about this, this blank slide. Yeah. We, if we I have some rough idea on this, this blank slide, tomorrow I can. Someone grab out. a marker and write on the board. So, <laughs> so, 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 so you're saying you don't know what to put here? No, we can put something, but I want. To put something that you know we we actually spend okay. 15 20 minutes to discuss yeah. okay does somebody right. is somebody a fast thinker and has uh, a initial straw man i have a straw man okay, okay. And so does will then, so then, you then, guys then, have to arm yeah. i i try to do some live editing here i have a straw man yeah okay all three of you arm wrestle one at a time victor go ahead uh <laughs> my straw man is you put in the fetch you can put a subscribe id and if at the moment your fetch hits the live edge that subscribe id activates and you get to subscribe, okay, for it. Okay. I'm going to be in the again. queue, too, as a right, okay. proposal. Yeah. That was Victor, and who was it? Luke? I'll say quick straw man is you try to fetch, you get an error code telling you what the live head is, and you can send emails. Hold okay. on, let's, let's, yeah, let's see what's right down. You just, you just get an error saying that you're, you're trying to fetch in the future, idiot. It still has a racer. Yeah, it does. That's why it's a straw man. <laughs> yes. Uh, so um, I don't think it makes any sense for any app to ever, ever subscribe or fetch blindly without knowing anything about the timelines or anything about the group IDs that are happening. So it's always going to need to have some track info, some track status. And whether that's implicit when you do a fetch or a subscribe, you get that as a header. You get the track info as a, as a header on that delivery delivery. <coughs> Or whether you ask for it explicitly, you always have to know some somehow, some way, where the where the current group live edge is. I don't see any app that can function. There's a, a round trip. Isn't this though. also racing? Yeah, the, because yeah. the, the point is, when you subscribe, you're only going to subscribe just to live edge only, and you're going to see what the live edge is right then. Oh, I see. And then you can you can plan your fetches deterministically to go up to that live edge and not pass it. And when would you ever blindly fetch and not have any idea? What group ID to fetch? That doesn't make any sense to me. So when you, when is... when you seek around, right, in the VOD DVR, you don't know you don't know the live edge because you don't know if you're close to even should you even try subscribing. How did you find the group that you? That, how 
How did you populate the group you ID field? You the two hour mark. You don't know the live edge. How did you, what, what value did you put in group ID? What number did you put in the group ID? Something from the timeline, right? I guess. Okay, is there, okay, let me get You guys are discussing that proposal. Yeah, Colin. Let me, let me throw in. Do your straw man. Okay, so my proposal is, is loosely um, that you send in the, in, in, this is all relying on we're in the control stream, you send the track info request with a subscribe right behind it or right in front of it. We can figure out the ordering of those two. Okay, so actually you send the subscribe and a track info right there. And then when the track info comes back to you, um, when the track info... You don't need the track info because subscribe... Subscribe OK. Yeah. Subscribe OK gives you the same information. OK, fair enough. Fair enough. I'm mistaken then. That as soon as that comes back, you, um, you know, you, you can at that point update the scale, the timeline on your UI scaler that so the person's sliding around and you can know the right place. And now the person comes, you know, pick a place to send a fetch. But basically after you get that back, you do the fetch. And you already know what the end of your fetch is. Okay, there's a Q. I've, are we so still, are we still offering straw men? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have another one? Another really? straw man is what we have today where you subscribe to the start group. And this, it, it is in the past, right? Like it could be in the past by like a group or two and this fixes the race condition. Subscribe with the start group and then, but you get a fetch and a <laughs> subscribe and response? Going to history, I no, you, you can get old data from the subscribe, right? So if you do track info, track info says 50 is most recent. Subscribe start group equals 50. It's guaranteed to give you 50 and 51. But the problem is, like, if you don't do that, then you could subscribe blank, and it will give you 51, and you didn't realize, oh, I need to fetch 50 in your extra round trip for fetching. Two. <coughs> so from an implementation standpoint, I'm just a little concerned about supporting some of these modes, that if you fetch something in the past, it's very likely you may never catch up based off of your transmission rates to live, which means I'm always replaying from cache. And that's a different implementation than what we do today. We, we, we pretty much try to deliver you in message, in object, and then we fan out that object straight away. Fetch is a different process. So to support this <laughs> replay of live but you're always delayed by X number of seconds, it's gonna require us to replay from cache always for your live feed. So Tim is right. The only, the only time that you do catch up to live is if you play at a great rate than one. Yeah. That's the only use, that's the only use case we you catch up to live. Otherwise you're mm -hmm. always behind right. live and you so, never cross so, the boundary. Aren't we relitigating the, the, the congestion pushes you further back. Doesn't broadcaster broadcast congestion, upstream congestion yes. will cause the light plate at the stall no to shrink. Yeah. I mean, is, yeah. that the, what, is that what that point pertains to? Both. Uh, and then you're just error. I want, I, I want to clarify and add more weight to, to my straw man. Um, an app that, that that wants to subscribe, if he, he doesn't know at the time of the subscription whether it's happening in the middle of a group, at the beginning of a group, or at the end of a group. So when it subscribes and it sees I'm at object 99, it most likely is not going to fetch all the way from zero to back up. It'll say, okay, I'll just wait till, if it knows the group size is, is 120, it'll wait till the next group. If it subscribes and it sees I'm at three, it will most likely fetch from zero to three. So it's important to subscribe first and understand where you are in the current object, in the current group. Which object are you in the current group? Not just what's the, what's the group ID of the live edge. What's the object number in that group? Because that will determine whether or not you fetch previous to the head or you wait to the tail and you go to the next group. So isn't that Colin's proposal? So I'll, I'll just add this real quick. Is, I think you should only allow the transition if you have enough bandwidth to support it. Yeah. The difference is, was someone else earlier said we should have a flag and subscribe that says, I want to subscribe to object zero, or I want to subscribe to current oh, object. But, um, but is, right. isn't Colin's proposal exactly what you just said? What Colin's proposal says is that you do subscribe, you get it okay. That's a, with with a round change. Yeah, client, client yeah. needs a round change. Okay. Yes. But yeah, but that, that's, that's what I said up earlier before that. What I, what I was clarifying was that you have to do that anyway to know whether or not you want 
to go back to zero, or whether you want to wait for the next zero. Right. Okay. Otherwise, you have yeah. no idea. Okay. So, so, so Colin minute. and Mo's requests are the same, I yeah. think. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Yeah. I have a, so I, I, I have a I, slight I alternate, it. which is the one mm -hmm. that Mo just mentioned, which is you. It, it's an inverse of Victor's, which instead of you add a fetch, you, you do a fetch with a subscribe ID. I think you should you essentially merge. You make one subscribe. You can subscribe with a start group and maybe even bring back relative to previous and but maybe not but when it hits the live when it finds the live edge it divides your request into two responses you get an entry in the forwarding table and an implicit fetch from where you started okay. to the live head and then both responses come back to you and then maybe also in your request you can prioritize those so you basically like you make some like I don't know, Victor once called like sub atomic subscribing yeah. fetch. Oh. You glue the two things together, the relay does the right thing. You get you send one blob with two requests in it and you get two responses. Can you send two IDs? Yeah, I haven't the mechanics of it I haven't figured out yet, but maybe Victor can. Although it wasn't his idea. I, I can involve it. Yeah. I, I think the Luke's first idea is 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 the simplest one. And I also I agree with most uh, proposal as well. So it, the thing is that when if you don't want to wait, uh, I'm the only fetching client. I don't want to make or subscribe. In that case, you can't do the subscribe portion, right? So in those cases, what you do, you 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 fetch. If the relay knows the live edge in the response of the one of the objects that comes, we can integrate a new object type that basically says uh, fetch header that identifies the current live edge of the relay, and, and anything beyond that, you'll not get it. So that way, you know uh, to what point your object stops coming for a fetch. So we can add a fetch header that comes that identifies. Yeah. My, my straw man is very similar to Luke's. You're you're fetching these ranges, you're playing at twice the rate, and suddenly you make a range that's into the future. It should respond with an explicit error that says the end of your range is in the future. So you, you know that. You immediately then issue a subscribe, as Mo indicated, because that will tell you where the future is, where it begins. You get the start from that, and then you know what you, the last object you received, you know the one you there, you issue another fetch to fill the gap. You play that at twice the rate. After that, you have to change your rate back to one because you can't play the future at twice speed. So is, is that right? Uh, will I capture like explicit error on hitting live edge? Yes. And then, do, and then do a subscribe for the live, and that tells you where you are, and then another fetch to, to cover the gap. Just to correct Luke's straw man was error when you... Fetch, not subscribe. Yeah. When you fetch, fetch yeah. yeah. Oh, the text okay. the fetch. Fetch. On the fetch. Let's say I'm agreeing with Luke there. Yeah. It's a little annoying because you have to issue the issue the last fetch is the annoying part. Yeah, yeah but we're dealing with rare race. In reality, you've got several seconds here. You're, yeah. you're going to be fetching 30 seconds at a time. Yeah. It's just not going to happen very often, so people yeah. are going to miss it. It's, it's such a rare case we're dealing with. Most of the time, you just sit behind live by the same amount. You never catch up. That's what I was saying. I was just going to write this in there. You're, you're, it's very often you will never catch up, and you're going to subscribe to something that's greater than your bandwidth. You're going to subscribe to a 4K stream. You can't receive a 4K stream, but you're going to pull it in anyways. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've got, some, uh, I've got some 430 humor for everybody. Oh. Just, hold on. I, 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 I think we, we, share, we got... I don't know, what I'm seeing is that we are getting... Uh, Two similar, I, I think I can combine all these things into one proposal. I think they're not very different. Cool, why don't you try that right now? Okay. Just take a minute and do it. <laughs> right now, Luke, go yeah, ahead. I'm just going to throw one four, quick four, wrench two, before you yeah. do that. Okay. Um, for like Twitch, which was like four seconds of latency, and we were doing this fetch constantly, <laughs> uh, if OBS has latency, like for whatever reason, they start backing up, it's going to cause this <laughs> issue where you go past the live head. <laughs> anyway, whatever this this rare this rare condition of... will happen uh, when you have a, a low buffer but one reliable playback. That is a solution that allows to get to the catalog yes. readout today, which is why I'm a bit favor of it. Wait, so I don't know what, what I think I'm hearing to us is that slides. you actually have you um, actually have enough to write a PR at this point. Yes. All right, yeah. I'm going to move on to the even. next agenda item, <laughs> and like, and like, we can shoot at the PR, or we can shoot at the slideshow tomorrow. So what what we can do is that like, for other use cases, I have the call flow. I'll try to work on this a bit and create a call flow on this one. Okay. 
and panel if if you want we can I can okay. start a PR in right. but can, so instead of a PR which I it, so yeah, not it's a, PR. a slide, slide like a condensed slide yeah. summarizing okay. what the PR will so let, let me let me let me go through the action item very carefully here so Suhas plots. Suhas is ultimately responsible, but Suhas and other interested parties are going to create a pre detailed presentation of the exact protocol mechanics that this whole transition thing is going to do, with examples and little vignettes and all that stuff. Okay, <laughs> you guys. So based off of what we just spoke about, is everyone who thinks they're going to be involved in this presentation, is everyone comfortable with that? Who is the them that was going to be? Uh, I think these three Will, raised their hands as, as collaborators, and but Suhas is the stucky. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Is that in the minutes? Yes. Thank you. Got okay. It. Let's completely change gears. And and you're going to go to Will? Let's do the catalog readout. You have that, 26 minutes. Do we have time to do it seriously? Because 26 minutes, there should be enough, right? I think you originally asked for 40. Oh, if you can't, then we can uh, do something else. Let's start it. What I don't <laughs> want is stuff gets like pushed under the rug because we've got to have uh, beer. Okay. I mean, if, if we need to run over a little, yes. I mean, I, I've worked on catalog for almost a year. We've got eight PRs, and this is basically saying we don't need it as an independent one. So it's a big deal. Okay. Um, well, let's let's, let's do it. Uh, oh, I, I was going to offer my, my thing since uh, we're not going to discuss it. I can promise you today. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Would you feel more comfortable just having a solid slot tomorrow? Sure. Well, it's not that long. How many slides? I mean, it's up to you. Like, it's if, seven slides. If, if you yeah. want, if, if you think, if you think we can reach a nice stopping place today, like you have. We've priority. got consensus on it. So unless there's, I don't expect the consensus of this right. room to be any different to the consensus of the design team. All right. If, if you're comfortable, we can get this done in 28 minutes then. Yeah. So let's, let's start. Let's Otherwise, okay. we're wasting time. All right. Fine. It's really deputized. I'm gonna hit my wheel of names again. Yeah. Do uh, so I mean, we'll oh, I'm sorry. It's really inappropriate for things. Here we go. Okay. So I'm presenting the results of the catalog design report. Um. So the chairs asks us to address two questions. Firstly, is the catalog draft intended for use with streaming applications in particular or for any mock transport application? And secondly, which attributes should be defined by the catalog draft and which should be left for a definition in external drafts? I added a note here that there's an implicit and agreed upon <coughs> understanding that a catalog is not required for mock transport operation and that catalog free operation is always possible. And that assumes you have some other means of discovering the information that's in a catalog. And I think there was that at least that consensus within the design team. And just a picture prior when this design team took this, okay, we have our mock draft. We had a catalog draft over here. It fed both warp streaming draft and the lock draft. And then we have a CMAF packaging draft feeding into warp. And we have chat application coming off of more. This was the landscape of drafts. Draft detecture, as we said. So, addressing the first question, is intended for use with applications? So, firstly, we decided a catalog is not required or intended for use with any mock transport application. That's not new. Secondly, the core interop point should be a streaming application, not a catalog. So, something that allows you to send audio and video between publishers and subscribers. That's our target interrupt point. This streaming application should then define a catalog structure for its own use. And when it defines this catalog structure, it should do it such that it is extensible in case other applications wish to extend the entire streaming format, not just the catalog. And then number five, the catalog as a consequence of this should not exist as an independent drop. So the new architecture would look like this. Mock transport over here. We have a new interrupt point, which we call warp for now. It's either warp or we make a different one. It defines its own catalog. It allows extensions to that catalog. It uses lock packaging by default. And maybe there's another draft for content protection. This entire streaming format then can be extended by somebody else, but not this group, 
to include things <coughs> like CMAP or other ISO specifications. And they may extend the catalog that's in here as a consequence of extending the entire streaming format. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Oh, can you go back to that? Sorry, I should pause for questions. That's okay. Uh, no, the picture was fine. Oh, the picture's good. Um, why do you say that the CMAF compatible one shouldn't be defined in this group? It was resistance. Oh, it could be this group. I think it'd be great. Just as an extension. Think of the block as the base functionality and CMAF as the extension. You said it doesn't, okay. Does it have a champion? Yet? My opinion, yeah. Nobody here wants a CMAF compatibility? No, I, I want it. I think we should have wants it. it so. yeah. All right. And Victor, you want it or you want to say uh, something? I do want it. So the reason I want it as a separate draft, there were multiple, and uh, I think the, the main one is that uh, uh, CMF has more obstacles to use in LOC, uh, like starting from the fact that the spec is not publicly available. So uh, that's that's the reason LOC is moved to the left, uh, at least from my perspective. Yeah, I'm just thinking with this group as well, like lock everybody can implement, we can make it mandatory to implement. CMAF, only a handful of people are going to do it. I see. Okay, so it, we, it would be like warp and warp C or something. Uh, it, an extension. It's so like another container you, warp could support. Okay, that makes sense to me. Okay, so I'm sorry. Uh, chair, a question, I guess. What, so you would like to like essentially withdraw the catalog draft and adopt the warp draft and have like the minimum bits of catalog in warp. Step. Yeah, there's there's more slides coming. Okay, what we, we, we to understand what the right. what the yeah. ask is. <clears throat> That's the direction. Okay. So the second question was which attribute should be defined by the catalog. So the answer is one: the catalog should be defined for its use with the default streaming application, and it should include all the necessary fields for the operation of that streaming form. These fields should be strongly typed and deterministic, so that we can build robust parsers for it, and that we should allow some mechanism for extensibility in that catalog. And then questions that arise from these decisions. So is the default streaming format warp? What's the relationship between lock, which is both a streaming format and a packaging format today, and warp, which is also a streaming format? <coughs> and does the new catalog need to register its fields with IANA, which is something we do today? And four, if warp is a common interrupt point, then what's the scope? Is it real-time interactive VOD? Does it do ABR? Does it do content, advertising, captions, accessibility, etc.? These are all questions we have to answer if our interrupt point is going to be a streaming format and not a catalog. That's the last slide. Okay. Uh, can I ask some yeah. questions on this? Um, I think I, I have questions about a bunch of them. The one that jumped out first, though, was maybe I have a bad understanding of what lock is or what a streaming format is. But I thought lock, in my head, lock was only a container format. And I don't know what lock as a streaming format or a packaging format. I don't understand what lock as a streaming format means. I thought a streaming format told you this is how to build your MOQ objects and tracks and groups. And this is what you can find in a catalog. And this is like kind of explains the end to end. Is that, do I have the, the streaming format is the binding of, of mock T protocol objects? to some other packaging. Okay. So and lock, lock had defines, both of those in it already? Lock defines the packaging and the mapping to mock T. Oh, okay. Objects. That's maybe my, what I missed. Okay. So we would maybe potentially split those two functions into two different drafts, or you want to contain well, that's the question. Um, if, if lock is going to be the default for warp, then we should probably merge them, in all honesty. I, th I think the question is, do you want lock to be standalone, like on the file system? Do we want to support lock? Because if so, it should be separate from warp, which is on the network only. So, like, I mean, this is getting to ITF, yeah. but like, do we think lock would be like referenced by other documents? Be yes, because say OBS, we want OBS and Coda yeah. to be able. So, to like, I, I would in that case, I would encourage you to do a separate draft for it, so it could be referenced cleanly. All you know, the warp can say must implement trap lock whatever. Yeah. So, so well, you're saying we have it. you're sorry saying you want look to have a draft that only talks about packaging and not about mock don't mention the word mock at all don't mention mock okay. objects just talk about packaging of 
I put X on the yeah. strings? I think the parts of lock that are likely to be referenced by other things, multiple things and not just warp should be in a different draft. And not mention mock. That draft yeah. not mention uh, If the parts that mention mock will be used by other things. I mean, I, 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 I'm very murky on that. So, I, I, <laughs> okay, should we need a cue again? Uh, hold on. Who had their hand? Victor, Colin. Okay. You want to go first, Jack? Yeah, I, I think <laughs> we'll make our lives easier if uh, we merge, like, the two things into bottom to warp. So there are only essentially two drafts you need if you want to send media over monthly. Uh, transport and one is the, the, the media like baseline draft. Uh, we could split it out, but honestly, I like unless we're describing how to store lock package media on disk, uh, I, I don't see that much for me. So I'm not sure there is much appetite for like writing of how to store lock media on disk or how to bind lock it to Okay, uh, Colin and then Luke. Okay, so I think we're getting ahead of ourselves with this. I think we should just try and write this draft as with lock in the warp draft as fast as we can, get all the content written down and done. And when we're getting close to working group, you know, when we're getting close to done, we can ask the questions of whether we need to separate this out or what sort of way we need to format it for references and everything else. But like what we need right now is a bunch of text we can all agree on and probably having it in one spot makes that easier to actually keep it coordinated and in sync. But I mean, I don't really care deeply about this. I mean, like whatever the authors want to do, but I don't like this seems like a late stage game optimization yeah. to figure out how we split the <laughs> up. Okay. No, I, I agree with both. I think um, honestly as well, like lock on disk is probably the most complicated part of the draft too. It'd be like 90% is like describing tracks because you can't point to the catalog. It's in the separate, it's in the mock draft. Of the warp draft. So um, yeah, merge merge lock and warp. Uh, just make lock part of warp. It is the container. In the future, we could always move it into its own draft. It could be its own thing on the file system. It's not too much benefit, but it could be. And, and I mean, you can keep calling them lock and warp too. Yeah. So like not yeah. put them together. Catalog and and container well, in okay. harmony. So just one question on that. If I want to then deliver long form video content. It's not live, and I want to distribute it over mock transport using warp. What should my input be to that system? Ideally, I, I would want a bunch of log assets that I could just read and, and serve, right? I'd want, I'd want something on you the would, file system that looks like what the cache would be if I'd streamed log through. I will observe the Yeah, this is not necessarily. We can, yeah, we can. But I'm saying there's a utility, there's a big utility there for. Do I take CMAF and write a translator to lock, and that's how I store my stuff? Because is For that v, what we v want? zero, that's probably what people would do, yeah. But um, I, I think that's maybe just a future draft is what people are saying. Like, serializing to the disk is not important. We mostly care about how it's serializing to the network. I mean, For live, but for stuff that was never live. Can, can I just jump in real quick? I mean, I think if you just want something quick and dirty and easy, we can easily specify the elementary streams packaged as disk elementary streams. If you want a full container like Matroshka or MP4 with multiplexed multiple tracks, uh, that's that that should not be in you know that's not a simple draft. That's not a I wouldn't even I wouldn't even want to take on the work. But if we just want a simple serial format for disk containers of single tracks, yeah. that's cake. I mean we I we can do that next I week. I just want we, the track on disk. We can store it kind of like HLS and dash where it's a bunch of files. And every lock group is like a dot lock file or something. We can do that. Uh, one file is going to be hard. That's what I'm trying to say. Like that can MP4, be a two page section. Uh, one file can be a but end files can be like, easy. Like it's just each group is its own file. That can be a two page section of yeah. the lock draft. That's easy. Yeah. A multiplex track container is not something that we. No, but we need a multi version of the catalog, basically. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to flip back to the question slide and see if that sparks more? Oh, wait, yeah, sorry. So. The, uh, Mo and Victor were still in the queue. Did I cut the queue? Or Colin? No, I'm out of the queue. Colin, Mo, Luke, and Victor, did you guys all say what you wanted to say? Yep. Uh, no, you didn't. I, I did. I, I wanted to point out that the, the storing uh, mock T tracks on disk is not even warp specific. Storing mock T tracks on disk. Yeah, it could be a generic mock T serialization format. Yeah, uh, like there, it's like. 
we can you there is no need to reference words specifically like you can just have a generic format of how do I store track on disk? How to store objects on disk. Uh, yes. Like you yeah, either like put cache. Cache. Or groups and objects. How to how to persist your cache well, on the well, disk. Yeah. Persist. Persisting and serving are not necessarily. Yeah. One where that place, so Martin just asked, do we need interoperability of that particular thing or can that be person specific? One place where we had something, we wrote something, we did this interop, we used it as a test vector for QPAC before yeah. E3 was ready. We we're just like, here's a bunch of like stuff written to disk. So if you don't have anybody else to talk to, you can like read this stuff and like serve it. Uh, like, are, are you familiar with the story of SSL keylock file? Uh, maybe this is not the time to hear the story. Uh, <laughs> that's just what happens when you like don't define. Things. Oh, I see. If you People want to, will see define it. for you. Um, okay, I, I think maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that we're going to. Do we have a quick answer to the? Do we need a standard for how to store mock tracks on disk, or do we want to take it to beers and talk? I, about I, I like Victor's proposals. Let's have a simple way just to persist mock T objects. Simple. It doesn't even have to be warped. Or anything. Yeah, it doesn't have to be media. Object. Just persist. Just flush your entire cache to disk. How do you serialize your entire cache to, to disk? Okay. Object ID order, group ID order. Somebody want to write that draft for Dublin? Yeah, draft sure. author or for Bangkok. So, so. <laughs> I can write that on a, on a paper and a okay. cocktail napkin. Okay. <laughs> so again, going back to the thing that I raised earlier about the fact that this has to work with. You want, to, you want to cache exactly once and deliver with multiple technologies. So this, the, whoever is writing this should bear in mind that the serialization shouldn't be uh, specific to just mock that we should be able to use this stuff for the other good stuff. But that's, that's I think that that's, that's go back way. to the previous slide. Okay. Uh, for a second. Okay. Or one, one more back for the, like the diagram, right? Where we had the, the CMath compatible streaming format, that is a big chunk of work. And that is a draft somebody should write. And it should take care of making sure. I mean, what, probably I would guess that when we do that work of the CMath streaming format, we might also want to do the work of talking about how it's on disk such that you can do both. But I don't, like, that's that's a complicated thing. Just taking just taking our all of our objects in cache and, like, you know, dropping the bytes to disk. So we have nine minutes. Well, what, what do you need? There were several other questions that we have. Well, we need to address those. We, there's some big architectural changes here. Yeah. And I'm not sure that going down the CMAF road, is that what we want to do? Like, common encryption is being attacked and broken. There's a chance for us with Mock to propose a, a better encryption scheme, or at least one that is not broken. And we could find good adoption with people wanting to distribute theatrical content with it because we have a better encryption scheme. And there's a chance for us to do that. So we don't have to aim at just the live market. We can aim at disrupting the, the CMAP based market. That's I'm still struggling to figure out what, I mean, I think these are all interesting ideas. I just would like to know what results you want out of the group today. Well, I want to answer, I want a consensus that we're going to retract the catalog draft, that we're going to put the catalog into warp, that we are going to make it very specific to warp and not other applications. And then we also, when we take on Warp as an interop, we need to answer these questions of what, what does Warp do? All right, so help me, is, like, is the only obstacle to that consensus this thought that we might want Lock to be less generic packing format for packages yeah. and stuff? Or... Yeah, right now, well, Lock is both packaging and a streaming format, and Warp is a streaming format. Okay. And so that's saying that CMAP can be the packaging format, is that right? No, no, I, I mean, no, like, so no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm asking. Okay, so just, so, just on the, on the draft merge point of view, I like <laughs> drawing and merging all sounds fine, but this, as long as we think that if we think we're going to do CMAF, that whatever's going in this catalog, the, the CMAF one's going to inherit, that it's at least compatible. We're not adding a bunch of, does that make any sense? Like, yeah, we'll design it so that you can extend it. It's very. There's not going to be many changes to okay. warp for CMAP. That's so going to be that was a my, new my only concern. Otherwise, so, I, I do want to say that like all. I mean, it's fine to like socialize the ideas, but all of these drafts are individual drafts except for catalog. catalog. So all of these, you can do whatever you want, regardless of what one here says. Although, like you know, I'm happy for you to socialize it, but I don't want to. I don't want to run aground on these issues either. What, what will Will's current 
architecture looks okay right now. So. Yeah, so does anyone object to this architecture? Well, we were talking about merging lock into warp. Is it That's the current it, discussion. Yeah, my point is, is it required? I don't know. Is it required to merge lock? Is yeah. that a question? It, it can be, like, it's kind of same draft for another draft. It's, well, there is no lock draft now. <coughs> there is one lock draft. Where is it? Mo has it. Oh, it's expired? expired. It's expired. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So what, for interrupt, we want one on streaming Google, thing that people yeah, manage. It doesn't mean right that it has to be in one draft. It doesn't mean that. It's just need one draft that. Yeah. Everyone interrupts on streaming. Why does it matter? Because, like, to Colin's point, let's just get it warp done because that's what we need to produce as a working group. Yep. And well, we can pull it into its own draft if we think it has applicability yep. later. I, I see what's the downside. I'm not against that idea. But the thing is that now warp draft uh, has become so, it becomes so big, it was, the amount of work you could do individually to move those drafts will be much easier than getting a couple of consensus of the big draft. But, but lock is mandatory to implement. Like, you're going to implement it anyway. Yeah. So, all right. Okay. I, I, I don't think we're getting a strong signal. I mean, at the risk of zooming, I don't think we're going to get a strong signal from the group because none of us have read these. Oh, I certainly haven't read any of these documents. Most of us have not read these documents. I think you have to use your editorial judgment on like whether it all works as a single document. If it works as a single document, bring it to us, and we can cut it up later if <coughs> that. But I, I don't know if discussing that. Well, more. we've gone a full circle. The catalog used to be inside Warp. Was asked awesome. to yeah. take it out, externalize it into a separate document, which yeah. was done. Yeah. And now we're voting to put it back in. Yeah. Um, I think that's the main, the main. The main thing is, I think the chairs were asking, should you have a base catalog that is independent of media, like Mach T yeah. is independent of media, just generic object transport? Yeah. Should we have a base catalog that's just this, just track name discovery and track format dis description in an abstract way, not tied to any media? We decided no that that wouldn't be that wouldn't okay. be useful enough. But that's a reversal of a decision that yes. was like. Does, does anyone object to that 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 conclusion? I think now. What was the statement? That there will not be a generic MOQ catalog format that applies to all MOQ. Yeah. But any other media is welcome to use the one that we come up yes. with for warp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and if it falls out that there's a generic part, we'll put that in the upfront section. Okay. But it's not um, going to be a separate document. So when they reference it, they're going to have to reference sections of warp. So I, I see no, I see no group, no one objecting to that at all. So please proceed with what you've concluded. Okay. All right. Do you need? I mean, we only have three minutes. We probably can't answer the rest of your questions. But are there any other ones that you were looking? Well, this is maybe one we can talk about dinner or tomorrow. But what exactly should warp do? I think it's pretty important for this group to have, even though we have not adopted all those drafts. We need to have a roadmap of where we're going, and warp is part of it, right? Yeah. Like the people out there, some people out there who are super excited for Mach T. But most people are excited for the applications that we're going to deliver, which are going to require work. So, uh, it would be good if we are. We can't just like punch it all in. So I would encourage the people who are very media, the M and the MOQs, to make sure that like you present to the group kind of what your vision of how we're going to deliver that is, like what you just presented seems reasonable. I would like warp to do all. Five things that I list. Okay, that's starting point. I, I, given we've been discussing warp and the lock for years, and we don't quite have this here, I would like to see us pick the minimal thing that we need for video and inter audio interop. That like, like, like what you know, Jordy had at ITF or something, and get that written down first before we worry about all the rest. So, you, oh, I say, but not call that. It's it's an interrupt target. Like we need an interrupt target to actually use mock T. Do you want warp to be an interrupt target? Or yes. Do you want to create well, a separate? Warp is one? the interrupt target. Like a lot no. of these aren't going to be interrupt. We're not going to interrupt okay. on advertising support. Like, yeah. you know, like we don't necessarily we can punt that. Okay. I'm not going to a lot of people asking to well, carry out the mock you, stuff. You say I want to punt that, but then. It's let's, never a commercial success because you can't do advertising. Let's get the basics going for like video conferencing. Let's have a bat. No, I, I don't think that we won't do it. Like we have to do it. I agree with you completely. Yeah, yeah but we have to start as as small. We, we have to do it right yeah. now before we even get going. But we must have retrofit it. That's the death <laughs> of these things. Is content no, protection I mean, gets I, added? It, it, it work is valuable. Like three years well, later. Well, if, if if you figure you can write something down that has ad support in it, like whether or not people inter, like implement it. Tomorrow is a different question. Feel free to put it in the draft and incorporate it. In the doing, draft. I'm not. I don't care about doing real ads. I do the mechanics of inserting interstitial content is what I care about. I, I think we should. That's that, what we that, should that, interrupt. That all makes sense, but I mean, like, we still don't have how to like put audio and video I, in a packet. I don't think we have to make that warp. I agree that that's an that's, urgent that's need, simple. but we right. don't have to rush warp to meet that I need see. if we don't want to. Okay. But I don't. But if if people if the group would prefer that, that's fine. Well, but. 
But then if warp is this minimal interrupt target, as was mentioned, then what do we actually take to production? What makes us money? It's not the minimal interrupt. No, 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 I'm just talking, I'm like, look, there's no progress being made on this. I'm suggesting what progress you should do first in the next three months, not what it needs to be before we work in your okay, glass so, wallet. I'm yeah, fine with all, right. you know, lots of things, right? But like, we're, we don't, we're, we're not making progress on this. All right, so let me ask this one question as a chair. Does anyone object to any of those five things being in warp when we ship it to the ISG? Does anyone think those are never should never be in scope for warp? Uh, I, they belong in some other direction. Uh, so content so. perfection and encryption, I think depending on how that's phrased and what it is, obviously I want to support it, but uh, like like that may need to be in its own draft for Well, that's your draft political. that I was referencing there. The content protection. Oh, the the yeah, security. Object, the secure object. Object. Okay, I think that's no be, problem. I thought yeah. you were you were meaning no. DRM. Thanks. I yeah. like it. I like the idea of a novel and new one that is secure, and we take it out. No, okay. yeah, yeah. No, this, okay. I I I stand. With, I read that wrong. I read DRM when I read no, that. It's yeah. not DRM. <laughs> that's, to be clear. Uh, yeah, I am not entirely sure about these specifically. Uh, depends on what the strategy is like. There definitely needs to be support for multiple uh, renditions of the same video feed, but uh, I'm not sure about like specifically switchover strategies and all sorts of like that. Well, yeah. the question is whether ABR is in scope. You're welcome yeah. to, to hate whatever the text is about ABR, but the question is do you object to ABR being in the draft? And it sounds like the answer is no. Uh, that is not what I said. Okay. Uh, what I said is. Uh, <coughs> There should be some support for ABR, but not oh, ABR itself. Not like yeah, okay. saying so mention it, but the algorithm in the client for when yeah. to switch not part of. Is that, is that is that? Are you, the, you, yeah, you, I agree with Victor okay, right. on that. Okay, but the <laughs> mechanism that I can cleanly oh, switch from. With us, right? Yeah, yeah. Where are you going right now? Because we're leaving in like two minutes. Six hours of phone calls to make. <laughs> All right, this this is not reassuring. Okay, it's okay. He'll get locked in the building if he stops too long. All right. It can't go too far. All right. Um, okay, so I, I think there was some decent feedback about those five bullet points. And I think what I would say as chair and trying to channel the group is that I think you're welcome to put as much as you want in the draft and like certainly incorporate thinking about that in the design. But it will probably be an interrupt target of some subset of the draft, just in the same way that nobody today is supporting subscribe namespace <laughs> or subscribe done. And I, I implemented it. You did subscribe done? No. <laughs> <laughs> I tried subscribe done and failed. It's, um, it's impossible. Uh, so, uh, but I, I think we have consensus that that these things will all go in working group last fall. Um, like you don't need to produce that in draft zero zero right uh, now. Of course not. Yeah. But but that um, I don't think anyone wants to ship a warp that doesn't have support for inter interleaving inter interstitial ads. When are you expecting zero zero? You want before Dublin? Uh, I mean, yeah. if that's the intro project, we uh, can I, show I, that version. I, 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 I think I, we should show. I, I think I think it would, I think it would be nice to adopt the document uh, soon after we. we we punt on catalog <laughs> rather than have nothing other than MQT on the plate. Well, yeah. But that's purely optics and and like uh, you know reality is reality. But obviously sooner is better. I, I think we have the three drafts today. Let's all put in that one draft, that warp draft that we have. Yeah, I'm editor on the warp draft. I can work with Suas and Mo who are on, on the log. We can make one document. I'm also, I will pull everything out of catalog, put it inside warp, okay. and we can present a candidate. We can allocate some. I think we could probably allocate some time in Dublin to to, to talk review about it that and, and talk and about it, and we can put placeholders in for these other things. Yes, yeah. I mean it's zero zero. Can, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just try to do the best you can to get what you think needs to be in there, and have empty sections for things that you're not ready to write, but you think yeah. should be in the draft, and we can fight about them. Okay. Well, I'll need your input too, Luke, because um, you know I, I'll, I'll I'll post at least what I've got yeah. for. Because we we never intended Locke to cover all of the use cases, especially the you know the, some of the streaming ones. From so. Locke, I'm literally just at the timestamp only. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And in knit segments, you know, frames being I'm objects. I have those in the catalog right yeah. now. Knit segments. Oh, frames right. being objects, not not segments being objects, is yeah, a big, no, I have that. big difference. <laughs> um, like okay. So I th I think we've reached a quitting point. Will do you need time tomorrow to talk about this more? Or have we have we scratched? I do not. 
Okay, we actually checked the box. Lovely. Yep. All right. At this point, I'm going to I'm gonna, uh, stop recording okay. and shut down the meeting. Can I grab your slides? And I, we'll, don't go anywhere yeah. unless you're... Um, I'll put them on your left. left. Okay, all of you, we're all walking over to the brewery now. Yeah, and I, I have a 30-second bike shed. The only thing I've got over beer. So... <laughs> 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 <laughs>